Sorry about that title there. All right. This dramatic music you hear in the background is Age of Wonders Planetfall. Um, by the way, depending on what version you get of this game, you can get this lovely soundtrack as part of it. Um, I'm going to tab out for a quick second here. So this game will be coming out tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much to Paradox Triumph Studios, uh, everyone responsible for reaching out and giving me a key of this. I, I've been really interested um, in this game. And I wasn't originally going to ask for a key because I didn't think I would have enough time to cover it. But then somebody, you know, said, hey, uh, if you want to want to cover this on the 5th, Here's, here's a key, and all of a sudden I decided it was really important to free out some, uh, some space in my, um, my schedule. Sorry about the cutting out. Okay, so uh, the base game that you can buy is the Standard Edition, which will give you Age of Wonders Planetfall. Uh, I'm Canadian, so I, um, <clears throat> basically I, uh, I have to say everything in dollars, but they are in Canadian dollars, so um, just keep that in mind. It's going to make it sound like it's a little higher than what it normally is. You can get it for $56.99 Canadian. If you pre-order it, you will get uh, an epic cape, a union crown, our emperor garb, imperial hood, the Leviathan dip uh, diplom sorry, levitation diplomacy pose, and the paragon mod template icon. So it's a bunch of cosmetic stuff that you get uh, for your uh, your leaders. That will hopefully be apparent when we jump into the game. Uh, if you buy the Deluxe Edition, there is the Bravado Bundle and Space Punk... Uh, sorry, and... Okay, Bravado Bundle and Space Punk Cosmetic Pacts. Um, it looks like there is a scenario planet called Infested Worlds, a digital art book, and this soundtrack that you're listening to. It is pretty cool. Um, and then finally, the premium edition of the game, sorry, the deluxe edition will cost you uh, $68.99, so in Canadian it's about $12 more, um, which if you just get for the soundtrack is probably less than what you'll be paying for an album. I don't really know what albums cost because I, I use Apple Music a lot now. Um, and then there's the premium edition. Premium edition will give you everything that's in the deluxe edition as well as a season pass, forum icons, and wallpapers. Uh, premium edition costs uh, $92.69 currently, down from $102.99. Again, this is in Canadian. Uh, that has a 10% discount where the others apparently do not. Um, but why was I interested in this game? Um, I really like uh, the Age of Wonders series. I think I've played the first one. I think the first one was the first game where I sort of encountered this idea of having a heroic character that could travel through... Oh, I was tooling around in the game a little bit, so... Um, let's delete everything. We're gonna go in blind. This is so I could set up the stream and then I got sort of sucked in, <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, so it was the first game where like you had these hero characters and you could go into sort of these dungeons and um, try and and like get artifacts which would make your armies more powerful and you would cast spells which sort of applied at the strategic layer of the game so it was like civilization um, but it had these very dramatic sort of role-playing elements to it and these larger-than-life heroes that would would sort of come in and and shape things and I mean obviously now you have things like Total War Warhammer and um, uh, Total War um, uh, Three Kingdoms. So this idea is certainly not exclusive to the Age of Wonders games. Um, but the most recent thing I played out of that series was Age of Wonders 3 and its um, its associated expansions. It's kind of neat because you get to build your own hero based on race and class and whatnot. And obviously Triumph Studios got picked up by Paradox, which at the time was just sort of indicating that they would be um, you know, they would, they'd sort of be taking the reins of, of the existing projects that they had. And then shortly after there was the announcement of Age of Wonders Planetfall, which is sort of the science fiction take on, uh, on the similar pattern. Um, I'll admit, I actually haven't played as much Age of Wonders 3 as I would really like. So one of the things that's really drawing me towards this is I, I love to see a modern, uh, 
a modern take on this. I mean, Age of Wonders 3 isn't particularly old, but it's going to be neat to see sort of what they've learned from it. Um, but the science fiction setting is really cool on this one. They seem to have, have gone for these really wild um, species and whatnot. So we're going to do the tutorial first, um, but then we're going to uh, we're going to see everything that's going on. Record. Vanguard LCVP-86 emerged from void space intact. Our destination is a small planet located near to the anomaly in the system. Scans are showing nothing but static from the research outpost below. The distress call we received remains the only sign of life. The void anomaly looms over the planet like a dark omen. These scientists must have been mad to study the phenomenon from this close. But it's not for me to question their motives. We're here to secure a foothold, search for any survivors, and investigate what happened. Prepare for planet fall. Okay, so Dolos Minerva, tutorial planet, tiny, Pangea, 1% water, 99% land. Uh, we've got the objectives, which is presumably it's going to give us a bunch of tooltips as we move, uh, move through. Commander Jake Gelder, um, as I learn, I mean, I, this isn't fair to call it a paradox game uh, in the sense that when I do stuff like paradox games on Mondays, I mean paradox development studio. Um, but with a lot of strategy games, particularly well-made strategy games, uh, mousing over will tell you a little bit about what's going on. So we're playing the Vanguard. The Vanguard consists of rough folk with few ties to society. So the effects of long interstellar travel and cryos uh, cryo sleep and the resulting time dilation doesn't matter to them. Firearms, weapons group, laser weapons group, uh, deploy combat drones and turrets, use of propaganda and military force, powerful ranged units, uh, weak melee capability. Uh, Void Tech warps the laws of physics, allowing the manipulation and teleportation of matter and energy. Command highly mobile units that can teleport and pass through obstacles. Create temporal clones of units, destabilize and decelerate enemies. Uses arc and kinetic damage channels. I can't imagine the teleport would be re very useful except in retreat for, the, um, for these guys if they're uh, mobile. Um, but of course, um, destabilizing... Uh, sort of Zerg-like enemies that are trying to close the gap as rapidly as possible is, is probably where that becomes useful. Uh, Vanguard Assault Equipment, the pack you received after assault training. Uh, this advanced training gives you the following skills. Range Specialist, increased damage dealt when using ranged weapons. Steady Aim increases your accuracy when you're behind cover. Uh, this pa I don't know if there was cover in uh, Age of Wonders 3. Neat. Um, so this might actually wind up being a little bit like XCOM. Uh, the pack includes a laser, laser rifle that deals repeated thermal damage and a basic grenade which deals kinetic damage in an area and staggers those hit. Um, no background. Military detachment. A strong military force is always a good idea, so uh, you were sure to recruit extra soldiers to join you on your expedition. Uh, you start the game with a larger standing army and no vice. All right. This reminds me of Civilization Beyond Earth in terms of the look a little bit. Welcome, Commander. I am Ava, your autonomous integrated virtual assistant. Standard issue for every planetary governor of the Star Union. My messages will appear when important actions are undertaken for the first time. They can be reviewed at any time in the Imperial Archives. The uh, diamond icon uh, and color will assist in early decisions by recommending certain choices uh, to direct development of your starting empire. So I believe the Imperial Archive... Oh, actually, okay. Well, this will open it on its own. Welcome to the Imperial Archives. I'm not going to read everything here, don't worry. Uh, these archives contain knowledge concerning all aspects of Age of Wonders Planetfall, its rules, its glorious locations, and diverse inhabitants. It is a guide on how to build a planet-spanning empire and how to lead it to victory. Bookmarks. The bookmarks at the top are used to navigate the archive's main sections. From left to right, the basics. You're here now. Games, concepts, tech, operations, units, unit modules, unit abilities, hero disciplines, map locations, and colony upgrades. Search. When looking for information on a specific unit or feature, you can use the search function located at the top left side of the panel. And links. The archives can be navigated through the use of hyperlinks indicated in blue tech. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with the Age of Wonders series, we suggest starting with the articles in the basics section. So there's a bit going on here. I, what I tend to find for myself, so uh, this has a thing that I like quite a bit from the Civilization games, which is the Civilopedia. Uh, so everything is kind of contained within the game uh, to tell you what you need to do. From Age of Wonders 3, I remember that the tutorial on its own didn't sort of tell me everything that I needed to know. 
Um, so the way that I can best divide it on this is I, I try to play, especially on stream, on sort of a need to know basis. So if I'm at a point where I'm making a decision and I sort of feel like I need a little bit more, I'm not able to decide between like X and Y, then I'll open up the, um, uh, the archives here. Um, but I also sort of think that I have to assume that they probably heard that about Age of Wonders 3, so this tutorial might have a little bit more. You can pan the camera using the arrow keys or the WASD keys and zoom in and out using the middle mouse button. Additionally, the camera can be used by hol uh, can be moved by holding down the left mouse button and moving the mouse. Select is done selection selecting is done using the left mouse button. To deselect something, use the left mouse button anywhere else. This is one thing I actually kind of need to get used to because I'm used to using my middle mouse button to pan around in um, in like MOBAs and stuff like that. Planetfall successful, Commander. Powering up base colony systems. Good, there's no time to waste. We'll start by setting up and expanding this colony. Start a surface scan for survivors and existing colony infrastructure. Inform me when our research systems are online. Yes, Commander. Recalibrating sensors and initiating surface scan. A biodome has been located nearby, but there are no signs of survivors. Continue scanning the planet's surface. If there are any survivors on this world, I want to know about it. I'll scout the adjacent sectors and investigate the biodome. It, could, it should contain supplies that will help us expand the colony. Searching for survivors. Exploration. So this is one of our goals. Uh, select your army and explore the nearby sector. Locate and investigate the overgrown biodome. Hint, you can see your progress in your currently... Excuse me. Currently active quests in the objectives interface. Objectives 1. Explore the nearby sector. Uh, one take control of the overgrown biodome and we'll gain 90 science and 47 I'm assuming growth knowledge so uh, knowledge is used to rediscover and apply the lost technologies of the star union it affects how quickly you research new society and military technologies and the leaf doesn't uh, oh, food yeah, so presumably it's growth, because every game it winds up being growth. All right. This is an army. Armies contain up to six units on a single hex, and are used to explore the world, attack enemy armies, and defend colonies. Selecting a unit's portrait in the army panel will, uh, will display its abilities. Left-clicking on a unit's portrait in the army panel below will open the unit panel for that unit. To move an army, select it and then move the cursor to the hex you want it to go to. A preview of the route is shown, with a blue path to indicate how far the army can move this turn. Each hex has a move point cost. Each unit has a set number of move points per turn. For each hex moved, the move point cost is subtracted from the unit's move points. An army can only move as fast as its slowest unit. Units can be selected using the left mouse button. Clicking the right uh, mouse button over hex will move the selected army towards that hex. So we want to check out the, um, the biodome here, but first thing I want to do is they say click on the portrait to see what it can do. Heroes are special units that lead your armies. Commander, you are also represented as a hero on the map. As heroes level up, they gain upgrade points and can be spent to unlock unique hero abilities using this interface. Many hero abilities buff the entire army that they are leading. Next to unit mods, hero have the heroes have the ability to wield legendary hero items that can be found while exploring the strategic map. This is one of the things that I thought was so cool about Age of Wonders when I first played it. Uh, okay, so... Mind control immunity, overwatch... Oh, okay, uh, this is new. Uh, resurgence. When a unit dies in combat, it is revived at the end of combat. If its owner is victorious, revived units are brought back with 50% of their maximum health. Inside Out Gaming says, Please tell me there are no mi microtransactions in this game. Dear God, please. Uh, so far as I can tell, there aren't. Um, if you're worried about, like, the individual items that people... Um, like, the individual items for the heroes, that's part of the game. Uh, and that has been part of the game for, I think, since the very first Age of Wonders. Um, but do keep in mind, like, so Age of Wonders 3 got two DLC, uh, which would be the Eternal Lords, and I can't remember the name of the other one. Um, and then of course there's a season pass for this game, so it's likely that there's going to be, uh, some level, actually I can probably see on the Steam page. I don't like clicking out of the, the game too much because it goes silent, but just to set your mind at ease on these things, um... Let's take a look at the store page. 
season pass. What is the season pass? Come on. Uh, the season pass, which gives players access to three upcoming expansions and an instant reward. Receive a 10% discount if you own... Oh, it's 10% for me because I have the Age of Wonders fr uh, franchise. Okay. Um, but yeah. Well, this isn't really an RTS game, Inside Out Gaming. I'd, I'd say this is almost certainly a turn-based. Unless there's something really new about the combat in this game, uh, this is almost certainly a turn-based game. Uh, a lot more like Civilization. Um, but yeah, the best I can say, like, obviously, the model that allows the constant support of, of games like Stellaris and, um, you know, Imperator and, uh, and all these other ones that I really enjoy, um, I, clearly they are supported through some, uh, kind of additional content in the game through, or actually, um, Surviving Mars is a good example, because obviously that's not won by the Paradox Development Studio, um, so in that sense, I'm not inherently opposed to them adding new things to the game and charging for them, because ultimately I've been able to enjoy those games more so as a result of them. Um, but if you're worried about, like, I don't know, the Team Fortress 2 hat economy or, um, you know, something that sort of more resembles a free-to-play mobile game, um, again, I don't know what Paradox's monetization strategy for this game is, but it would seem to me that it would probably resemble, like, surviving mars or the previous age of wonders game rather than being like something brand new so hey xalfi yeah it's a um it depends right like i i thought the crusader kings 2 one was a little frustrating because of how they constantly like cut it up like it got to a point that every time they would release a new dlc it would be there'd be the base dlc and then a model pack and then like a soundtrack pack so if you wanted to buy it you would buy three separate things um and that in addition to sort of feeling like you were being nickeled and dimed to death um it was very frustrating to try and add dlc to the cart uh if you wanted to buy all of them you actually had to like buy and go back um, in the menus. So you actually had to have three mouse clicks and then moving back to the store page each time to add them. And so it was sort of, that was one where I wasn't crazy, but like the Stellaris model, I think has been fantastic. So we'll see. I mean, it's, um, how's the game so far? I've literally just started Inside Out Gaming. So I really liked Age of Wonders 3 and it seems to be very much, uh, in that spirit. I'm, I'm taking my time and like mousing over different things to just see how they all work. But, um, I it's it's definitely quite early to tell. Um, the one thing I will say though is taking a look at some of the factions, and I think the factions are so cool. Like they definitely broke the mold and went for some just absolutely insane ideas, which were really really fun. So, but we'll we'll also we'll see how the game is together. So biological carbon based uh, commander hero infantry. These don't really seem to be telling me a whole lot about what they do. So the best that I'm going to say about this one is thermal damage from the laser rifle. Uh, I don't need to worry about mind control, and we'll learn the rest while uh, rest while we go on. Let's just get ourselves to that dome. Uh, Colony production facilities are currently idle, Commander. I recommend that we start bu uh, by building a central replicator facility to increase production. I've highlighted this structure in the colony interface. This is the colony interface. It allows you to inspect and control your settlements on this planet. The tabs at the top left cycle through the production and colonist options. The number of colonists and sectors that are part of the colony are listed at the top, as well as the strength of the colony militia. Is it? Oh, here we go. So we've got three colonists and militia power 280. Okay, so... Under this colony's name, you can see the amount of each resource this colony generates. A description and a breakdown of the colony's income can be found in the tooltips of each resource. Tooltips can be viewed by hovering over the uh, an interface element with the mouse. Obviously, we've been taking advantage uh, advantage of that. How much is the game? Uh, so, Inside Out Gaming, the base game in Canadian dollars is fifty six ninety nine. 
the deluxe edition, which comes with a bunch of cosmetic packs as well as the soundtrack. The soundtrack's pretty cool so far. Uh, that version is $68.99, so $12 Canadian difference. And then if you go for the premium edition, which has everything as well as a season pass for three DLC, forum icons on the Paradox website, and the wallpaper, uh, that is $102.99, and then it's 10% off for me, $62.69. Uh, because I already own an Age of Wonders game, so basically you're looking at you're looking at um, sort of the like there's the AAA which is always like the sixty dollars and it's forever been or like sixty dollars US. This is sort of at the it's a premium game, but they're not charging the AAA um, price is is basically the the price point for this one I see. Okay, uh, so they want me to build a central replicator facility, a miniature factory that provides a boost for newly settled colony production capabilities. Uh, provides 15 production or... yeah, production. So presumably that will help me build faster. Production allows you to build unit specialized sectors and upgrade your colonies. Seems to make as much sense. The only other thing I could think of would be growth, which central biofarm would help. But the game is telling me miniature factory that provides a boost to newly settled colonies. Um, and it says I can only produce one central structure. So apparently for each colony, you decide if it's food um, food production or science. Um, this is the structure production tab. Colony structures can be built from here to unlock new units, strengthen the economy, and bolster the colony's defenses. Some structures have an energy upkeep that is paid each turn. You can add a structure to the production queue by double-clicking the left mouse button or by selecting it and clicking the produce button. So it says to build the central replicator Humans facility. structures can be built in a colony by selecting the produce option, which places them in the production queue. When something is added to the production queue, the energy and cause, uh, cosmite uh, cost is paid immediately, and the production cost is subtracted at the end of each turn based on the colony's production income. The order of the production product uh, projects in the queue can be changed by hovering over them and selecting the up arrow that appears. Clicking an X will remove the production project from the queue altogether. So I'm not sure if this is trying to tell me that I should be building one of these units. Um, so I can build a skirmisher barracks, uh, build skirmisher units in this colony, which will give me the Vanguard Assault Bike. Alternatively, we can get the Specialist Training Center. Um, let's take a... So... Okay, weak to arc good with lasers. This does pretty substantial um, connect damage. You know what, I think I'm going to see what we what happens when we take on these things here and then we can decide what type of military unit we want to um, we want to specialize with. So, Okay, open the colony interface and complete the central replicator facility production project found in the structure uh, production tab. Hint, the colony interface can be opened by selecting the colony. If there is an army standing on top of it, you'll first select the army and a second click will select the colony itself. When all suggested actions from the task notifier above the minimap have been handled, the option will automatically change to end turn. Ending the turn will prevent you from taking any further actions until your next turn, unless you are attacked. Since you've moved your units and started production in your colony, no more actions can be undertaken. So that's all that's left. Uh, so all that's left is to end the turn. The task notifier shows actions available during the current turn, as well as urgent matters that require attention. The task notifier is located below the event list and above them. It's re referencing, it's actually referenced it last menu item and now it's telling me what it is. Uh, selecting a message from the task notifier where either, will either center, uh, center the camera to the relevant location or open the relevant inf interface. You can cycle through the events using the right mouse button. All right, turn two since Planetfall. Commander, our laboratories have come online and research is now available. We can begin researching technologies to unlock new deployments to help us on this planet. Excellent. What do you suggest we start with, considering our mission parameters? For military research, it is recommended to start with Nanite support to provide our troops with extra protection and unlocked battlefield support operations. For society research, it is recommended to start with frontier facilities to unlock basic infrastructure upgrades for our colony. I have highlighted these skills in the research interface for your convenience. Welcome to the research center, Commander. 
Here we allocate knowledge to rediscover the technologies of the Star Union and search for new frontiers. The two tracks can be researched in parallel. Military research concerns unit unlocks, unit modifications, and military operations. Society research deals with economic development, governmental doctrines, and covert operations. Knowledge is applied to both types of research equally at the end of, uh, at the end of each turn. Higher tier research is locked behind prerequisites denoted by white lines in the research tree. Military research concerns unit unlocks, unit mods, and military operations. Uh, racial research includes all of that race's unit unlocks, including defensive mods, tactical operations, and strategic operations. Weapon technologies unlocks offers, uh, sorry, weapon technologies unlocks offensive mods and tactical operations. Secret technology paths unlock units, mods, and operations with unique mechanics. This is actually really neat. So, uh, for those of you who are coming in before we took a look, so we were listed as Vanguard. So this is our, kind of our faction. Um, void tech is a specialization that we got. So if we were playing another sort of species or we species may not be the right term, but if we're playing a different faction and then the secret tech that we had here, we'd actually have different research options. And then also given the fact that it says laser and firearms, uh, there might even be options to sort of change the composition of weapons that you have. So you can sort of see this almost the sort of modular approach to the research, which I think is kind of cool. Anyways, it did tell us to do Nanite support. So that will give us Nanite injectors to heal the units. Um, Nanite support station. Okay, yeah, so this is all... I don't know if these are supposed to be extra units or... Note tactical operation. I wonder if these are like spells. Um like the equivalent of spells in the fantasy game. Okay. Society research concerns economic development, governmental policies, and espionage. It is divided into three categories. Doctrine research concerns governmental policies to steer your empire. Economy research focuses on the development of your uh, colonies, allowing for exploitation of the terrain and the happiness of your population. Operations research unlocks special covert operations that can be used to spy on other players, as well as options to increase operation effectiveness. So this is kind of neat. I don't think I've seen a game where you actually get uh, military and social research on one path. It's always kind of an interesting thing for games like this, because clearly, you know, if you think about things like the internet, or actually almost a ton of stuff out of World War II, clearly a lot of... Uh, military technology was repurposed to civilian applications and, and created a lot of prosperity. <clears throat> and I'm not sure a lot of games have done a really good job of reflecting that. And for simple reasons, like what you usually want to do in a game like this is to give people like a guns or butter choice where, you know, you can be a really, really strong military and you can just crush everyone, but you're going to suffer um, on your, like, your upkeep traits is usually uh, what tends to happen. Um, or alternatively, it's like, you know, you can build a lot of production capacity and what you're doing is you're sort of foregoing some investment in your military. So if you go too far down that path, potentially what happens to you is uh, you, um, you know, somebody just comes along, beats you up and takes your stuff. So this one doesn't seem to be affected by, um, by my faction. Um, this one will give me Colonizers, standard military infrastructure, recreation dome. Okay, so it makes people happy. It boosts the militia and lets me build new colonies. Um, but yeah, it's kind of in this one. It just sort of see. It, it, I think it's neat that they've done this, where there isn't such a fine like, you know, building up your infrastructure no long. Well, okay, building your infrastructure will still cost you production, but technologically. Um, you're actually able to go down both paths. That's a neat choice, and I, I don't know if I've ever played a game that does that. Anyways, we were gonna clear out the, uh, we were gonna clear out the, um, whatchamacallit. You engage Marauder Guard. Okay, so mouse overs just to see. Everything should be giving... Oh, I thought they were all giving laser. Turns out everybody else has kinetic. Okay, so these things, Hopper Hound, Mound, Manhunter, Skirmishers, Claw Strikes, Air Leaps, Combat Jumps, and Mega beta ba Beetle Baby, Pincer Attack, Beetle Spit. So it looks like this is a ranged unit and this is a melee unit, but I don't think it's told me anything beyond like describing what the abilities are. 
Um... This is the unit panel where all the information on a unit can be viewed, including their active and passive abilities in the list on the left side. Units can have different roles in combat. Core units are a race's scouts and baseline infantry. Uh, skirmisher units are focused on dealing damage. Specialist units have non-damaging support abilities in addition to their attacks. Elite units are higher tier units that have strong damage and support capabilities. A colony can only produce skirmisher, specialist, and elite units if it is built special unit unlock structures. So that means uh, I'm going to rate up that skirmisher facility a little bit higher. And what I'm really interested in is if it gives me any indications in terms of it being weak to a particular type of attack. It doesn't look like it. Um... Reduces incoming damage, psionic attacks, ignore armor. Um, but like when I look at something like this, when it says thermal, um, all of, like all of these details, it tells me kinetic, but it doesn't really tell me kinetic does X. Um, but that's fine. We'll. Um, we'll see how this stuff works live. The battle has started, Commander. The defending army always gets to act first, followed by the attackers. Tactical operations can be launched during combat as support, though they are disabled during the first turn. During a combat turn, each unit has three action points to spend on using their abilities, which can cost between one and three action points. Regardless of cost, using an ability always ends the unit's turn. Every unit also has move points, and using these move points will leave a unit with fewer action points to spend. The tactical movement colors on the ground indicate how many action points that unit will have, uh, have left after moving there. The red overlay on the ground means that the unit will have no action points after movement. Commanders and heroes are some of the strongest units in any army, capable of wielding a variety of powerful weapons and even piloting vehicles. They level up as they gain experience, allowing them to unlock new abilities and buffs. If the commander is defeated in combat, they will return to their faction's headquarters after a certain number of turns. Heroes do not have uh, heroes do not have the special protection. Okay, one thing I'll quickly say about like the visuals and the music. It seems like so. In one sense, when you play like a strategy game, you're like you know. Has active abilities that they can use during combat. Next to attacks, they have a guard ability, which increases the unit's defenses until the start of their next turn. Guard abilities always cost one action point. The maximum range of a unit's currently selected ability will be displayed using a white line on the battlefield. You can select enemy units to see their abilities and how they can use them. Holding down the Alt button will allow your units to target obstacles or the ground, which is useful when using area of effect Try abilities. moving your units forward to form a gun line, Commander. There are several nearby obstacles that your Vanguard troopers can take cover behind, symbolized by a shield icon when hovering over the hex in cover. Vanguard troopers have the ability to overwatch, allowing them to shoot at enemies that move into range. This is a very powerful ability, which works very well against melee unit the melee units you are now facing. Try putting your troopers in cover and enable overwatch on them, the red eye symbol. The assault bike has great mobility and is best moved into a flanking position to engage in combat next turn. Uh, so what I was trying to say before, one of the things that, like, in one sense a strategy game where it's like, ah, I just care about mechanics, you know, it's all about the gameplay for me, but the look of this game and also the music, like... A friendly unit has moved into cover. Cover protects the units by making it harder for enemies to hit them with abilities. Cover is directional and only protects against attacks if it is between the targeted unit and the enemy. Uh, some units are too large to use cover, but they can be used as cover by other smaller units. Throughout the combat map, there are also large obstacles that block line of sight, allowing units hiding behind them to avoid being targeted altogether. Um, so yeah, basically, as soon as the, the combat music kind of came up, um, I was very, like, I was really engaged. Um, so... Some units with ranged attacks can enter Overwatch. While in Overwatch mode, the unit will have a red eye icon above its head. 
This unit will fire its primary ranged attack at any enemy unit that moves or uses an ability on a hex within this unit's field of view. Overwatch can only trigger once per unit, and if a unit using Overwatch is staggered, the Overwatch mode is cancelled. Okay, so clearly they're going to be coming from this way. Uh, next right click, sorry. Um, but yeah, just despite my, um, you know, my feeling that I should probably be a very serious gamer and, and you know, only care about the mechanics, um, I really like the little fantasy that's been put up here. Um, it's, I don't know. I, I was definitely very engaged once the music became the all right, and now the now the fight is starting. Uh, I do get bonuses for being behind cover, so that's why. Okay, I, I might get a bonus, but it's probably not going to be all that helpful. Uh, this still makes the most sense, but if they if these guys try and attack from this side, which is very likely they will, um, this is going to be useless. I'll decide what to do with my hero later. For now, uh, I'm going to move my bike all the way up. This looks like something that can explode, but I'm not entirely sure how they're... they're well, I mean, I suppose if they go out and around like this, I'm, I'm in deep trouble. But if this guy's a melee uh, unit, I'm pretty sure meleeing something explosive is not... Not something that will... Okay. Uh... I don't really like clustering people up like this, but I do want to get the overwatch from my commander, so... Okay, they did nothing. So something tells me I'm not going to be able to... I'm not going to be able to attack them from this side. Eh, I'll give them something to think about. So this is going to be the really tough bit. Um, yeah, like the visual style or just the, the layout? This is actually a tougher call for me here. Because it's, it's less apparent to me, like if I run my guys up, um, that just strikes me as the sort of thing where we're going to get pounded. Um, so I'm actually going to, I'm going to do the standoff here. Although I might be able to do something fancy with my hero. I was going to go and flank them, and they flanked me because I'm an idiot. Uh, units can be turned to face any direction, but units that have used an ability can no longer be turned. Abilities that require a target will always turn a unit towards that target. Okay. Unlucky, but... Most abilities that are used on enemy units have an accuracy reading, which is the chance that the ability hits the intended target. If an ability misses, it will either strike another target or do nothing at all. Some abilities can also graze, meaning that the ability affected its target, but with reduced strength. A unit has been staggered, causing it to lose an action point. Was Most melee attacks and explosives will stagger units. If a unit is in overwatch or guard mode, they are cancelled when the unit is staggered. Enemy annihilated. All right, so I don't think we're going to be able to get to the beetles um, on time. Nope. So let's just take our nice forward position. Um, there's got to be a way that I can get a good flank in without inviting the same to me. The 
only drawback here is I think if they go out and go, I think when they're going to try and go and get their flank, that's actually going to, uh, that's still going to, um, they're not going to go anywhere where my guys can overwatch. So in this case, I'm basically going to try and bait them with a nice, a nice tasty melee unit out there. And in the worst case scenario, this shouldn't be, that didn't take us down to half health. So if nothing else, we just get ourselves in position to, uh, to punish them. But overall, I didn't exactly play this very, uh, I, I wasn't the most clever, um, strategist on this. We'll see what he does. Yeah, it looks like he's going, going to try and take my guys. Okay. Enemy killed. They never stood a chance. So damage, but nothing, nothing we couldn't survive, or nothing we can't repair. So. Commander, our colony has now grown big enough to support an additional sector. I recommend annexing the sector which contains the biodome, as this will add its food income to our colony. Good. We'll annex the sector to our colony as a province sector so we can start exploiting the land for resources as soon as possible. And we get 102 food as a reward. Objective completed. Explore the nearby sector, take control of the overgrown biodome. We get 90 research, 47 food. It still actually doesn't say what food is, so I might uh, take a quick look in the um, the encyclopedia for that. Expand colony, empire building. Expand your colony by annexing the nearby sector. Hint, you can annex a sector by moving a unit on top of the sector banner and then selecting the annex sector in the avail uh, selecting annex sector in the available options. Uh, annex the fungal habitats and explore a province sector. Okay. So just before we do that, I it seems really basic and it's like foods for growth. What else would it be? But I do want to just take a quick second here and see what the game officially says. Um, game concepts. Food is a resource that is separate for each colony. It drives colonist growth, which in turn leads to colony expansion The higher the econ uh, and higher economic income. Food is also crucial for colonist upkeep, as insufficient food income can lead to starvation. Colonies can increase their food income by building special uh, food sector exploitations in their province sectors and assigning colonists to food colonist slots. Uh, food can be shared between colonies using the food sharing mechanic. Uh, vital supplies and growth are manufactured here. Grants plus 10 food to the colony it is linked to. Grants an additional plus 5 food when in agricultural exploitation. Okay, so let's start by moving to the banner Planets that it told us to. divided into geographical sectors that contain natural resources or valuable remnants of the Star Union. Sectors can be settled with colonizers or annexed as provinces to existing colonies by interacting with the central sector map marker. The sector analysis panel on the right shows an analysis of its features and any locations present there. Actions available to take within the sector are listed in the bottom panel. Okay, so it's got fertile plains, which will apparently boost uh, science and food, fungal, same deal, and the overgrown biodome plus 10, we already know that. So uh, it told us to Sectors annex it, usually so we will. have both a climb and a terrain feature that determine their economic potential. Hello, Flobe. Uh, is this the newest one that just came out? Yeah, that's actually coming out tomorrow. Um, but I was, the Paradox is kind enough to toss me a key and the embargo lifted this morning. My original plan actually was to, um, to record a bunch of videos and have them starting from like the minute the embargo finished. There are a couple of things that stopped me from doing that. So we're just going to do a regular stream for it, but I might go a little bit later because obviously I'm spending all this time on the tutorial. For those of you who don't know him, by the way, uh, Loeb is a streamer himself. Uh, he was giving Cultist Simulator a little bit of a chance, but I think his his more usual routine is going to be a little more along the lines of, of games like Fortnite. And I cannot remember the other thing that you were playing, but I actually watched you play that because Fortnite isn't exactly my thing, but I really enjoyed the other game you were playing and I... Memory is failing me now. Like, I know the game, but I can't say that I don't know the title, and I feel like a moron doing that. Anyways, uh, if you're looking to check out new streamers, uh, Flob has been very, uh, very generous with their time, and definitely somebody you might want to check out. Uh, Griftlands! Because um, I know you were talking about that when I was playing Nowhere, Nowhere Profit. 
Um, yeah, no, no worries. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, this is uh, this is pretty fun so far. So so far, like, I don't know too much about the game, but it's um, it's got the features I like of Age of Wonders three. Um, but actually, the science fiction, especially given the way the combat is working, I actually like a couple of the changes that they've made to this. So, and I'm really curious about these sectors because I don't think that was in um, Age of Wonders three. Uh, okay, sectors can contain locations such as resource nodes, visit sites, and hazards, which can add an economic, uh, which can add economic or strategic value to that sector. They can also affect the sector in other ways, such as weakening units that pass through or causing special effects to occur during to make battles. Your colonies thrive. Sectors need to be Johnny Big Time. To colony centers. This turns them into province sectors that add income to their parent colony once they are further developed. All right, I know you guys just had to put up with a shout out, but Johnny Big Time, I actually showed him the E3 trailer for this. Um, and like the E3 trailer knows exactly what it is about. Like it's it's like we got dinosaurs with laser beams on them. We've got cyborg zombies. Why wouldn't you want to play this game? Um, so Johnny's looking looking pretty interested in this. Johnny is a hell of a streamer. Um, so Johnny, Lady Dow is watching our playthrough of A Way Out and is loving it right now. For those of you who haven't watched it johnny big time is hilarious and uh we did a we did a very fun um co-cast of a way out um so apparently there is a way to get into that secret door in the farmhouse and lady dow thinks that we should play the game again she hasn't seen the ending by the way but we should play the game again so we can see what happens when you when you go into that secret door um but yeah um if you haven't um If you want to see why Johnny Big Time is an amazing streamer, there's the command for him. There's a link, uh, a clip in there. He is hilarious, and uh, I'm actually really happy every time I see him. I feel really bad now because I, I gave Flobe a shout out, and it's not nearly as nice as the one that I'm giving Johnny. But longtime viewers of this will know that I have a I, Johnny is like my favorite streamer on Twitch, and. Uh, I don't know if he'll play Age of Wonders Planetfall, but I think he would do a very good job of it if he would. The turn-based combat's a bit like XCOM or a bit like uh, Chaos Reborn, Johnny, if that gives you an idea. But you'll be able to see it while we play. Okay. To make your colony th uh, thrive, sectors need to be annexed in colony centers. This turns them into province sectors that add income to the parent colony once they are further developed. Through experience, you will learn how to optimize sector choices and colony upgrades. For now, pick any habitable sector adjacent to your starting colony. Move an army to its sector center and annex it. Well, I mean, the objectives told us to take the fungal habitat, so it's not really that we're going to go to just any one, but... Service scan completed, Commander. I am picking up a Vanguard military signal nearby. This could signify the presence of survivors on the planet. Bring it up on scanners. Let's figure out what the hell is going on here. Locate the Vanguard military signal in the nearby sector. Okay. We still need to finish our production, um, but I don't think there's anything to do to rush it, so... And... Didn't we annex this? Oh, well, yeah, we're carrying on. Okay. So that'll probably be done at the end of the turn. Exciting. Okay, and I don't think there's anything the else for me to do, but... The colony tab is unit production. All units available for construction are listed here. More units are unlocked through research and by building the prerequisite infrastructure for them. Units cost both production and energy to build, and higher tier units also cause, uh, cost cosmite. You can add a unit to the production queue by double-clicking the left mouse button or by selecting it and clicking the produce button. I will see what an owl is. So it's a core unit, it's got a laser repeater. So it looks like it's just an autonomous unit. Um, it's weaker. But, it, like in terms of health, it seems to have a lower energy cost. Less energy, less production. Uh, but what I was really interested in was structures. So there was the Vanguard Assault Bike or the Pug. And I'm actually slightly curious about this pug. How fast does it move? 
Also, I should be reading the descriptions of these units, but maybe we'll save that for when we're in like the main game. Uh, 32 movement versus... Is it the assault bike I get though? That's a 40. This is faster. I'm definitely thinking um, take advantage of mobility. Um, because, of course, the one of the answers to the setup that I had last time was exactly what the AI did, which was just sit down and wait. Um, so in this case, I kind of want to try and get a few more... Um, I want to try and get a few more faster units to go in and flush them out. So if they stay put... Basically, the idea is that I'll have a firewall if people come charging after me. If I... And if they if they decide to sit back, I'm basically going to have bikes that go in and get a flank on them to punish them for hanging out, is the idea, so... So does this play like Civ? Very similar to Civilization in a couple of ways. Um, again, it's worth remembering that I'm just playing the tutorial right now, so some of this may change. The major differences in the Age of Wonder Ga Wonders games versus Civilization is that you have hero units, which actually have a really you big... You just annexed the sector, and it can now be exploited for one of the main resources. Ideally, the chosen exploitation type matches the terrain and climb features of the sector for future leveling potential. Um, the heroes in Age of Wonders 3 were incredibly powerful. The other thing, of course, about civilization is that you do have combat between units, but the combat happens at the strategic layer of the map. In the case of Age of Wonders, when you go to battle, you kind of go to this tactical game, which is a little bit more like XCOM. Um, so it, it, it is different in certain respects, but I would say sort of a, a, um, well, I would have originally said fantasy, but I suppose speculative fiction civilization would not be the worst, uh, would not be the worst elevator pitch for this game. Uh, okay, um, ta -da. you can set the exploitation via the colony center interface in the sector production tab. The higher level of the sector, the more that can be gained from it through exploitation. After the sector has been exploita uh, exploited, a specialization can be built uh, in it to further increase the sector's economic benefit. Conduct research to unlock sector specializations. Commander, that sector has been successfully annexed to our uh, has sorry been successfully annexed to our colony and is now considered a province sector. It can now be exploited for additional resources. Let's get this exploitation up and running as soon as possible. What does the terrain analysis tell us? How can we best exploit our new province sector? Uh, analyzing climb fungal terrain fertile plains resource node biodome processing analysis. Recommendation, agriculture exploitation. An agriculture exploitation will synergize with both the climb and the terrain, allowing the sec sector to reach its full potential through research and construction. The biodome will also synergize with an agriculture exploitation, providing additional bonuses to food income. The sector production tab lists the structures that can be built in any of the province sectors of the colony. A sector can be exploited in one of four resources, energy, food, knowledge, or production, by building the appropriate building in that sector. Once the exploitation is finished, a specialization can be built in that sector to get extra bonuses associated with the choice chosen exploitation. Uh, and it tells us how. Now, this is one really interesting thing here, right? Because in uh, civilization, you can basically put down um, cities anywhere, and then there's just a certain range where your population can exploit. It looks here like this is almost a bit like Endless Legend in terms of you have these different sectors that are built up. So the idea here was I didn't build a colony to take advantage of all the resources um, in this area. In fact, it doesn't seem like there are resource tiles at all, and it's rather as my colony grows, its influence over neighboring regions, as long as it's backed up by my military, um, will uh, kind of determine uh, my ability to access that. I actually kind of, I like that because I always find it really hard to decide when to build a new colony and all of that. Hey, the exception. So anyways, we'll pick uh, agriculture exploitation because that's what it told us to do. Um, I think I'm actually going to move this... Now, nah, you know what? We'll wait the one turn uh, and finish it. Objective complete. All right, complete a production project, 29 energy, 30 food. Take the reward. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll take... Uh, we'll explore the signal now. Lieutenant Jang, what the hell are you doing on this rock? Last I heard, you were stationed on Leaf 6. Commander Jack Gilder, I require your immediate assistance. Our settlement is overrun with hopper hounds, and we need help fighting them off. We're sending you blueprints for some of our weapon modifications. Let's burn these bugs down. Received, Lieutenant. Let's make quick work of these bugs. 
Commander, before engaging in battle, we should mod our units to make them more combat effective. Select our army and inspect units. Talman Alive is now crossed on the other side of six months with a seven month sub and a four month streak. Four months, one month for each X. Thank you very much. I will absolutely keep playing them four X games. I love them so much. Um, obviously, Planetfall. Actually, so Planetfall was not one I was expecting to do right away, um, but I was delighted when uh, when the key came in. So um, I and it's this I like. I wasn't disinterested in it. It was just very much one of these, like, I've got so much stuff to play and I feel like I can probably do some more Age of Wonders. So I was sort of debating, like, maybe on a Friday I was going to do Age of Wonders 3. And then it was like, hey, do you want to try Planetfall? And then I saw the trailer for Planetfall. I'm like, hell yes, I do. <laughs> so, um, hey, the exception. Thank you very much for uh, showing off the emotes so I didn't have to. Um, I didn't realize there was a second arm. Um... So select our army and expect uh, units to equip the mods. We can equip the mods. Lieutenant Yang gave us, uh, sorry, Yang gave us uh, on troops, on troops or your weapons, Commander. Please bear in mind that while the process is immediate on your weapons, modifying our troop leaves them vulnerable for a single cycle. Objective complete. Okay. Uh, help Dayu Yang uh, deliver defeat the Hopperhound threat. Okay. So first up, let's. Mod things. Oh. Mods allow you to improve your units later in the game and allow you to adapt your arsenal to ever evolving threats. Uh, unit mods in, uh, include a variety of offensive and defensive modifications, while others provide entirely new abilities. Unit mods can be unlocked through research or bought from NPC factions. Yeah, see, the shame here, uh, the exception is I have a bunch of mod, like, I have a bunch of emotes from other people, but like, because I'm broadcasting rather than. Um, like viewing, I tend not to use them that much. So, all right, I'm just gonna spend everything because it's a tutorial. Um, now I was under the impression, like it says mods for the weapon, but so they said mods for the the weapon and the unit. So I'm not sure if this is the thing that leaves me vulnerable. Um, anyways. Once mods have been assigned to a unit, a new template needs to be made for the modified unit. Every template is unique with its own name and icon, and changing the mods on a unit with an existing template will prompt the creation of a new template for that unit. A template can also be used to simultaneously upgrade all existing units of the same type. Okay, cool. So we're gonna have to wait. Um, we're gonna have to wait around on this. Actually, so I will read the. Uh, I will read the, the text. And it's a fantasy game, of course. You have to read the text. Oh, so, okay. So it says here arc weakness. So not necessarily everybody has a weakness to, uh, to certain texts. In ancient times, our ancestors rode bikes to freedom, claiming, uh, claiming virtue. And sorry. In ancient times, our ancestors rode bikes to freedom, claiming virtue in a life on the open road. Ancestral records show leather-clad mobs of two-wheeled ruffians decorated with flaming skull, the flaming skulls of their enemies. Some anthropologists believe that the assault bike captures that instinctive melancholy, without the skulls, of course. The old bikes had no laser arrays capable of strafing mobs of enemy invaders or focusing all power onto a single target. One can only wonder if our ancestors ever would have left the open road if they had these additional capabilities. Professor Quinlan T. Ordovexis, RV 4367H, Historical Pellet Parallels, Humanity's Twisted Past. For those of you who don't know, Johnny Big Time is one of these people who wears the flaming skulls of his enemies while <laughs> riding out on the open road. So apparently I can't... It says mod equivalent units, but apparently I don't have enough. That doesn't make any sense though. So I could mod each one individually, but... Oh, maybe it's because... 
Yep. Okay, she can't take any of that. And these guys, we don't have the Cosmite. Okay, so we did. Quantum powered molecular machines are not magic, they're science. But the uncertainty principle dictates that if I explain to you exactly how it works, it'll stop working that way. So just trust me, it's not magic, it's just probabilistic, quantum state driven subatomic machines. Stanley Strangelove, publicist, small tech enterprises. All right. I like that this game has a sense of humor. So what would you want next? There's the secret tech that we have, which would give phase manipulation. So just another mod uh, gains a phase field. This unit is able to walk through obstacles and is 20% harder to hit in combat. Okay, that's interesting. Um, target unit receives reactive phase defense for three turns. Each time the unit takes damage, it is teleported to a random hex within two hexes of their original position. Now, that's actually really cool in some ways, but the fact that I get a bonus for being behind cover might hurt that a little bit. So this is a cheaper um, military tech. My alternatives. So an engineering core. Um, engineer can place turrets. And gives me shotguns, smart defense modules, unit becomes 20% harder to hit and gains detection. In addition, the unit scanner range on the strategic map is increased two hexes. Okay, that's actually really tempting. Uh, and interlocking armor gains stagger resistance and two kinetic resistance. Alternatively, we can try electromagnetic utilization. That will take nine. Um... I think the smart defense modules is slightly more attractive to me here. Okay, frontier facilities. Our colonies require the means to protect themselves and a reason to stay. At the very least, it's time to invest in some good old-fashioned guns and beer. Dollar Smith, Deneb Colony Mayor. All right, um, with that in mind, aquatic deployment, I don't think I have any use for... This is like 1% water. Um, it said so uh, frontier policies which will give uh, additional food reduced costs I'm um, not bad but um, I think probably food deployment makes the most sense gives plus one level to all food sectors raising the sector level of a sector will increase the benefits from sector exploitations, yeah. So we already said we were going to do food exploitation, so let's do food development so that we can double down on the benefits uh, from that. We'll end the turn because we're still doing our upgrades. And then once uh, once the turn's done, we will uh, combine our two teams and, and hold off against the hoppers. Uh, Mava factions with a claim on the sector, Jan, uh, Jack Gelder. So we can't annex it. Sector limit reached. Uh, okay, so we need two more colonists before we can claim it. Actually, I think this also helps getting rid of the sort of like race for all the unclaimed land in strategy games like this. So this sector system actually seems kind of neat. Uh, so it's got a forest and fungal. Uh, we can still kind of get the double, double benefit for um, food exploitation. But for now, I think we'll just shoot some bugs. When engaging an army in combat, all armies adjacent to the defending army that are allied to either the defending army or the attacking army are drawn into combat as well. This means that up to 42 units can potentially join the same battle and that one side will have a numbers advantage over the other. Prior to the start of combat, a special combat preview will show all armies that will be engaged in the battle. Does that mean that one will have the numbers? Oh yeah, I guess it does, because there's always going to be one in the center. So if it was three and three, the defender would still have the advantage. Cool. We don't negotiate with bugs, but these look like nasty bugs. Oh, Jesus. Hopper Hound Eviscerator. Uh, heavy units. Blade Maw. And the Beetle Baby. All right.
So one thing I didn't do last time was actually click on these things and see the only good bug is a dead bug. Well said, Johnny. Um, I want to take a quick look and see what these things can do. Okay, so the Eviscerator can move, rotate. Okay, wide slash, a uh, melee slash that hits multiple units in front of the user. Armor penetration bypass two. Massive impact stagger units, including stagger resistant units, reducing action points and canceling defensive modes. Bypasses all whatever the downside is and only affects ground targets. Skip unit and combat jump. Jump at uh, target light ground unit, dealing damage and knocking them back. Armor penetration, bypass two armor. High impact stagger units. Um, eight strength a chance. Okay, so it can cause bleed. And invigorating uh, stridulation. Produce invigorating sounds by rubbing limbs together, granting this unit and friendly units within two hexes. 200 morale and fast movement for three turns. All right. So, um, let's figure out how I want to deal with the bugs. So I've got one, two, three, four. I've got four um, troops. Then, of course, I've got these guys over here. But essentially what I want to do is I want to set this up so that if they try any funny business, I'm going to have a wall of death that takes them out. So these guys are clearly going to be jumping after my units. Um, but I want I want it to be sort of tempting enough for them to shoot or like to go after me. But I don't want to be caught like completely flat footed. Like one of the problems I have here is I don't actually know exactly what I'm doing with this unit here. Because uh, everybody's sort of taking up the cover that's useful for them. What I maybe should have done was like moved. Well, can I move? Yeah. Um... The answer is no. I can't do any of that stuff I wanted, so. Uh, this will leave them open to be flanked, so I don't want that. I also don't want to have them sitting beside each other because then they're going to get, uh, they're going to give the bonus for the attack on two units. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to accept the fact that some people are going to be more exposed than others. Um... I'm also going to give them every ru every reason in the world not to try that. And then finally, we need to try and do something fancy with the bike. Um, so I'm going to try and get an advantage on these guys here. Okay, similar story. Um, again, I'm not exactly the world's greatest tactician, so... Okay, no Overwatch, apparently. Um, I think I'm going to go for defense mode on that. Uh, again, similar idea. I'm right now just kind of closing the... Closing the distance. We're sort of boxing them in like this. And the hope is that that's going to free up some options for my bike. I bet I'm not going to be able to shoot through this. Oh, I can. Nice. So this might be a tempting target for a blade, but I'm not 100% sure they're actually going to be able to get away with that. So And then these guys... Okay, so they've got shotguns, which already makes me like them. They don't have overwatch, and they can build a turret. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move them right up front. Um, and this is actually going to be... So if I think about where the fight's going to happen, it's probably going to be around in this area over here. So if the next round these guys can put up a turret to look out where I think the fight's going to be, um, we're going to be in, uh, in pretty good shape. Okay. Okay, so they're coming after my commander.
Though these guys are going to be a little bit of a liability in a minute. After the first round of combat, tactical operations can be launched by both sides. Tactical operations can be accessed using the operations interface button in the bottom right of the screen. The player can only launch a tactical operation during their turn, and only one can be launched each turn. Launching tactical operations costs energy and operation points. Operations ready. Cool. Okay, so this guy just got wrecked by the defensive line. Um, as we said, the plan with these guys was to try and put down a turret. Now, of course, there's a really good question as to whether or not the shotgun's going to be the better call. Because, of course, if I do that, then that's going to free up all of these other guys. So let's just see what the turret does. Place a gun turret on a target hex. The summoned unit will inherit any compatible mods uh, that do not grant an active ability. Okay, I want to see how this turret works, so I am going to do it. Hopefully that doesn't cause too many block. Okay, so unfortunately that did cause a bit of a blockage for my bike, but I'm still going to be able to use my bike for what I intended, which was a flank on these guys. Although it looks like this doesn't count as a flank. Oh, nice. I probably should have used it to clean out that guy if that comes down to it. All right. No matter. Um, Enemy so neutralized. Now, in this case, I get my uh, I get my cover bonus again. I'm going to set these guys up. They're going to be behind cover, so they get their bonus, and then of course they get to mop up this beetle here. Almost certainly, these units are Enemy not going to be useful now, and so the rest of my team is now available. And I'm going to do something particularly nasty. This is going to be also the height of confidence. Um, but I'm going to start by slapping them in the backside. So they're going to turn around. So we're trying to draw its attention. Enemy down. Basically, our forces are victorious. It turns to respond to the attack, so I was able to get two uh, flanking attacks on it and wipe it out. And the only thing I didn't do was use the tactical operations, but I'm, I'm fairly clear. I'm pretty sure they're like spells in Age of Wonders 3, so... Thank you, Commander. You got us out of a tight spot there. Don't mention it, Lieutenant. Status report. What happened here? A force of Outlanders made Planetfall a few cycles ago and assaulted our positions. Their assault was centered on the Void Tech facility nearby. We fought them off, but we suffered heavy casualties. Any survivors? None by, uh, none on, sorry, none on their side, but our colony was burned to the ground during the assault. You were looking at all that remains of my detachment and the colony. What a mess. I'm sorry about your casualties, Lieutenant. What about this Void Tech facility? What were the, uh, why were they after it? I don't know, Commander. All of the scientists who knew of the facility perished in the assault. With our colony destroyed, we were unable to annex the landmark to investigate it further. All right, let's get things back on track. I'll take command here. Pack up your settlement so that we can redeploy it and set up a proper colony. Lieutenant Jang, lead the way to the Void Tech facility. Acknowledged, Commander. Objective complete. Now that you have a new colonizer unit, you can found a second colony. A new colony will expand your domain on this planet and increase your income and economic growth. Hint, you can found a colony by moving a colonizer onto the center of a sector and then select the Found Vanguard Colony button in the Sector Interface menu. A colony cannot be placed in a sector adjacent to an existing colony. Uh, okay. More questions. Explore the nearby sector to find the Void Tech landmark. Objectives uh, 1. Investigate the Void Tech landmark. 1. Annex Exadimensional Observation Complex. Well, I guess we know what's, <laughs> what's there. Okay, so this actually, so this looks kind of neat. I wasn't 100% sure on how this works, but that actually gets to uh, Flob's question. So it looks like the way that they're sort of handling um, the construction of cities is a bit different from civilization in the sense that it looks like you can build a city in the center of each sector. In Endless Legend, I believe you can build the city wherever you want, but you can only have one per sector, so it looks like they've kind of taken a page out of uh, Endless Legend in that regard. Um, 
And that's not terrible. Like, you'll notice it doesn't seem to have any kind of, like, you get six food for being here, but you get, like, eight uh, production because you're beside a forest or that. It just sort of seems to be fixed based on your location, which means that there's a little less... There's just a little more time in terms of me spent saying, it's like, okay, which of these areas do I want to take rather than sort of, um, you know, making some marginal choices of do I move it, like, one hex to the right or one hex to the left, so... Okay, uh, orders required. So I don't think there's anything else for me to do in any of these other areas. We're already working on the exploitation. That should be showing up. Apparently these guys are pissed off. They are unhappy because of upkeep. Yeah, well, that's life. Uh, so in two, two turns, we'll have that done. We'll build our colony in the one turn. And we need to investigate the Void Tech landmark as well as annex the Exadimensional Observation Complex. All of that will be happening next turn, so... Obviously, we'll move everyone where we can. Warning, incoming gravitonic wave in 2.26 seconds. Gravitonic wave, what? The hell was that? A gravitonic wave passed through the system. Origin unknown. Well, it looks like we're still holding on to our atoms. Status report. Preliminary readings indicate that the void anomaly absorbed most of the gravitonic force, keeping the planet relatively unaffected. For further analysis, I will need to connect to the void tech facility. It contains advanced sensors that are attuned to the void anomaly. All right, we'll move in and get you hooked up to the Void Tech facility, ASAP. Hello, Sungif, how you doing? No space uh, giraffes or other uh, other safari animals in the game yet, but hope springs eternal. Let's see if I can give these guys some templates. Nope, I still don't have enough resources. Okay, so we'll wait the turn. This is going to tip... Uh, It'll tick over one, um, one towards my exploitation, and then the new center should be built. All right, good news. Objective completed. Sorry, space zebras. Yes. Although, in fairness, we've been killing all the wildlife that we're finding, so maybe it's good that there are no space zebras. Uh, found a new co. Okay, we we did that. <laughs> no, I do not want to raise my improvement uh yep so agriculture exploitation's on its way um, there's actually technically nothing for me to do with this location but let's treat it like it's a real one so um the game recommended that i build a replicator facility um for my first colony. Let's just do a quick comparison. So 24, 80, 105. Now this is partly because of the number of colonists that I have. So let's cut those numbers by half. Yeah, I'd say um, probably food is the better one. And we are going to be... Um, so we're going to be annexing this. Landmarks are remnants of powerful star union structures. There are three kinds of landmarks. Bronze, silver, and gold, with increasing economic value. Landmarks have inherent exploit uh, an inherent exploitation with gold and silver landmarks automatically counting as a level 5 sector. Landmarks unlock special doctrines and colony structures when they are annexed. Gold and silver landmarks first need to be entered to defeat the guards within, and only a single army can enter a structure to fight its guards. Okay. So I'm trying to decide whether I want to build a replicator factory to improve my, um, my manufacturing output, because apparently this sector is a little bit better at manufacturing. Biofarm will help me with the food deficit, uh, I don't have a way of dealing with energy. Um, it's probably a little e early for me to be trying to focus too much on science. I think I'm going to do the biofarm here. Um, and So it's, uh, if I'm going to be going in here, I'm only going to be able to get the advantage from uh, from one army. So... I'll upgrade these guys because I know they're not going to be going into combat. My main hero, on the other hand. There are signs of battle all over the structure. Lieutenant Jiang, is this facility still operational? 
The damage you see on the structure is all superficial. All of the heavy fighting occurred on the outskirts. Avia, can you access the facility and use the, its sensors to see what's happening with the void, void anomaly? Access to the facility is encrypted, Commander. Establishing a connection will require the Void Tech facility to be annexed to the colony so that I can link directly to their mainframe. We don't have time to lose. We founded the new colony nearby so that we, uh, that we can annex the Landmax Sector 2. Okay, so apparently we aren't going in. <laughs> um, annexing that, so that'll be done in one turn, as will our construction. Ronneville can annex another sector. Okay, well, with that in mind, that's this one here. So we could annex the Forgotten Wilderness, which gives us food and or science and um, industry and the mountains give me nothing and the coast apparently is super cool but i didn't do any kind of aquatic uh oh we could theoretically claim the fung forgotten wilderness uh but i'm not going to so let's let's claim the forgotten wilderness the other forgotten wilderness <laughs> Um, you should send an army to an adjacent sector to annex it for this colony. The sector can then be developed to give your colony an economic boost. It'll also be interesting to see whether or not it actually counts as... So I'm going to assume that it's adjacent because it's next to the fungal habitats, but the game may have, the game may have different ideas. Establishing database connection. Connecting to Void Tech facility database established. Running analysis of the Void Anomaly. Report. What are your findings? The Void Anomaly has started to expand exponentially. There is a 99.07 uh, chance that the planet will be consumed by the Anomaly within the next three cycles. We should leave, Commander. Back up all data from this facility and get everyone evacuated. There's no time to waste. Backup status complete. Planetary escape vectors calculated. Caution. Due to the Void Disturbance, there is a 33.1% chance of catastrophic failure during the Gravity Well escape. Safety margins need to be overridden before a course can be locked in. The hell with the safety margins. There's a 100% chance we'll die if we stay. Lock in the escape vectors and get us out of this hellhole. <laughs> I, I beat the game against myself. All right. Thank you, everybody. This has been Age of Wonders Planetfall. I hope you really enjoy it. Feel free to buy it on Steam. No, obviously, that is the tutorial. We barely escaped the surface of the planet before the Void Anomaly consumed it. We're lucky to have gotten the colonists out alive. These last few days have left me filled with more questions than answers. What happened on the surface here? What was that gravitronic wave that ripped through this star cluster? Maybe I should try and make my voice closer to this guy? <laughs> nah. Well, it looks like we'll have plenty of time to sleep on this. The gravitronic force destabilized the void rift in this system, making faster than light travel impossible. We have to get home the old-fashioned way. It will take us close to 200 years to reach the nearest star union hub. I have ordered everyone to prepare for cryosleep. We will see what kind of world we wake up to. The currents of the void shift around me. Follow my voice, my last possession. My name was Empress Carmenia, and I was the last regent of the Star Union. We built a paradise on a thousand planets. A glistening web strung between the stars. But the cataclysm shattered all, leaving our people stranded and alien to one another. Whoever you are, whatever you have become, it is time to leave this dark age behind and return to the worlds of your ancestors. Uncover our secrets, but heed our mistakes. I'm assuming at least somebody... Forge a new empire. <laughs> a new age of wonders. I'm assuming somebody on the development team had watched the David Lynch 
Dune movie. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I believe this is the main campaign. Um, so these have been un uh, locked up. So we've got Leave Six. After 200 years of cryosleep, the Vanguard face a classic cataclysmic homecoming. Arcadia, uh, I don't know if it's Celeste or Celeste, uh, still haunted by their past. The freed Krico seek a new future for their race. Chimera, Glacialis, uh, in the ice in an icy wasteland, two Devara consortia compete for the riches of a forgotten world. Um, Seronis Alpha is we get after completing Leave Six. So it looks like these are sort of story um, story missions. I kind of want to try these guys. Uh, one thing I do want to quickly draw... Actually, you know what? If I'm right, so we'll do new campaign. The currents? Yeah, it, as nice as that cinematic is. Okay, yeah, so this is the main... Uh, this is the main campaign... Um, menu. Uh, one thing I do want to just draw your attention to, because I probably won't do this on my own, um, one of the big things that really draw, drew my attention of the original um, kind of what drew my attention to the original Age of Wonders games was this uh, commander um, like the, the fact that you'd kind of design your ruler. So we've got the Assembly, the Vanguard, the Kirko, the Syndicate, the Amazon, the Devar. Let's, I'll go with the uh, Vanguard this time. So remember that this was the top of that military uh, tech tree. The secret technology we started with the game would be Void Tech. So Void Tech warps the laws of physics, allowing manipulation of teleportation of matter and energy. Uh, so Xenoplague is another option. Cynumbra, dark psionic powers. Prometheans are planetary exterminators, eradicating threats with their Pyrex fires. And synthesis, since this manipula manipulates AIs to their advantage, hacking and compromising systems for their own gain. Um... That's not bad. Um, Celestian, Ancient Order of Psionically Gifted Individuals. Void Tech actually might be uh, based on all of the other options. Um, I'd say Promethean or Void Tech. We'll go with Void Tech for now. Um, uh... Go with the standard assault equipment. You can give your character... So if you guys remember Stellaris and all of the different benefits. So uh, we took Veteran here. There was... Um, yeah, Military Detachment was what we started with with the... Uh, um, with the tutorial. Anyways, I'm going to just move this ahead here. Um, one thing that they did with the game here, I feel like there's more customization options. So for instance, you know, you can just hit randomize a bunch of times. <laughs> I like the bubble. Oh, here we go. We've got something to work with here. I'm going to go for a default setting. Okay, so let's find... Actually, let's worry about posture later. Let's... Um... Actually, you know what? I was wrong. I should have... Let's just take this all back to defaults. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I'm just going to go with like default uh, options, but... Let's... That's a very heroic face. We'll go with that. It's like slightly... Slightly weathered and battle hardened, or or new. We'll we'll do slightly slightly weathered. Um, <laughs> stop! Stop looking away from me, damn it! Can you even notice the eyes? I'll go for nice pale blue eyes to terrify everyone. Um, all right, hairstyle's the most important. This this definitely seems like uh, like the sort of thing you'd actually want your space army to have. Okay. <laughs> 
I don't know. I I do rather like this jacket. So let's let's keep with these this jacket. What we have here is a failure to communicate. I can add a cape to my already my already uh, long jacket. All right. And then finally, we need to pick an appropriate background. Yeah, there we go. This is this is absolute perfect. Oh yeah, and then of course uh, your um, cool hand, Luke. I kind of feel like you got to go with this one if you're going to. Yeah. So like this is I, I, I want to spend some time doing this just because number one, this is awesome. And I am going to spend a lot of time inside of this. Um, I mean, there's some other things I could do here. Like I could ditch the I could ditch the helmet. Um, I don't know what ha I don't seem to remember giving him that scar. Um, what could we do with the facial hair wrong hairstyle doesn't quite work for that sure why not <laughs> now nah, we can do better with the hair the hair is one that's always tricky for me to work with Anyways, uh, obviously there is a lot that you can do with the uh, custom commanders, but on its own, right? Uh, let's just delete that because I only did that for the, the face. Please, please delete him. Maybe it's because I've picked him. Okay, appar apparently I'm keeping this guy. Oh, there we go. Um, but yeah, like if you wanted, if we wanted to just look at the Vanguard, like the class that I was playing, uh, we have, oh, apparently great minds think alike. This is actually a much better looking version of what I did. Um, so we've got Adam McKinley, Aya Sashimoto, Dayo Jang. This is the, um, the person that we saved. Ava Montin, I don't know if it's Montin, Montinia, I guess. Frank Vance, Hai Jang, Jack Gelder, who we were just playing. Although apparently Jack Gelder is normally Promethean, not uh, the Void Tech one. So apparently, apparently we're given a slightly different one. Michael Valentine, which is that is that is a, a fine look. Uh, Nicole Crustus and Robin Booker. And as you can notice, they all have those different um, those different secret techs in addition to having a bunch of benefits and drawbacks. So what class is the dinosaurs? I believe that is the Amazons, uh, Johnny, but what would probably be better would be for me to look at the in-game um, sort of encyclopedia. By the way, um, it's not just campaigns. There are scenarios. This is true of the... 
Um, this is true of uh, Age of Wonders as well. So there is a difference between like the campaign that the game has given me and that I've been going through and sort of individual one-offs. I know Civilization has scenarios as well. I just didn't really play them all that often. So uh, anyways, no dinosaurs on these ones, Johnny. So um, I believe these are kind of like dwarf people, uh, which sort of makes me want to thrifty race of survivalists. But I kind of want to carry on with the the Vanguard story, so we're going to go with them right now. Is there a random map generator? I'm not 100% sure if the scenarios randomly generate maps. So in this case, it says Imperial World. Um, it does look like if I go under... Yeah, so I mean, all of these parameters look like... Um, look like they're being... Uh, Actually... That raises an interesting question then, because I know one of the DL... I thought the DLC was referring to... Or the, like... Oh! Scenario Planet. Neat! Okay, so, like, this is one of these things that you get if you get the deluxe edition of the game. And apparently this is a different planet type for randomly generated worlds. I did not know that. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. So I think Scenario would be if you want a randomly generated... Um, a randomly generated setup, whereas this is for sort of the pre-built ones that uh, Triumph have made. Wait, why are you so... Oh, because of the dwarf people? Oh, don't worry. Well, we'll see what happens after Leave 6, right? This might be a short uh, might be a short mission. So, after 200 years of cryosleep, the Vanguard face a cataclysmic homecoming. Um, in this case, I won't... Uh, I'm not going to adjust the... Um, I'm not going to adjust the settings. Yes, this means I'm playing on beginner. Presumably it will change. I don't know. It's my first run. I'm going to go with what the game assigns to me, and uh, we will... If it's trivial, I'll, I'll bump it up as time goes by, but... Commander's personal record. Vanguard Expeditionary Forces. Cryosleep cycle completed. No casualties. Time since launch? 197 years. We're finally back. After a storm destroyed our hyperspace passage, we had to take the long way around. Most of us joined the Vanguard to escape our past. Two centuries should be enough to give everybody a clean slate. One word I'll say also about the beginner thing. I can't say this about this game because obviously we're all learning this at the same time. But one thing I've always liked is generally sort of the scenario, like the training scenarios, tutorials and things like that tend to be very brief. I draw them out because I talk a lot over them. Um, but what I tend to find is when you, you still have the training wheels on, it's sort of nice to have things on beginner because then you can just get it through really quickly. And once they unlock all of the toys for you to play with, then you can switch it to normal difficulty and get kind of what the base game is. Um, but sometimes you just want to figure out like what all the buttons do. And in that case, moving fast is a little bit better than getting, you know, the internet, uh, the internet points for playing on hard right away. Time to contact Vanguard Central Command. We're heading for leave six the military transit hub in this section of the borderlands. The crew is already speculating about visiting the Elysium parks. Gambling, booze, and promiscuous androids. Oh well, after two centuries of sleep, it's time for some fun. Something is wrong. We have reached the Leaf Six star system, but instead of orbital patrol, there was only scattered wreckage awaiting our arrival. While searching for survivors, we spotted a ship of unknown configuration. Entering the planet's atmosphere, it ignored our hails. Residual void interference prevents us from scanning the surface. The Elysium Parks must wait. We have a new mission. We need to assess the strategic situation on Leave 6. Contact Vanguard Central Command and help them clean up this mess. Prepare for planetfall, for the Vanguard, and for the Union. I mean, even uh, B-29, I think that's a very realistic idea in terms of what we actually want to make the androids for, wouldn't you say? <laughs> okay, uh, tiny world, land, 3% water, 97% land, find out what happened on the planet and find the alien ship. I think we have all the same tech as before. Uh, Vanguard assault, military detachment, and void tech. God, I, I really like the look of this game. <laughs> okay, looks like there's a lot of things to shoot to start Welcome, off with. Commander. I am Ava, your autonomous integrated virtual assistant. 
standard issue for every planetary governor of the Star Union. My messages will appear when important actions are undertaken for the first time. They can be reviewed at any time in the Imperial Archives. Uh, again, the diamond icon and color will assist in early decisions by recommending certain choices to direct the development of your starting empire. These messages can be disabled or reset at any time in the options menu of the command interface, which can be accessed via the button in the top right corner of the interface. Do you wish to enable help messages? Yes, although I suspect there will probably be some repetition. With base camp set, we're ready to march out. Down here, it's the same desolate image as an orbit. Uh, it's all desert and charred ruins. The tropical paradise Vanguard Central created for their soldiers has gone to hell. Someone has been fighting a war here. The question is who and when. So far, none of our standard frequency calls have been answered. If there are any survivors, they're either cut off from communications or unwilling to talk. Time to search for the old-fashioned the old way, with our laser rifles ready. Uh, bleep, bleep, bleep. Bleep. The robot ambles playfully. Would you look at that? Lieutenant Jang, your little friend is making himself comfortable in this rotten place. Yes, sir, but it's no surprise. My brother used to be stationed here uh, at one of uh, the Leaf Six repair stations. This is where we assembled Trapples. He must be feeling he's close to his... Hey, Tapples, what do you think you're doing? Beep, bleep. The robot slips through one of the still unfinished sections of the camp wall and dashes straight towards the desert. Send your, uh, your owl scouts to look for any Star Union presence in the vicinity. Hint, not all armies on the strategic map are hostile to you. Only when an army banner show is showing a skull, you should be careful to interact with it. And we will gain influence. Influence is a diplomatic currency used to manipulate other players and NPC factions. It can be used for things like asking NPCs to move from locations, hiring NPC mercenaries, and making diplomatic pronouncements. Uh, find the alien ship. Locate the landing spot of the unknown vessel. This is an exploration quest. Use your scout units or other fast-moving units to complete it. Find out where Lieutenant Yang's uh, pet pug has run off to. Adventure quest. Make sure you bring an army when you move to the target location. That's actually really nice of them to let me know. Armies with multiple units can be split into smaller, separate armies. It's really nice for them to let me know um, sort of what each type of uh, of mission is. Uh, to split an army, select the move point uh, button positioned above the portrait of the units you want to move from the selected army. When all the units you want are split off and selected, move the units as normal to create a new army. The army, uh, the army's other units will stay in place. Okay, so I wanted to do the exploration one. Well, in this case, we'll, because it's on the way, Although that's not really a scouting group. Anyway, this just seems like a whole lot of opportunities for combat. I like combat. These are Marauder Guards. Having taken a location of value, they will remain there and protect it with their lives. As with regular Marauders, they do not engage in diplomacy and will go stronger as the game goes on. Okay, that gives this me even more reason to get rid of them. prior to any attack. All participating armies are shown, and you will also see an indication of the enemy army's strength compared to your own forces. So it looks like they have more defense than last uh, the last group that I was going after. When an army is attacked, the adjacent hex rule will cause adjacent armies to be drawn in. At the bottom of the interface, the choice between manual and auto combat is available, as well as the option to abort the attack. I'm actually going to take a minute, or I would have taken a minute, uh, to go to the uh, encyclopedia because I know... Uh, I was going to answer the dinosaur question for uh, for Johnny, but on this one, uh, I'm going to go back to manual combat. The one problem I always have with auto combat on games like this is I don't know how it feels about expendable units. Commanders can choose to lead battles themselves using the tactical combat system. Help messages are available for new commanders to learn the basics of combat. Sure, why not? So as before, let's take a quick minute and see what the deal is with these guys. So it looks like they have one attack. Discharge an arc pulse that also jumps to one extra targets within two hex range of the original. Okay, so that means everybody's got to space out, which I'm fine with. Again, we're going to set ourselves up for Overwatch. 
Now, if memory serves, um, this is actually a bit of a worry as far as... Um, like, the fact that these guys do arc damage um, gives me pause. Um, what I think I'm going to do... And then I'm also going to make sure that we rotate facing this way. So again, I'm going to try and get some flanks in, but I know that these guys might be a bit strong against this type of unit. And the key here is going to make sure that I am i don't have too many guys who are all bunched up together while still main, uh, maintaining cover. Uh, this is kind of weak. I'll live with it, but I'm not happy about it. That two hex rule makes for some pretty dramatic um, decisions. Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, <laughs> I didn't count that properly. I am gonna get my flank though. This is slightly counterintuitive, but it's mostly because I want to make sure that I'm uh, I'm not repeating the mistakes of spacing people within two tiles of each other. This is almost just a holding pattern here, because uh, the main action's going on in the middle. Now, can I make the magic happen? Okay, so now I want to be careful because obviously um, I don't get... Like, this guy's going to be kind of weak and we're not going to be able to take this thing out for free. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that counts as within two, two tiles, but I'm also a little more comfortable with that one taking damage just because... Like, Gelder is pretty well protected. Um, these guys are fresh. So next up... Our range... I think I'm just gonna rush these guys in and I'll take advantage of them next... Uh, next turn. Oh. So... I probably should have thought about the fact that that's not actually defense. <laughs> so they're doing the same flank trick that I did to uh, the AI last time. I gotta get these guys out of here, I think. But two can play at that flanking game, so... Uh, I want a better idea of what the position is going to look like when the when the turn's done before I decide what to do with these guys. So okay, this is just going to finish. Oh, I missed. Okay, that's going to complicate things a bit. Oh, you guys suck. Okay. Enemy eliminated. They finished the job, so that's good news there. Um, okay. So 
So I get three shots on this thing at 60%. I'm feeling okay. Obviously, I didn't want to have um, that heavy damage they on, never stood a chance. on a unit, though, so... Units that survive a combat encounter gain experience based on the number of enemies that were defeated during that combat. A unit that has earned sufficient experience levels up and can gain various bonuses. I'm a little curious how damage heals in this, whether you get bonuses from being at home. So let's try... This is one thing that's always hard when streaming these games. I don't quite know. HP, maybe? Hit point. There we go. Uh, represents the amount of damage a unit can take before they're destroyed. A unit's hit points drop to zero. The unit is defeated. Units regenerate a certain number of hit points each turn while on the strategic map. A unit's max... Okay. Uh, regeneration is a measure of a unit's ability to recover its hit points while on the strategic map. This recovery happens at the start of the unit's turn. The amount that a unit regenerates per turn can be found on the unit panel by hovering over the unit's current hit points. This regeneration can be increased by certain passive abilities, unit mods, and economy research. So there is no benefit to keeping them in home territory, it looks like. Um, now, what was this about the rate at which it... I mean, I'm mousing over it, but I don't actually see the... So base plus six. So these guys are actually going to be out of the game for a little bit. Um, am I allowed to annex something yet? Sector limit reached. No. So I'll have to wait about that. Upgrade commander. Uh, oh, okay, cool. They didn't introduce this in the tutorial, but... So, uh, these are the skills. Again, if you played Age of Wonders 3, this is not too unfamiliar. This is, you know... In case you haven't noticed, heroes are really powerful and they're kind of the thing that the whole game gets, um, kind of revolves around. So you've got a few options here. Can now equip Tier 1, Tier 2 vehicles. We don't have vehicles, so I don't want to spend all of my skill points on that. Uh, added accuracy, accuracy is nice. Um... Extra damage is also nice. Uh, more health, okay, but they haven't really been running into that much of a problem. Uh, all air units in the hero's army deal 10 additional damage. Again, we don't have that. Expert at taking cover and gains 2 resistance to all damage while in cover. Uh, one thing that would be kind of nice if I get something that sort of applies to the entire army. So ground commander, all heavy ground units deal 10% additional damage. All light ground units deal an additional 10% 10, uh, 10 damage. Um, rallying Cry, Hero rallies their allies, all friendly units ignore morale penalties for two turns, and Void Bullets uh, ignore 50% of the penalties from color. So I feel uh, Infantry Commander is a pretty good one for us to go for, and I'll just keep the skill point for next round. This is basically a 10% bonus to most, if not all. I'm pretty sure that... Uh, where was it? Infantry Commander... I'm pretty sure it does not apply to this one here. Yeah. Okay. Set production. Uh, first of all, I think we need a central... Okay, so this one is recommending that we build the bio farm. This would be for growth. Uh, the default in the game told me to do uh, production, except we've already got 85, so I can definitely see why the biofarm. And then again, for 4X games, usually an investment in science is always good at, uh, at the beginning, but the thing is is that you can also get a lot of science by having a lot of colony, colonists work. So I agree with this decision here to build the biofarm. 
An efficient biofarm to provi uh, provide a boost to a newly settled colony's growth. Provides 15 food. All right. Um, do I want to queue up anything? Oh, sorry, Johnny. I, I went into the dictionary, but I or the um, the Imperial Archives, but I didn't actually look for the dinosaurs. So units. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> what does one call a dinosaur unit? There we go. There's your dinos. One of your dinos. That's not the dino that we were looking for, though. Maybe it's something different then. Alright, I'm going to have to get back to you on the laser dinos, Johnny, because the laser dinos that I was looking for are different from the ones that I'm seeing in the, the manual right now. Also, I absolutely love that apparently it, there's just a... Okay, it looked like there was like just a difference in chonk on the... Yeah, there is. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> um... They promised laser dinos, though, so they're there somewhere. Okay, uh, let's carry on. Okay, first up, let's see what's going on with these this guys. This is an army belonging to an NPC faction, a group of sentient beings native to this planet. NPC factions can be interacted with and will provide quests and issue demands. Appeasing an NPC faction leads to diplomatic benefits, such as the ability to purchase their units or call upon the faction to war as, uh, or call the faction to war as allies. Stop! Hold it right there, you filthy renegades! Return to your hovels immediately, and we won't have to put you down like dogs. What is this madness, soldier? Is that how a returning crew of a sleeper mission is welcomed home these days? Step aside. Let me talk to your superiors. A sleeper mission? Impossible. There are no more ships arriving from the void. Don't lie to me. Ruby Squad, Emerald Squad, Sapphire Squad, you're all madmen! You know what? We'll let you speak to the Prefect. He'll show you how we deal with traitors. It's hard to believe these wretched creatures were once proud Star Union citizens. I always felt Paragon was going too far with their cybernetic enhancements. But this? Are they even still human? Uh, and what about calling us renegades? Have their brains gone rotten as well, or is there something more to this? It's time to talk to their prefect. Vanguard Central Command will know what's going on. In the meantime, we should keep our eyes open for the co uh, commanders of the Ruby, Emerald, and Sapphire squad they mentioned. They could be trouble. Objective complete. Okay, uh, influence and production are always nice. Find the, find the Vanguard squad leaders. Search the, for the leaders of Emerald squad, Ruby squad, and Sapphire squad mentioned by the Paragon soldier. Um... Prove your good intentions to the Paragon and reach peaceful relations with them. To increase relations with the NPC faction, in, uh, interact with their armies to receive quests or access their dwelling on the strategic map to make purchases within the faction's dwelling shop. So I do actually need to start going... I think this was the objective... Locate Tapples. Okay. So I probably should have gotten my main army to be moving north like that, but... And the funny thing here is, like, with these owls, this is actually not as, um, this is not as speedy as I thought it would be. She's got, uh, 26 speed. 28 is pretty standard for these kinds of units, but... And I'm hoping these guys just guard, 
Um, the overall power for this 345 would probably be able to come out on top, but I'd feel a heck of a lot better if I wasn't, um, you know, I'd feel a heck of a lot better if I, I was a little stronger. Um, okay, actually, it looks like we've regenerated pretty well. Um, we don't negotiate with Marauder Guards. Let's see how this goes. This, this should be a pretty standard fight um, because they should have the exact same abilities we do. Naturally, if anybody has any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, okay, let's take a look at what's going on here. So, laser repeater, targeting field, target enemy unit becomes 35% easier to hit. Okay, so they put a debuff on me. They do nine thermal damage, nine kinetic damage, as well as blow stuff up. They are currently in overwatch. So I want to avoid anything in this cone. This actually will work all right for me, though, because that's not in the cone. What am I doing? Anyone but that guy. <laughs> and apparently this is a melee unit. Um, lash out. Use plasma to lash out at a target. High impact stagger units, reducing action points, canceling defensive. Oh, neat. Okay, so like this is a this is like an anti Overwatch. Um, I'll bet that thing's got forty movement points versus well thirty two. I mean they don't move that much faster. Okay, now I got to figure out how to be clever. Um, well, if they're going to be overwatching, they're going to be overwatching this way. So this has a really easy answer. Um, as for the rest of my crew... I don't need to worry as much about um, the sort of the grouping of everything, so... Gonna just do the very familiar strategy of kind of setting up the walls. And what I do with my commander is sort of the last big question. It is kind of tempting to just make them front and center. Because I know they can take the damage. with melee attacks will enter melee overwatch at the end of their turn, denoted by a red sword icon above their heads. While this unit is in melee overwatch, they will use their primary melee ability against any enemy unit that moves through their threatened area or uses an ability adjacent to them. Melee overwatch can only trigger once per unit. If the unit is staggered, the overwatch is cancelled. So let's see what... So my commander's definitely in a bit of a tight spot, um, but we'll see if I can turn this to my advantage, so... So now we're going to move up. Um, yeah. So we're going to ignore the... Um, the guy that's giving the the buff. Am I? I don't think I'm behind cover here. I'm hoping this mops him up, but no line of sight. Crap. This is going to be a tough call, but it's so much damage that I... <laughs> yeah, my commander is getting really annoyed by this. <laughs> stop, stop, for the love of God! Uh, okay. 
You know what? Screw it. And yeah, kill. Those things are really, really um, troublesome. Enemy kill. So I didn't exactly want to. So if you think about it right, that was fairly costly as far as resources to get that done. This guy's still going to have its reply. Uh, and I essentially needed to use like three units to, to take out that one. But of course, we have the upper hand, and I don't think we're going to lose anybody. So. So, as always, we're going to take advantage of the fact that it's looking in the wrong direction. And we will take our revenge. Enemy eliminated. So the damage was they spread out. Stood a chance. Damage was spread out a little more evenly amongst the units, and then the nice thing is, take the reward. Um, we're also going to be um, so port six is up here, so we're going to be moving up um, through a few areas where there's not going to be any opportunities for combat, and as a result, we're going to be we're just going to have. Uh, a few healing rounds, so. Hazards linger as a reminder of weapons of mass destruction that were deployed in the past. They have a sector-wide effect on any armies in their sector, both on the world map and in tactical combat in that sector. Hazards apply an economic penalty to the colony center where they are in, uh, sorry, to the colony center uh, when they are in one of its sectors. A hazard can be removed by using the remove hazard option while a unit is standing on top, or, top of it. Research must be conducted to unlock this operation. I did not realize that this was a hazardous... So where's the hazardous sector? Geothermal instability. The sector is geothermally unstable, causing fire and heat to leak through the surface. Annexing the sector penalizes the colony with eight uh, unhappiness. Annexing the sector causes a colony to generate 20% less production. Units in this sector lose their strategic map regeneration. Units in this su sector suffer minus two thermal resistance and every two combat turns, all units take eight thermal damage with a strength of four chance to cause burning uh, to non-ethereal and non-mineral units. Cool. Uh, yes, Bormoth, it's released tomorrow. Okay, so ideally I'm not gonna be hanging out in this area. <laughs> I think is the fair, fair statement. And apparently I forgot to do research last round. So NATO support does see, I mean, it's the recommended option. It does actually seem to make the most sense as well, um, because it does give us the injectors, which help me with heal. Um, alternatives would be subjugation ordinance, which can apply bleeding. Um, oh, actually, yeah, the shredder bomb would also be good for, um, that would be decent for getting rid of cover, probably. And then the phase manipulation. I mean, if we run into a lot of melee um, enemies, this will be a really good get out of jail, jail free card. But in this case, I'm going to go with the game's recommendation for an Anite support and social research. I think frontier facilities makes the most sense. Again, aquatic de uh, deployment doesn't make any sense on a world with 3% water. Um, I'm not 100% sure what area surveillance gives me, but I know that this will give me a bunch of, like, bonuses that are really helpful for getting, uh, you know, getting expansion, so. Oh yeah, I should actually move on to the next step. All right, let's maybe think about what tier two and beyond winds up giving me. So the Ecker uh, Walker program gives me some melee units, which is kind of nice. Heavy laser application gives me an incinerator module. So this unit's laser weapons have eight strength. Now that would be good for my commander, but is not really useful for the rest of my group. The engineering core, that was what let me put down a turret before. So if I think I'm gonna be getting into some protracted fights, that's not a bad one. Um, this is more defensive. Stagger resistance is actually pretty good because of Overwatch. Um, See, the Subjugation Ordinance seems kind of cool just because it gives me that combination of a mod for my main, um, like, my main infantry, which I've been using a lot. 
But phase manipulation seems kind of cool because of the ability to mitigate damage. In this case, though, I think I'm going to go for the subjugation ordinance. Um, and social research, frontier policy seems like it would be good. Um, extra food's never bad. Um, so yes, because we don't have exploitations, I think I'm going to do frontier policies instead of the food development like I went for last time. Quantum-powered molecular machines are not magic, they're science. But the uncertainty principle dictates that if I explain to you exactly how it works, it'll stop working that way. So just trust me, it's not magic, it's just probabilistic, quantum state-driven subatomic machines. Stanley Strangelove, publicist, Small Tech Enterprises. Yeah, so NATO support actually seems like a really useful... Um a really useful bonus. Our colonies require the means to protect themselves and a reason to stay. At the very least, it's time to invest in some good old fashioned guns and beer. Dollar Smith, Deneb Colony Mayor. So it's the colonizer and the recreational domes that I'm going to get the most out of. In this case, we're not really doing a lot of defensive wars in this case. Um, now I can build more units. Um, that would not be the worst because that uh, this this group is really just an exploration group uh, but I feel like we probably need some more infrastructure so let's start with um, I wanted to see what's going on with this I forgot the name of the unit the pug Am I going crazy, or is the vanguard, like, missing? Oh, here we go. Uh, so that is 32 movement, just like everybody else. And then the motorbike. 40. Yeah, so I think what we probably wind up doing... Um, I'm going to focus on the skirmisher barracks first. Uh, we don't have any problems with happiness right now, although I should actually, just under core concepts, let's see if I can figure out what uh, happiness. Uh, happiness indicates how content the population of a particular colony is with their situation. Positive happiness can trigger economic boosts, whereas negative happiness can cause riots. You can gain happiness through colony structures, which also provides happiness slots, which in turn generate more happiness when colonists are assigned to them through colonist management. The happiness income of a colony is added to its happiness pool at the end of each turn. When the happiness pool reaches the, hap uh, reaches the happiness events threshold, a happiness event occurs. If happiness income is negative, the amount is subtracted from the happiness pool instead. Once happiness reaches its lower threshold, an unhappiness event occurs. Once a happiness or unhappiness event has occurred, the happiness pool will be reset to zero. The following colony structures provide happiness in the colony. Okay, so we're okay with that for now. So I'm thinking, yeah, the military unit the for now. The colonist tab lists details of the colony's growth and happiness. The colony's output can be fine-tuned by assigning colonists to resource slots. I will let the AI decide the colonist placement right now. So we couldn't even build a colonizer if we wanted. But, but yeah, I went for the bikes just because I'll be able to repurpose this into a scouting unit. Um, I don't know about the commander, though. I think she's probably still going to slow it down. Events listed in the right side of the screen are significant developments that happen during the course of a game. Sorry, guys, I just got to move the mic stand. They include diplomatic messages, battle reports, and notifications from your colonies. And the technologist, if a man with a spade could build a hovel, imagine what he might build with all the tools that technology provides. It is time for us to give our armies the tools that they need to build a glorious new empire. Apply unit mods to five separate units. Use five tactical operations in combat. Reward the technologist. Um, doctrine operation by embedding specialist support personnel with our armies. We can better coordinate our tactical strikes. Gain two tactical operation points. Tactical operations are 25% cheaper to use. 
and Pioneer Reward awarded to the first commander completing this task, we get a hero item. Okay, well, I have an army which is looking for, for fancy toys. to wait two turns for that. The bulwark of civilization, the Imperial Guard is crumbling. The plebeians have gotten into their savage, have given into their savage nature. Help us maintain order within our last bulwark of civilization. Four units slain. I think we can work with that. Uh, the Paragon NPC faction is made up of the decaying remnants of the ruling class of the star unit. Cybernetic implants have allowed them to survive the centuries since the collapse. So, of course, this gives us even more reasons to be moving up to that area. Um, so if I take out three units here, that'll put me on decent footing. I still wanted to... Jack Gilder! I should have known it was you. Uh, who would return to leave six? The air has reeked of arrogance ever since I heard the reports about the landed sleeper vessel. Valentine, somehow I'm not even surprised to find you alive. Bad weeds grow tall. Still, I never expected you to turn against your precious Paragon friends. What happened? Do they no longer look handsome enough for you? Hey, Bremenbina! Thank you very much. It's great to see you too. Um, I had a. There's a fun story that I heard about Germany and um, farming simulator. And I lost it, and then it was like six weeks after, and I was going to direct message it to you, and I was like, ah, you know what, that's going to seem a little weird, because I don't always get a chance to talk to her, and um, now I feel bad for not sending it. I really appreciate you stopping by. Thank you very much. Please say hello to... Um, I feel so bad, I only know him as Gunny Steiner, or now as Blaster1, but please do say hello to the rest of the family on on my uh, on my behalf and I hope everything is going well for you. Typical mocking other people's misery. While you were frozen solid, the rest of us struggled for survival. My position granted me cryosleep access. With a war to fight, I've been in, in and out of cryosleep in anticipation of some sign the Star Union would return. Imagine my disappointment to learn that it's just you. Uh, spoken like a true hypocrite. This is why I always enjoy ha chatting with you. Fun times aside, don't you agree that this is uh, it's time to end this unnecessary blood bloodshed? By the way, I always feel like a complete weirdo when I'm reading hostile dialogue and there's somebody in chat, so I'm saying all this nice stuff to Brem and Bina. <laughs> and <laughs> then I'm busy saying, it's like, oh, what, your masters aren't handsome enough for you? <laughs> so I'm trusting you all have the, the good sense to understand uh, which, which parts are the game and which parts are me talking to Bremen Bina. If not, just remember that the nice guy routine is something I can only sustain like three nights a week. Unnecessary? I'm not supposed to go ahead, uh, sorry, I am not surprised that you fell for Hai Jiang's innocent act. Go ahead, ask him what he did that night in Elysium Parks. For my cooperation, prove that you're not just after my supplies. Go to Sector 43B. Pyrex fires threaten our energy reactors. Quench them, and we can talk again. Convince Michael Valentine to cease fire. Find a way to convince Michael Valentine to end the infighting between the Vanguard, either through diplomatic or military means. Complete one of the objectives. We either defeat Michael Valentine, or we reach an alliance with them, and we'll get a Vanguard walker for our trouble if we do it. Extinguish the Pyrex fire. The geothermal instability threatens the Imperial Energy Complex in Sector 43B. Remove it. Uh, to remove a hazard, you must first complete the Society Research Environmental Conditioning. Once that is done, you can move one of your armies on the hex with the hazard and remove it for a cost in energy and cosmite. Okay. Hopefully that is not a timed event because I have a feeling it's going to take us a while to research that. I still want to find the alien ship. Um, so...
That is really far away. Quimby can annex its first sector. Actually, you know what? These guys are probably better suited for annexing people. So it's recommending that I take the Black Moon Summit. Not a bad call because it's um, production and energy. Mind you, it's all production and energy. Tender's Grove. So that would not be bad for food exploitation. And then Beetle Peaks with an abandoned quarry. Well, we'll see how it goes. Um, obviously, my uh, the diplomat. We are not alone on this world. Others come to share it with us. We should make contact with them, make peace with them. From peace comes friendship, and from friendship comes unity. And united, we shall make this planet our own. Sign a non-aggression pact with another player. Maintain peaceful relationships for ten consecutive terms. Gain the diplomat and a happiness reward. Okay. Obviously, I'll need to find a faction for that, though. The warmonger. Uh, enter a war with another player, kill six units belonging to another player. I can work with that. Others have come to this world to steal its treasures and hoard its secrets. This must, must not stand. Set forth your armies to punish these thieves and claim what is rightfully yours. And victory condition, end the vanguard conflict. Jack Gelder, you can end this mission by putting an end to the military conflict between the different vanguard squad leaders on leave six. Emerald squad, ruby, and sapphire. Okay. Well, now we know what we're supposed to do. So again, I want to, I'm going to repurpose this unit for um, annexing sectors. These guys, obviously, I have another, another goal in mind. Uh, is this worth it? This gives me River, River Mountain Arid, as opposed to. Well, see, it is recommending that I get... You know what? I'm going to take this sector for the simple reason... I know the game says that I should be taking Black Moon Summit, but the, I think the fact of the matter is, once I clear this thing out, this is actually going to synergize a little bit better with um, the production exploitation that I'm going to get it to do. Okay, so I've got some fancy bikes that I can build, but are there other structures that I want to build? Um, upgrade the militia, I can get better happiness, I can get um, botanical gardens, but that's just happiness. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to maintain the happiness. My other alternative, yeah, so my alternatives are to build my scout units now or to invest in the overall well-being of the, you know, I think in this case we'll do the recreational dome at least because that's two, that's two turns. Um, we'll decide with the rest as to whether or not I want to, um, I want to go too much further down the, the path. Um, it's also a good question as to whether or not I want to do the assault. I think I'm actually just going to do some standard assault bikes on this one. Um, it's because it's a one turn difference. And I'd really rather not spend the Cosmite on what is ultimately a scouting unit. Um, though, when it comes to spending Cosmite, <clears throat> I am going to spend it on this guy. So hopefully that gives me one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I've modded five units, so hopefully that'll give me my technologist boost. Operations available for priming. I did not know about this. Operations strength one, defense one. Okay, so colony militia, the population is armed and ready, recruiting troops uh, directly. Ah, I get it now. Um, let's prime the frontier survival. Subject Though primitive, blades have always been lethal, especially striking a foe flying at supersonic speed. Orindra Reaver, Syndicate Assassin, 
Okay, this is good. Um, obviously, I'm going to be light on the resources that I need to be able to equip my guys with that, but still good to know. Uh, so if I go for heavy laser applications, that's eventually going to lead to photon acceleration. And again, that's just a pure benefit for my leader. Engineering core is another unit for me to work with, but the fact of the matter is I'm not really going to be adding units anytime soon. I think in this case I'm going to do the heavy laser applications because my leaders are such a just such a huge um, huge factor in terms of combat. The remains of a transport contain a salvageable energy pod worth 24 energy. Unfortunately, its destroyed systems reveal no data on the convoy's origin, destination, or what led to its destruction. See so, yeah. Um, we're now exploring the sector, so that's good. Okay, so Vanguard Owl and these infuriating plasmoid guys. These guys are actually going to be kind of tough for me to deal with because of their armor. Um, but we'll manual combat this. So the good news is this doesn't quite work as well as a combo. Um, if they're in melee range, they're, I'm already going to be pretty easy to hit. So... What I want to do, though, is I want to try and set my guys up in positions that are kind of hard for the AI to access. So, again, if I can, I'm just going to get a bunch of crossfire set up for them to deal with. Although this one might... No, this, this will still be fine. Um... The thing is, there always has to be at least one tempting target for them to go after. I'm going to feel a little uncomfortable doing this because he was the target last time. And then, as is tradition... I'm going to go the long way around on the bike. Operations ready. Interesting. So apparently we're just going to stand off. And I'm 100% fine with that. I'm actually going to keep everyone in position like this. The only change I'm going to make is I'm actually going to move these guys up closer. <laughs> I should also be able to for Jack. Oh, apparently I didn't give him the the Nanites. That's a shame because he's actually the one person who needs them. Okay, so how far can these things move? Okay, so they can move all in this area. Actually better still. So again, still can't hit me, but what I'm going to be able to do now is move in around the back. Okay. And again, just the tempo allows me to close the box a little bit. Okay, so obviously I want to see if I can cause it angst. Burning gr Oh! Okay, that makes things a little more interesting than I thought they would be. Ok, 
Okay, so I'm going to wait on this guy just because he has two options. Let's see what we've got here. Aren't exact... <laughs> That's not the most inspiring action we've seen. So these guys can get an attack off here. That's worth keeping in mind with uh, these folks. So again, we want a sufficiently tempting target. Uh, is Jack going to be able to... Yes, he's going to be able to help out his comrades. So we'll set him up here. These guys, I still want to knock down the... Enemy okay. down. So now this gives the obvious target. Fair enough. But again, they're going to have to come to me. So if they want to do the attack on this guy, that's fine. We've got an entire army able to to put the beat down on, on him. Now again, I want to be careful about that because each time I damage this thing, it burns and these guys get hurt. So I might even just l sort of run away with it. But we'll see, uh, we'll see how the round goes. All right, apparently I miscalculated. Units with melee attacks will enter melee overwatch at the end of their turn, denoted by a red sword icon above their heads. While this unit is in melee overwatch, they will use their primary melee ability against any enemy unit that moves through their threatened area or uses an ability adjacent to them. Uh, melee overwatch can only trigger once per unit. If this unit is staggered, the overwatch is cancelled. So I did move out of it, and that was just... I'm, going, I'm basically saying I am accepting the damage that I'm going to take, knowing that I can heal like this, and then turn around and fire. And then this unit finishes the job. Enemy neutralized. Okay, so there's going to be a similar story that goes on with um, with this group. Unfortunately, it looks like I don't get to do anything other than run away with this guy, but such is life. Oh, no, I was wrong. So what I'm going to do... Well, what I prefer to do would be to try and get some kind of a flank on him so that all the guys from the side can... Eh, yeah, this'll work. Alright, that's... Not, not quite what I was hoping for. Uh, I'm going to abandon the damage bonuses that I get here, because uh, the hope is that I take this thing out this turn. And I'm specifically aiming to get some flanking. Um, uh, maybe flanking doesn't work on these things. Okay, so this is the last unit that's going to be able to do anything. And we should be good. So again, Enemy down. we took some damage, but it'll Our all be healed by the time victorious. we go to... By the time we take on our next battle, that'll all be fixed. Okay. So, Beetle Parks, yeah. So in this case, it's pretty obvious that our exploitation should be industry. And I'm actually going to prioritize industry over the bike. Okay, now... Again, these guys, I'm really thinking that the owls get spun out into a different group. Oh, but see, that still doesn't deal with the fact that this commander... Um,
Yeah, I'm going to put her... So basically, I'm going to put her on the assault bike and everyone else. Um, okay. We Vanguard are better suited for a more self-reliant life on the frontier. Big city rules and civilian luxuries make a fighter like me soft around the middle. On the frontier, a soft middle makes an easy target. Teddy Slade. Vanguard infantryman. Okay. Uh, now we wanted the environmental conditioning. Um, so it looks like all exploitation leads towards it. So in this case, we'll do production development. Environmental conditioning will happen after that. don't really know if it matters which one I'm in, but we can move closer when we do this, so I will. Sector annexed. And I know what these there were like these little intermediate missions that I was given. Um in terms of like um You know, it said uh, outfit five units with mods or something like that, uh, but apparently that didn't trigger. Okay, so almost good as new. Mostly this is just cleaning up stuff on my way to my actual objective. So I want to be careful about the marines. These little guys, I think I'm going to be able to handle. Uh, and as always, I want to try and find cover where I can. So let's run these guys up. Going to give them a wide berth uh, this time around. I mean, if they head towards the bike, so much the better, because I know I can always outrun them. Um, but uh, this kind of gives them a tough call because either they go in for the melee, at which point I get a flank, or they hold off, which is kind of what I want them to do. And in this case, there are grenades in the game, but if they get close enough to throw grenades, they're also close enough for me to shoot them. So I'm not going to worry too much about that yet. All right. Fortunately, I'm also running out of room for my troops, so these guys are probably going to take some damage. But I'm going to make sure the boss man is in place to, to defend. I will turn just to make sure that they don't get some kind of a weird... I, I don't see any way that they could get flanked like this, but... Okay, it looks like they're going after the... Looks like they're going after the bike. So I always want to make sure that I am out of range of these things. Oh, devious. So anywhere I want to get out of range of these things... Looks like it's able to hurt me. Oh, that's not entirely true. So if I move here, I can still shoot. Actually, would have been smarter for me to blow this thing up. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. So obviously I wanted to be dealing with this Vanguard unit here, but this is, a, this is too much of a good opportunity for me to, to pass up. Enemy killed. Cool. So next thing I want to be careful about is grenades. So all this clustering is going to become a liability in the next couple of turns. 
I think for that... This is risky, but I think I'm going to... I kind of want to see what they do. Oh, okay, so it turns out that that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Okay, let's see how the Shredder Bomb works then. Again, yeah, not much in terms of uh, cover damage, but... I'm learning. So, nothing interesting with the grenade. I think I'm just gonna set up an overwatch in case they decide to get clever. Is that a gr- okay. Fair enough. So this is a little dangerous for my hero here, but we should still be able to take out the the enemy. So first priority is going to be to try and get the bike in to hit the vanguard. Well, they're all vanguard, but... Enemy neutralized. Enemy down. All right. They've Let's never stood a chance. A little more damage on the hero than I wanted, but that's not the end of the world. Can be gamed one colonist. Apparently, it pays to be a bully to people. Uh, what else do I want here? So, again, I don't want specialists. I'm fine. Grants two experience per turn to all units. Uh, in any stack currently on or adjacent to the colony. I wonder if this is... Like, I, I wonder if this is something that you can redo time after time. Um, I'm not actually going to take it right now. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to hammer out more bikes. Okay, um, we will slouch on to Bethlehem. They're actually not the worst unit in the world for just doing this little pickup and stuff like that. But obviously, the stars of the show are uh, are these guys. Um, the real question is, do I want to try and take out? these units as well. Bulwark of Civilization, seven units slain. See, apparently it hasn't been counting any of the... Apparently it hasn't been counting any of these fights that I've been doing in between. So this one's a little scary because I've got some weaker units inside, but we should be able to manage it. I'm just going to be a little more careful with my uh, my commander on this one. These things obviously can jump, so setting up our defensive defensive line and letting them come to us is going to be the order of the day. Uh, it, these things do have a sweeping attack that sort of um, attacks two units. So this isn't exactly cover. Um, this is just mostly mostly clustering all my guys into one into one spot. Um, okay, now this one's not exactly going to be a profile in courage, <laughs> but I'm going to hold off on on this move for a bit because if I move too close, then basically these things are going to run in and eat me. Um, and my boss, I'm going to keep him to the side like that. I can't believe that the assault bike has healing. It 
while my leader does not. Alright, so that's the thing I was a little worried about. Um, so in this case... I'm going to zip to the other side. Now if I feel like it... Yeah, why not? Every time that they... So my view on this is that every time they wait, um, it's another opportunity for us to move and gain a better position to prepare for their their inevitable attack. Um, this is not my favorite move in the world. Um, we are very clumped. Should have done that a long time ago. Alright, now this is going to be the one that's tricky. No, it's not. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All the time that we delay is just going to be time that we take damage, so... <laughs> Turns out this is going to be over a lot sooner than I thought it would be. Um, I'm going to get the flank on the scarier unit. Enemy eliminated. Enemy annihilated. So these guys are on fire. <laughs> I'm gonna hold off on a little, a uh, little bit. So again, this is following the create a temptation and then make them pay for it. So I got one unit up front. That's the bait. I really need to come up with a better spot for these guys. They're not getting a cover bonus. Um, I don't think this will actually count, but why not? All right, so let's see what they do. They have to do their jumping attack. Yep. Enemy neutralized. They never stood a chance. Okay, uh, Deadeye will increase accuracy, range specialist, vitality void bullets, uh, rallying cry. Let's say... Expert field medicine heals all friendly units in the army for six each turn out of combat. So this would be when I'm moving around the map. That's not terrible, but we're actually already generating health pretty quickly. Um, so I'm actually thinking in this case we go just for more shooting, uh, and which in this case would be range specialist two and close quarter spec. No, what am I doing? Close quarter specialist? Get out of here. Uh, Deadeye. We don't have the therm... No, we don't have thermal yet. Um, if memory serves, actually, so I know there was there was that thing... Operations form a flexible toolkit that allows commanders to support military actions and steer government policies. Ops um, of increasing strength are unlocked through research and are listed on the left side of the operations interface. Uh, they are subdivided into three categories tactical operations, strategic op operations, and doctrine. Strategic and doctrine operations need to be primed before use. The priming process takes a number of turns pending the ops cost and your available strategic operation points. Doctrine operations are automatically activated when they finish priming. Strategic operations such as airstrikes can be launched on your orders. Note that you can keep multiple ops primed at once. All right, well, we already know that we have these tactical ops. We don't have any strategic operations, and uh, I still stand by my earlier choice. I wish I could find that 
like milestone. Oh, here it is. An overview of available objectives. Quests can come from NPC factions or from special sources during the campaign. The active victory conditions for the current session can be seen here, as well as your progress in each condition. Uh, once researched, a capability rank is shown for each category, showing how well you are doing compared to other players in the game. Covert operations can be used to gather extra information on non-allied players. In addition to regular quests, the game features empire tasks. These are divided into three categories, each representing an important pillar of your faction. Uh, progressing through these empire tasks yields rewards and sets you on a path to victory. Being the first commander to complete a task gives you an extra pioneer reward. Okay, so this was what we were looking at before. I just need to use the tactical operations in combat now. Uh, builder, we need to found a second colony. Okay, that's good to know actually. I'll maybe change my production to meet that. Uh, I'm gonna wait a while on the warmonger, declare war on an NPC faction, and kill two armies belonging to an NPC faction. I don't... Bel this is an interesting question actually, if it's... Um, if like the emerald and sapphire groups count um i'm pretty sure the npc faction thing is like groups like this um Okay, uh, the game is telling me that it would be a good idea to build a colonizer. So maybe I want to skip the bike. And I spent too much money on toys. So I might actually have to rebuild that bike after all. We'll see how it goes. For now, we end the turn. Okay, on our way to port six. Looks like our little robot friend has found himself some company. Though, wait a second, aren't these road sweeper units patrolling the streets? I may not be an expert on maintenance robots, but the last time I checked, they didn't require laser guns to do their cleanup. Troop hygiene must have really dropped since we left. <laughs> Good one, Commander. Though I doubt this place has seen any visitors that would be, uh, have appreciated a clean walkway in quite a while. It looks, uh, it looks completely deserted. Agreed. Either way, I suggest we interrupt this particular mop, uh, mopping up before your little pet gets blown to pieces. Objective complete. All right, I will take the reward. Rescue Tapples before it gets attacked by the maintenance droids. Hint, some landmarks need to be entered to fight its defenders. Move your army onto the structure to be able to enter it. So this one's going to be a little risky because my commander is uh, has been damaged. But Oh, looks like we get another round, so that won't be as bad as I thought it would be. Okay, uh, let's get you to collect... In this case, I actually don't want them to move to Quemby. I want them to go collect items. Doctrine enacted. For as long as Vanguard had been sent to remote worlds, they had been trained to sustain themselves while new supplies were en route. As a result, the military helps to maintain and control food consumption in our colony. And then... Happiness event in colony. Due to the happiness of your population, there is a boost in production income. The colony's production income has increased 100% this turn. So this is great news. I mean, I would have loved to have a, um, a colonizer being built um, right now. But unfortunately, we're short on important resources for that to happen. Some of which we will hopefully pick up off the ground. You find salvageable imperial, uh, sorry, a salvageable imperial supply reserve containing 21 food. Unfortunately, the container logs are destroyed and you can't trace where the resources came from. Message from the Paragon faction. A group of pirates are ripping implants out of Paragon bodies. These cowards often to target defenseless cryosleepers, leaving them to die as plebeians. The implants grant us abilities that we need for the resurrection of the Star Union. Follow these thieves and kill them. Ah, I did not realize... Okay, so this is a 460 power, so that's a little too strong for me. Yeah, so I should have been able to take these things out, and I wasn't thinking straight. Okay. Well, 
Uh, we're at port six first, so let's get this out of the way. Spaceport landmark unowned. This landmark is an advanced production sector, giving you the following when annexed. Plus 60 production, plus 6 pop, plus energy. Additionally, unlocks the following building in your colony, spaceship maintenance bay. So this will be good, although I'm actually going to need a, I'm going to need a colony to exploit it. All right, so this should be straightforward. Um, Autonom, monitor, defensive laser. Okay, so this looks like it gives buffs. Golem, this thing hits like a truck, so I want to be careful. And this thing has a laser that will set me on fire. Looks like, looks like Fallout. I'm curious, by the way, for those of you who are not familiar with this game, what do you think of it so far? I'm, I'm enjoying it, but I have no idea whether or not that ever comes across in the broadcast. Although I think people say they usually do like it when I play strategy stuff. Okay, so again, I want to try and take advantage of cover where I can. Um, this one I'm being a little less cautious. Um, this is just partly because I don't think there are a lot of really good cover options based on where these guys are. So instead I'm going to put sort of the the units that can stand to take a few hits up front. Um, this time I'm going to get the... the bike's going to go around the edge to deal with this guy. And my commander... I'm still going to put my commander front and center, um, but we're going to hit him with the Nanites right away. Actually, these guys can also drop the Nanites. We'll have a clearer idea of what we're up against when they make... They're gonna... So basically the AI is gonna commit to some moves. Um, I'll have a little bit of a better idea of the position once they've... Um, they've sort of announced their intentions by where they're moving. Okay, so they're going up the middle. We can work with this. Although I have no idea if this thing gets a flank or not. Operations available. Okay, this is actually going to be kind of neat. Um, yeah, this will do the max max damage here. I'm going to try and take out a little bit of um, cover as well. That's really cool that that got rid of the Overwatch. So, um... I kind of want to see if there are flanking... Okay, so there isn't a flanking bonus against this guy. That is okay. Um... One, because I plan on taking this thing out. <laughs> um, but number two, I'm still going to try and take what I consider to be advantageous positions for the, you know, kind of their reply. Enemy down. So again, I'm going to I'm going to run through the buffs on this. I'm going to more or less do a straightforward firefight. And unfortunately, I probably should have brought this guy into play a little bit sooner, because um, I have a feeling they would have been more effective here, and that would have freed up a unit to take these guys on. Um, yeah, we'll do this. Uh, I'm not too comfortable with this, actually. Ah yes, and I've got my super cool commander. Um, so this thing obviously does Enemy more damage. Kill. This guy, if they if they get a couple of pot shots off on my guys, then that's life. And actually, I think these guys still. Wow, that actually does a lot more damage than I thought it would. So these guys still have their uh, nanite tool.
Enemy neutralized. Our forces are victorious. Okay, so that's the that's one of the missions for the the game done. Beep bleep. The robot euphorically jumps from Dayu Jang to Jack Gelders, luring its antenna in excitement. Come here, Taplets. Now there's a good boy. Uh, though you have to promise never to run away like that again. Just look what you got all of us into. Looking around may actually be worthwhile on this occasion, Lieutenant. Do you remember how all the ships here had been polished and flagged for our launch day? Now they all look like they belong to a museum for, or a deconstruction hangers on guard at 10. Or sorry, 20. Uh, it almost makes me feel like a living ghost. As always, Objective take the complete. reward. I should have seen... Um, let's take a quick look at my hero here. So I can equip him with a Scorcher Rifle instead. So both give 90%, 10 versus 14. So I think this is better in... Uh, I can't afford the incinerator mod. No, I can't because of the energy. All right. Well, I guess we'll, I guess we'll just wait for the colony, uh, the colonist, um, the colon or you know what I'm talking about, the colony module. Lasers are fast, accurate, and leave no bloody mess. Just the delicious smell of fried bacon. Mark McNash, CEO, Lays Tech. Okay. Um, I'm not going to ignore um, the other tactics I had in place, so I am going to build an engineering core. Because it does look like at some point I'm going to need to do a real fight. Um, There's a way to do anything. There's also a smarter way to do anything. Trade secrets are often more about a well-trained workforce than a secret sauce. Tony Rubio Strong, Manpower and Machine Motivational Consulting. All right, so environmental conditioning. Oh, I was kind of hoping that we would be able to do that. So why can't I? Is it because I already own it? That's really depressing <laughs> if we do. Um, okay, well, fair enough. Um, so I can do quantum gain, which will give me plus one for each colonist, but it will take a long time to develop. Um, Okay, area surveillance. Let's figure out more carefully what this does. So it's strategic operations. Monitoring station appears in the targeted hex. The station provides the deploying player with vision for six hexes and sensor coverage for 12 hexes. The station is concealed and can only be detected by other players with detection or if they move adjacent to it. Monitoring stations are not marked. Okay. Native threat locator reveals the location of the nearest unexplored hostile spawner to the target colony and capability ranking unlocks capability rankings this seems good so let's do area surveillance before we go too deep down the tree okay now as far as quemby goes yeah i really screwed us by not not thinking this through um but that's fine so these guys i'm gonna send out um This is going to be a united group for now, um, because I kind of want to deal with these. And then following that, we can consider creating a, stout, a scout group. And it looks like we can annex another sector. So you should send an army to an adjacent sector to annex it for the colony. The sector can then be developed to give your colony an economic boost. And it doesn't look like the game is recommending a an annexation target this time. Interesting. 
Oh, but this is a really helpful little... Um... So presumably I can't annex this. Um... So this aligns really well with my building priority. Um... Yeah, I think I'm actually going to wind up taking Dynamo Mount. I kind of want to take the Black Moon Summit because it's already cleared and I have... Um, it would be nice to get a science bonus, but the fact that I can stack yet another um, production bonus is kind of cool. Okay, we'll finish the turn and we'll see where it goes next. Okay, so first up, we're going to combine these guys. Combined power of 870 now, which should be more than enough to take out these 460. So, again, not too worried about these guys. These I will be careful about. And then this is a this is the thing that's going to freak me out a little bit. Now, I've never used the owls before, though. So this will also be interesting just to see how this all sort of works in the grand scheme of things. Okay. I think in this particular case, I'm going to, again, take advantage of mobility. Send him right there. I want to make sure that they're not actually able to cause any harm. These guys, on the other hand... Again, I'm going to sort of take advantage of, um, of mobility. As for these units, nobody has Overwatch, I don't think. Ah, neat, but when the firefight actually starts, we'll be in good shape. Okay, now that thing can actually cause me damage here, so I don't want to go behind that, even though it does count as cover. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to put the majority of my forces over to the right here. And that's either going to make... So there's going to be one of two things. Either they're going to commit to this guy over here, which means that everybody else is safe, or they're going to readjust. They're going to start moving towards here, at which point this guy can sort of swoop in. See how this works. That did a lot more damage than I was thinking it would. Okay, so they are committing to this guy. Operations ready. Laser strike. <laughs> All right, so this guy's got to be a little careful. Ouch. So I kind of want to try and get close to this guy to heal them but not at the cost of not being able to do some damage to the enemy, so... Nice. So that 
some point I'm going to need to make some decisions about what I do with this guy. So anywhere I move here, um, I think they're going to be able to reply with an attack. So maybe what I do is I commit... Nah, you know what? I don't think I'm actually able to do any serious damage. Yeah, I... I should have actually been a little more careful in terms of how I thought about this. So in this case, this is just going to be a bait um, for that unit, and we're not actually going to do anything about that for now. Um, what we are going to do, though, is start mopping up some of these guys. That's sad. I was really hoping that we would take that out. Enemy neutralized. All right. The way that those sounds, I'm now going to call these the war vacuums. Oh, that is so sad that that's out of range. Oh, this is an interesting idea. Uh, can these guys do anything about flying units? I guess we'll find out. Yeah, so I'm going to move this, uh, the bike in closer. Ah, oh, I might lose it. I got very lucky. So I'm going to move them in closer to the owls so that they can get um, healed. Oh, the owls don't heal. It's the um, pug. Back in the game. All right. I kind of want to focus down as much as I can on the... Trap. Enemy down. I did want to focus down as much as I can on the, uh, the guy here, but I think I am... I... I didn't understand my abilities well enough, so I didn't really plan... I didn't plan well enough. Um, so my best bet, so not my best bet, but my best hope is if they latch out, they latch on to my commander, because my commander can take the damage. And if that is true, um, the real question is whether or not we just gang up on this guy and deal with them, or we deal with this target first. Okay, so they committed to the committed to the boss. That's a lot of damage. Um, okay. Damn it. Enemy kill. Yeah, so this thing's always gonna punch back when it's threatened. So the ideal would be to use as few strikes as possible to take it out. Enemy eliminated. Yeah, that wasn't pretty, but... They've never stood a chance. We should have better relations with our neighbors now. Objective complete. 
Cool, thank you for helping us. Your reward awaits you. 404 unit slain, 10, 10, 20. Who treads there in the shadow of my throne, hiding like thieves? Come closer into the light. Let me see your faces. Ah, it's you, the ones who claim to have returned through the spatial rift. Tell me, soldier, what was the name and designation of your mission? My name is Jack Gil uh, Gilder, commanding officer from the VES Frontier. We secured the Ketoni system, deployed through a Type 4 cryosleep mission 197 years ago. That being said, and with all due respect, you better have a bloody good reason to treat us like this. 197 years, 58 days, and 20 hours ago, to be precise. The Frontier seemed like a fine ship back then. Congratulations, Commander. You have passed. So it is true. The void storms have subsided. But this is excellent news. I would invite you all to a celebratory dinner, but as you must have noticed, we are barely sustaining ourselves. I do owe you an apology, Commander. Though you must understand our situation, when the planet lost contact to the Vanguard Central Command, I had no means of supply. Soldiers make for bad farmers, and as rations grew short, tensions within the Vanguard began to boil. They split into different parties, the Emerald, Ruby, and Sapphire Squad, while alas, only a few remained loyal to the Paragon. Since then, they have been fighting over food, weapons, and resources, laying waste to the planet with experimental Promethean weaponry. They assault anyone who's ra uh, and raided all other Paragon command posts. We were desperate, but now, with your arrival and the prospect of rejoining the Union, we can surely put an end to this tragedy. Objective complete. Uh, I'm curious where the Paragon guard went, but... Okay... I'm just trying to think about the next few moves I should make. Geothermal instability. The sector is geothermally unstable, causing fire and heat to leak through the surface. Oh, Jesus Christ. Everything wants energy. Yeah, but my capital's empty. So, oh no, here it is. So I just didn't see it. Uh, I'm going to have to start kicking people out if I want. Um, well, I did say I was going to make a scouting unit. So I'm less clear as to why I want to be attacking these guys now. I um, guess we can move them into the army. Um, these guys I'm just going to keep around to annex new territories and all of that. Um, as for this guy, I was originally going to... Uh, I was originally going to clear up the... Um, the bad stuff. <laughs> I can't talk. Um, I was originally going to try and clean up the the problem, but I I'd like to. I don't remember selecting this, but I'm happy that it's doing it. Um, anyways, I want to build a colony before I clean up anything. It's a little tricky just because it doesn't show me the um, doesn't show me the goals on like the higher map. So this is the alien ship. This is the other exploration. Uh God. I mean, if I want to fight, I can take one. Um, just doesn't strike me as the most... Oh, no, wait. These are the pirates. That's right. I do want to shoot these guys. Okay, so one thing I do need to start getting into a good... Uh, sorry, not a good... One thing I need to do to start 
getting into a habit is to actually see what these guys are equipped with. So these look like standard um, uh, these look like standard Vanguard troops. Vanguard purifiers. Okay. So plasma repeater has what kind of range? Okay, plasma bomb is going to be basically wherever I want to set my guys up in a defensive formation, so that's exciting. Um, so I to understand, I'm assuming this is the range for this thing? And this guy's overwatch. Okay, so I know, yeah. Just going to set up a good old-fashioned line and hope that our shooting does better than their shooting. Okay, I need to get my guys out of the way. Um, boss man. I'm not really sure what I want to do with you. I'm going to accept that you're going to get flanked, but you should also do some really exciting things against the enemy. Okay, this is the more interesting of the possibilities. Um, again, I'm going to try going out and around and then um, see what they do next round. We're also going to be able to drop a... Oh, that's right. <laughs> Clustering everybody together is the worst thing I could have done in this scenario. Yeah, that was a terrible, terrible way of setting up my turn. <laughs> Gross. Okay. And I don't have ops. Well, this would just be a really exciting round then. So I'm running a risk with these uh, bots in the area. Um, I did not know this is what this weapon did. That is very cool. Enemy destroyed. Okay, so clearly I just want to charge these guys down. We're already burning, so... Um, again, we're opening ourselves up to a world of pain with um, this little bot here. Um, but I still have my Nanites to help out, so. Uh, in a perfect world, I will have some kind of cover. The only thing is I'm kind of reluctant. Okay, here's what I'm going to do instead. We'll set you up on, a, on an Overwatch. Uh, I shouldn't have done that, because that's clustering people again. Okay, so I have a feeling I'm going to be popping a few Nanite packs. Uh, these guys shouldn't be clustered, but I was not thinking at the time. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm definitely going to lose some people. Unit down. Yeah, that sucks. I thought the burning happened at the, the start of the round. Th that's not a hard unit to get back, it's just it's going to take a while to move them that far out, and more importantly, it's um, I'm going to lose the experience. This guy cannot hit the broad side of a barn. Okay, everybody take your drugs, please. Except you. You're okay not to have drugs. Okay, so normally I would be prioritizing that thing, but these guys are going to wreck the rest of my uh, enemy killed, rest of my army at this rate. So 
what we will do. Um, I would have set up for an overwatch, but in this case, it makes as much sense for me to just hit it in the face. All right. We're still on fire, so that's going to make me sad, but we can at least give them something to think about when they move. Ah, this is... Okay, it wasn't the... Yeah, I'm going to lose people. So I need to pay attention to the uh, geothermal instability. Jesus Christ. That's going to be two infantry that we lose by the end of this. So again, I want them to turn their back the wrong way. And that was enough to seal the deal, so that's Enemy killed. not a big deal. Um, we're going to race to try and take out this little guy here. Um, at this point, I don't really think I have that much in terms of options. She... <laughs> Unit killed in action. Enemy neutralized. I will forever wonder whether or not any of my <laughs> any of my damage did that. Is this game as difficult as Total War? Um, it's Fumiko. I don't think so. Um, I obviously just lost two of my experience units, but that was probably due to me. Um, that's probably due to me just not really paying attention to what the effects of certain actions would be. Um, it's hard for me to make a comparison between it and Total War because Total War has sort of two games in it. There's the strategic layer where you're going to manage your armies um, and then the tactical layer is a real-time strategy game. Uh, a better comparison might be something like XCOM or Civilization where both the strategic and the tactical layers are um, Objective complete. They're turn-based games. Um, there certainly seems to be quite a bit of depth in this. One of the real highlight features to me of the Age of Wonders series, this is true of Age of Wonders 3 as well as Planetfall. I just happen to think that, I mean, again, it's worth saying, like, I don't really do reviews and I've done the tutorial and this first scenario, so I am way too early to be making any, like, definitive judgments on the game itself. Um... But to me, one of the big headlines... So, like, one of the things that I like about it is it seems to have been taking everything that I really like about uh, Age of Wonders that I've already played. And uh, one thing that is absolutely true um, in that regard is the, the hero customization. Um, so, like, the heroes in this game are definitely very special units, and they have a really outsized effect on what happens in the battles. Um, and that's, I mean, it's a, it's a fantasy trope, right? Like, obviously, you have these larger-than-life heroic units that wind up um, just, you know, dominating the battlefield. And, uh, I, like, I like that kind of stuff, personally. Um, so, obviously... Um, you know, Total War has recently adopted that with Total War Warhammer and its special heroic units, as well as um, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms and Total War Three Kingdoms. Um, but the yeah, the parallel the parallels between the two games are maybe not as obvious as they might seem at the beginning. So. Um, but yeah, in terms of difficulty, like, it is not hard to get into. Um, this is, like, a starting scenario, and it defaults to easy. It's got a reasonably good tutorial. There's certainly no shortage of depth. Like, this is the basics. You know, in terms of concepts to, to understand and to master inside the game, this is going to be, you know, much like any of the other um, sort of strategy games you see. If you if you really want to get down into the, into the details of the, um, the mechanics of the game... Uh, there's plenty of you to pl uh, plenty for you to play around with, but I I th I'm finding it a very straightforward thing to get into. I'm already familiar with the Age of Wonders series, so that's probably something that's not a um, 
not a huge surprise to me. Um, but I would definitely say that it, it lets you know the basics that you need to get into. And from that, uh, you're in a pretty good spot, in my opinion at least, to be able to say, okay, I have what I need to be able to make some meaningful decisions inside the game. Um, All Incoming communication. And native NPC factions you encounter on the planet are listed in the diplomacy interface, um, along with I faction remember, information and their relation towards you. Mr. Red, thank you very much for the follow. Uh, well, for you, you just suck at the battles in Total War. You can't micromanage units at all. Yeah, so the problem I... It's actually not a problem with Total War. It's a problem with me playing Total War. I always feel like I'm just smashing army men together. And clearly there's a lot of sophistication and simulation that's going on inside of, um, inside of that game. So I'm clearly not doing it right. I've slowly been able to get into that game game a little bit better um, with some practice, but if you're finding that it's the micro that's really um, causing you problems on Total War, you might really enjoy the Age of Wonders games. Um, whether it's So this thing's coming out tomorrow. I think this is probably... I mean, my general view on video games, this is less of a statement on Planetfall and more of a statement on games in general. Um, if you watch movies, the sequel may or may not be worth your time. Um, because in the case of a sequel, it can be, all right, you know, there was this story and, you know, we told it and people really liked it. So now we're going to cash in on that story and do it again. And we'll, we'll adjust it a little bit. But the thing about a story is like, you usually just want to hear that story told right the first time. And then the next thing you'll enjoy is a new story. Um... So I think this is one of the things that the Marvel movies do really well. Um, even though I haven't really watched a lot of them, because they're taking this convention of comics, and it's like, sure, they're familiar characters, but they're adding sort of new layers to to what's going on. They're going on new adventures as opposed to sort of trying to recreate the same movie over and over again. I know there's like a template for these things. Like, I mean, I used to work in television. So, you know, obviously, if you're doing something like Battlestar, you're yet yeah, i mean there's the boxing episode and stuff like that but like by and large you're not going to like you're not going to suddenly see some breaking bad plot come come up in your favorite science fiction television show games are different though like games are very much we made the first version of the game and people really liked it so now we take this budget and we make an even better version of this game that people liked and because it's an interactive experience and it's giving you a bunch of systems to work with and interact with, I actually tend to think that the sequels to a lot of games, in general, obviously everybody can think of examples where the sequel wasn't as good, but by and large, in terms of series, uh, they tend to get better. Um, so in this case here, like with Planetfall, it tends to take a lot of the, it seems to be taking a lot of the things that I like of the Age of Wonders games, but then it's incorporating some things from like uh, Endless Legend and whatnot. And essentially, it's taking all of the developments that have happened in the 4X genre since Triumph has sort of released an, a game in, in it. And um, I don't know, the result so far is is really enjoyable. Um, but the reason why I'm, I'm going on this long uh, digression here, um, it's Fumiko. I think if you have not tried it, I, you know, you got to pick what game is most interesting to you. So like to me... Planetfall is kind of neat because they really seem to have just gone for the outrageous when it comes to science fiction um, factions. So there's like cybernetic zombies and there's like laser wielding dinosaur riding um, Amazons. And like they're just these really, you know, these really wild factions inside of this game. Um, but if you, you're more of a fantasy bent, you know, Age of Wonders 3 is a really wonderful game as well. But whatever Age of Wonders game you pick, I think one thing that might work for you that uh, we have in common on Total War is because the tactical layer is turn-based, you know, there's still a lot of depth that you can get out of something like XCOM. Um, and clearly in the case of Age of Wonders, that's true as well. Um, and so it may be because you don't need to worry about micromanaging units in real time, and instead you're thinking in terms of what your best replies to the movements of the um, the opponent are going to be. You might actually find that the Age of Wonders series kind of scratches the itch that um, Total War might just be missing. Um, but 
just with that in mind, I'm kind of talking my own book here because I really want to like Total War and I, I do put some effort into it, but I am definitely finding that I, I don't have a good mind for the for the real time components of it. I, I really do feel like I'm, I'm making some fundamental mistakes on that layer too. Whereas something like Age of Wonders, because it's turn based, is it's absolutely my uh, my wheelhouse. Because like whether it's Chaos Reborn or Civilization or like anything like that, uh, I feel really comfortable. All right, all rival commanders and uh, native NPC factions you encounter on the planet are listed in the diplomacy interface, along with the faction information and their relation towards you. You can start negotiations by selecting the faction you wish, wish to speak with. Improving your relations with the locals may lead to short-term gains. Sustaining those relations, however, can you trust them? This is the negotiations interface. Diplomatic alliances can be forged and trade can be conducted here. The left list contains things that you can offer, and on the right list are things you can request from the other faction. The current offer is located in the bottom of each side. The options in the middle allow you to send the proposal or cancel it. It's Fumiko, thank you very much for the follow. Okay, if you had to compare this to Age of Wonders 3, is it much different, or is it the same with a few new ideas as well as the, the theme? Um, so I am very comfortable with this game having played Age of Wonders 3. Um, you know, the hero units are still these, you know, these outstanding, um, almost overwhelming um, entities on the battlefield that need to be reckoned with. Uh, obviously, spells have sort of been replaced with technology in that. So, like, this is very much its own game. Um, I don't believe there was, like, a sector system and all of that inside of the game. I'd actually say that, again, keep in mind it's very early and I'm just largely sort of I'm, I'm more so trying to like talk about what I've been up to for the last little while rather than make a general statement on the game. Um, and this is just kind of lack of familiarity on my part. Um, it seems that they've moved away, a, uh, they've removed a few of the tedious, like, you need to make these minor changes here in order to gain X, X or Y resources. Uh, they seem to have gotten a lot of that futzing around. Um, They've taken that out, and instead what you're doing is thinking a little bit more in broad strokes. So I want to take this area, and I'm going to make a broader move towards, you know, this goal or that goal. Like, you need to make some particular choices in terms of where your specialties lie. Um, but you also, you're spending a little bit more time in terms of thinking about a broader strategy as opposed to oh, should I move it, like, two hexes to the left or, like, two hexes down to try and get the maximum resources? The sector system seems to have replaced that. Um, so, yeah, I would say, like... Now, again, I always need to be careful when I say stuff like this because I, I don't like... Like, I always hate the idea that I give an impression of a game and then somebody goes out and, like, buys it based on that impression and it's not for them. So I actually quite liked Civilization Beyond Earth, and I thought that it was more than just Civilization V with a space skin on it. So I think probably what your question's getting at is that, is this more than a reskin of Age of Wonders 3? Uh, and in my view, yes. I mean, this is already a really good looking game, and, you know, like I like, I li I like all of this stuff. Um, but I do think just in terms of how it sets up, like the mere fact that you can do things like Overwatch and have you have these more interesting ranged battles and all of that, I, I do think add a lot to that tactical layer. Um, so it's it's been a it's been a good ride so far, um, and I I do think it's it's a fam it's obviously a familiar game to me, but I do think it is very much its own game. Um, but again, keep in mind that this is on the basis of like a tutorial and a and an introductory campaign mission. So you, your mileage may vary on that. Okay, uh, diplomatic alliances can be forged and trade can be done. Uh, sorry, current office is located bottom in the middle allows you to send the proposal or cancel it or request the other faction balances the trade to their satisfaction. So let's just see if we can do the good old fashioned. Um, it's a fair deal for them. Okay. Hello, Jack Gelder. I'm glad to hear from you again. Improving our diplomatic status is mutually beneficial. Let us pave a way to a brighter future.
I'm just trying to see what else we can we can do in all these things. So I don't want to break new, um, allow building on claimed sector. Yeah, I don't want to do any of this stuff. Let's take a look at pronouncements. Uh, we can compliment them. We can insult them. Neither of which I really want to do. So. Yeah, no, no worries. I mean, it's the best that I can do. I, nobody watches me for, like, skill. So the very least I can do is sort of give impressions and try and, you know, try and um, be as clear as I can in terms of what I find interesting and valuable. Um, but yeah, so if you like XCOM, I'm definitely feeling uh, a lot... I'm feeling this is a lot more closer to XCOM than the other Age of Wonders games. So, like, I'm, I'm very happy that my guys have guns in this. I know it's possible that there there are more XCOMish elements in Age of Wonders three, and I just haven't gotten to them yet. But you know, again, like I said, I, I always speak to my own experience. So, okay, we can now uh, we can agree with these changes now available for trade. Ah, okay, fair. Um, Negotiator, we have worked hard to forge friendships uh, with the peoples of this world, and it is time for us to reap the rewards of our labors. We should use our newfound influence to learn secrets, hire mercenaries, and to sign treaties that will give us allies in times of war. Sign a friendship pack with a faction, buy five items from a faction. Reward the negotiator, and pioneer reward, we will gain 50 influence and 50 energy. We completed... Empire task completed. So we completed the Emissary. This world teems with life and opportunity. The natives here have a rich culture and could teach us much. We could send an Emissary to make contact with these people and begin a new era of peace. So I believe we were the first one to do that, although I'm not sure. And yeah, there's nothing else for me to, to do with this right now. It's l I'm not 100% clear on how the uh, squad leader's convinced. But we can deal with... I, we can deal with that after... Uh, I figure, like, once we deal with all these other side quests, if if the worst case scenario, we just declare war on everyone and we bring peace uh, that way. These are marauders, hostile armies that either roam around the planet looking for locations to attack or camp on spawners to defend them. Spawners will periodically spawn roaming marauder armies. Spawners can be destroyed by defeating its defenders and moving an army on top of it. Marauders will increase in strength the longer the game goes on, so exterminate them early. Okay, uh, first things first, let's get another sector under our control. I probably need to be a little more careful here. I'm going to go the long way. Well, I mean, if they really want to take me out. <laughs> it's not like they can't move to take me. Uh, so, fair enough. Um, I'm going to go back to base. Um, and this is just so that I can fill up on some more infantry. Um, I will build, yeah, I can have, I just got to think this through. Yes, I can build the two. Unfortunately, they're going to have to wait for their special mods. Okay, so they decided to have mercy. And at long last, we can annex them. If you want to improve your capabilities, you don't just set a goal, you must also monitor it. 
only by carefully watching your progression, guarding against backsliding, can you achieve solid success. Tony Rubio Strong, Manpower and Machine Motivational Consulting. Okay, let's try. I've kind of lost lost the plot a little bit with my social research. So This wouldn't be bad, but I have a feeling that my colonies are going to be building quite a bit for the next little while. So what I may want to consider, though, is do I want to try and do any other kind of exploitation? Um, oh, no, let's start working on Dawn of a Un New Union. So, yes, Quantum Gain is the research I want to do. Ops ready to prime. Operations available for priming. I don't think I'm ready for either of these quite yet. The Operator, we have our armies with boots on the ground and guns in their hands, but there are other ways, subtler, safer, and smarter. It is time that we explored our options on this planet. Uh, if we outthink our foes, then the battle will be won before the first shot is fired. Research the Operation Effectiveness 1 skill, use Strategic uh, Operation, use a Covert Operation, and use a Doctrine Operation. Okay. So at some point I am going to need to use a strategic operation if I want that reward, but I'm going to wait for now. And we're going to make our way to the colony. Still can't build the colonizer because I don't have enough energy now. <laughs> There's always something. And... Oh, I guess we already got the... We don't actually need to keep them here to, um, to do the action. I'll try and be a little bit faster on the turns, because it'd be nice if I can get this scenario done before I finish tonight. I'm already an hour late, but I don't know. I'm enjoying this game. I hope you guys are too. Um, I think it's a worthwhile one, so I certainly am not uh, not too sad that I'm, I'm putting some extra time into it. Okay, the Paragon. Uh, Cosmite is a finite quantity, a rarity even for the Paragon. To keep good relations for us, we request a tribute. They want 12? I'll do a quest instead, thanks. Uh, first weeds appeared on the roads, then parks started to expand beyond their boundaries. Now wild beasts maraud and our grand boulevards. We need to stop this onslaught of nature, destroy these beasts so that civilization can flourish. Uh, wildlife nest destroyed, and I have to do it in 10 turns. So I'm going to lose one while I build another infantry unit. Crash research ships. The remainder of this research ship contain uh, intact data pads. Unfortunately, they don't reveal any information about the vessel's mission or the crew or the events that led to its crash landing. But at least I got the science, right? Uh, I also do need to get back on track as far as missions are concerned. So let's say... These guys... I think I am actually going to start sending them over to the, the right there. These good folks need to start heading to the alien ship. Although apparently I don't have any way of seeing it for sure. Oh! Hi! We have a non-aggression pact and open borders. Before me were the brightest minds of my generation. They were destined to change the world. All I could think was, finally, kindred souls, nerds. Rachel Mannix, IT Training Corps. So again, this will be really helpful in terms of putting down those turrets and whatnot. I need to start thinking a little bit more about what my longer term goals are. So these mods are just going to be really expensive, uh, and I don't really see any way around it. So what I should probably be focusing on instead is how am I going to become sort of a force to be reckoned with. Air power seems like a really good idea here. Um, I don't have my percent-based bonuses for it yet, but 
I am going to add an air core, I think. Unexploited sector? That won't do. Okay, Dynamo Mountain, I sort of feel like we have to do more industrial exploitation on this one. Our next move will probably be... Um, oh, that's a really good question, actually. Definitely Beetle Parks and Dynamo Mountain are two industry areas, so it makes sense for me to do that. But I should probably... I should be thinking about what my next, my next move is after. Okay. You get to wait one turn while you get a new ally. Um, all right, marauders are definitely going to become a problem. Incoming communication. What do you want? Uh, we can be close comrades, Jack Gelder. Let us continue to form stronger bonds between our people. Sure, I'm not going to complain about that. I become overlord uh, over the other player. This effectively creates a fixed alliance between the other player, which is the overlord. So I have to pay them to become their overlord. Yeah. Good to know. I'll, I'll buy these guys if, if that's what it takes. Sector annexed. Okay, this is good. Oh, I should have taken these things out. Uh, let's just turn turn around. I should have been paying attention to that, but... Okay, we're back to full strength. I mean, obviously it's not great that I'm missing out on the... Um, I'm missing out on the mods, but hopefully we can do something about that. Next round. Actually, maybe we can do something about that for this one. I'm gonna add flechettes where I can. Oh no, we still we don't don't even have enough for that. Okay, it's gonna be a slow slow progress, but I'm gonna be happy to make these guys pretty tough. So. Um, okay, um, I could be stronger, but I'm actually really curious how these guys work, so, again, the hope is that I don't lose units, because that winds up, the thing that's really funny to me about Age of Wonders is I... I tend to feel the pain of losing a unit a lot more um, than in other games. Like, it, it just throws me off track as far as... Uh... Right, these are the guys i got to be careful about the... Um, the spacing with. You know, in this case, I think I'm actually going to do something a little silly. Uh, I'm gonna set up defense for everyone here. Because I don't think they should be able to reach... Ah, I should have double-checked that. Um, nope, actually, I'm pretty sure they can reach me from here, so they're just gonna... No, no, no. Okay, they decided they didn't take the bait. Fair enough. Um... So again, the aim here is going to be to uh, keep my guys spread out, uh, do the damage where I can. I'm not clear if these guys need to be in melee range. It looks kind of like they do. This one's going to be a little frightening just because they've already taken some damage. But 
we also do some pretty substantial damage, so... Okay, so this is going to run the risk that these two get hit by the um, the arc, but if they actually commit people to this end, um, that's fine because that's going to split their attention and I can move these guys in. Yeah, it does a little more damage than I would like, but I have a backup. Really careful. <laughs> okay, so number one. Ah, of course you are. So again, the aim here is to make sure that I'm able to do some damage to these guys without um, without being in range of the. Uh, the sparks. All right. Um, I'm going to decide what to do with my hero after this. We see how this turns out. This is as close as I can get with this fella. I will admit to being a little surprised about the special operations. I think this has something to do with my energy more than anything. Okay. So yeah, it looks like these guys are actually a little hard to maneuver because um, you actually have to get into melee range with them. You know, I bet I could have moved here without walking over the fire. That's just a demonstration of my supreme confidence. Okay. Um, ouch. Okay, let's see. Let's see what the penalty for that is. I gotta back out. Oh no, they're trying to seal the deal. They'll probably work. Ouch. All right. Oh, neat! Uh, unfortunately, I'm still gonna burn to death, but... Okay, let's see what... Enemy eliminated. Let's see what happens here. Not the most inspiring thing I've ever seen, to be completely honest. Uh, okay, so... There's going to be a couple of things that happen here. Number one... I'm moving them up just so I can get a shot on this guy. Okay, again, I would have rathered not to have murdered my own people, but, you know... This is just the way we do things around here. Um... Priority number one for me was to avoid burning ground. Priority number two is to get as far away as possible from these bad guys. So next up, who can I shoot things at? So this will probably get some... Like, I'll probably take the damage from uh, being two tiles in, but if I can remove this piece off the board, I'm going to be happy. Enemy Ooh, okay. 
Oh, this is stupid to do because now they're going to get hit by any um, stray bullets. Enemy killed. Would you say this game is better than Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond chance. Earth? Uh, that's a really good question, Otters Hold Hands. I've never really thought about it that way. Um, I mean, I've always found Age of Wonders and... So I find it a convenient comparison between... To compare Age of Wonders and Civilization just because Civilization is sort of like... It, it's a it, like it's an easy comparison to make, right? They're both 4X games, but obviously, you know, great generals don't behave the way that. Um, actually, you know what? This does give me an opportunity to uh, equip her in with a um, with an assault bike. That's going to take me a while, but that that's actually going to be a slightly. That's going to be a way that I can make. Uh, I can turn this into a positive development. Uh, now, I am one of the people who actually quite liked Civilization Beyond Earth. So, um, I know that game does not get a lot of love. Um, and I'm, I'm not a... Colony militia has joined this battle, meaning the defender has extra units involved. When engaging in combat on a colony center or province sector base, there is always a colony militia present. But I, I don't want to attack them. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm, all of this is just to sort of indicate that I, I find it a difficult comparison to make personally. Um, but, um, I mean, in terms of like subject matter, there's like the science fiction comparison, um, with regards to like gameplay and stuff like that they're they're just two completely different things um like i'm just i'm trying to think what a better comparison would be but i'm 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 drawing a blank like okay maybe the better way for me to put it is that as someone who enjoyed civilization beyond earth i am currently enjoying age of one wonders planet fall but I am enjoying it for Age of Wonders reasons. Um, not really the fact that this is sort of appealing to me as a, as a fan of, of Civilization Beyond Earth. I mean, let's face it, Space 4X is a wonderful genre, which I, I would love to see more of. Um, but, uh, ah, damn it, the Unknown Commander. Okay, so they got a free colonist because I was too slow in making a, a colony. Um, but yeah, like it's, I'd say that these are sufficiently different because like the thing, the biggest difference to me about Age of Wonders and, um, Civilization is that like, while they're 4X games, like the fact that you go down to the tactical level is already a really big change. And it's not for nothing. It's not just like Civilization with uh, a more elaborate combat, um, system to it. Like the, fa the fact that you have heroes... Heroes have a huge influence in the Age of Wonders games, um, you know, much more so than great generals and whatnot. Uh, and so, in that sense, like I, I find them a little bit of a harder, uh, a harder comparison to make, just simply because I think the emphasis is much more on sort of you, the commander, um, in a way that that isn't necessarily true for the the Civilization games, but. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing, too, is that it came at a time when people were sort of feeling like they'd gotten what they wanted out of it. I think the thing that's so funny is, like, I can remember with, like, so there's Civilization Five, And, like, I liked Alpha Centauri, too. Um, so I think the thing that's really funny about Civilization Beyond Earth is that um, Civilization Beyond Earth comes out. And people are like, it's too similar to Civ Five. It feels like Civ Five, but with space skins on it, which I didn't feel was the most fair criticism. But you know, whatever. Everybody's going to have their own opinions on the game. Um, but then Civilization Six comes out, and everybody's like, I don't like this. I'm going to keep playing Civilization Five. And I'm like, but you know, wasn't the criticism of Civilization Beyond Earth that it was, you know, it was too much like this thing that apparently you were tired of? So, I don't know. It's it's always production ready. It's always a tricky one to manage cuz it like 
Obviously, if people could articulate perfectly about what did or didn't work for them in a game, then I'm sure that they would be designing a game. But um, I know like whenever I'm talking about games, I'm, I'm basically the personification of the Henry Ford quote that if he'd asked the customer what they wanted, it would have been a faster horse that ate less. Interesting. I did not realize I had a um, a militia at port six, um, but this will be exciting. So I get to move first on this one. Uh, I'm happy that I've got the ground troops because that, as always I get to set up. Um... Oh Christ almighty, magma spit. Okay, well as always we're gonna set up our overwatches and then we will pray to various deities okay so these things are not exactly flanking machines but they don't have overwatch so and then as is tradition I will move the bike way out to the side although inevitably I wind up making some really stupid blunder with it This is, like, I would love it if at this point I could just, like, drop a, a shredder on them. All right, I think I can make this work. Well, if I could hit them, I could make it work. I do have something that can make these guys a little harder to hit. Um, I'm just not sure if it's the time to drop that yet. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this move, but... Oh man. <laughs> Well, at least I get a flank. <laughs> okay, so the cars are flammable. More XCOM comparisons incoming. I mean, I guess it's my militia. I don't need to worry too much about protecting them. Enemy kill. So. We'll see whether or not it... I think with the grazing, it's still going to be just shy of what I need. Yeah. Um, so. This does mean I'm going to get hit with fire, unfortunately. Enemy neutralized. But I do get to be a little more aggressive with this guy. I could try. Nah, he's out of range. Um, well, I won't make them jo their job that easy. I'm assuming that they're going to still keep going for the bike, but let's see where it goes. Yeah, I, I can live. <laughs> I can live with that damage. Suffice to say, I'm glad I did not keep the unit close to the exploding cars. Uh, I, I had better make sure that I kill this thing, um, otherwise I am going to be in for a world of pain when they blow this thing up. Okay. Enemy down. 
so I never stood a chance. I can't afford to ignore the Marauders, even if it's not. Um, so if it just because it's uh, like port six is not something that I'm currently exploiting, but apparently that doesn't matter. Um, I do need to start making some decisions. So we've got the Sandlands. Or the Ancient Peaks. Apparently I don't have any intelligence on what this is like. Overgrown Biodome. Mm, that would actually not be a terrible thing for me to... See, the thing is... Just trying to think if there's a way that I can talk with these guys. Yeah, so I'm not 100% sure what the deal is with this, like whether or not I'm actually able to exploit it or not. Um, I guess we'll figure that out over time. Uh, okay. I do actually need to make progress on this mission before too long, so let's just head straight to the Elysian Visit District. Visit sites are remnants of the Star Union that give a visiting army a boost. This can either be an instant effect or an effect that lasts until the end of the unit's next combat. Cool. Okay, we'll make sure that we walk through that on our way to uh, stomping these guys then. All right. Um, what do I want to do with you? Well, I want to give you a new vehicle, um, but I think that's going to cost too much for a while. So in the meantime, let's get you to collect some resources. So in addition to giving her a bike, I still need to make sure that I clean up the geothermal... Um, like the, the debuff. And theoretically at some point we see the... Um, okay, now I actually need to make a decision in terms of where the, uh, where the colony should go. So the Sandlands seem like the best option here. It's mo I'm just trying to find something adjacent to Port 6. And I'm hoping that something doesn't come and murder these guys on the way. Michael Valentine, what do you want? They want 100 energy... I will give... Uh, I recently come into contact with a commander of the Syndicate. Perhaps I could introduce you to them. My reconnaissance comes at a price, however. Are you willing to strike a deal for this information? Nope. So I should be focusing a little bit on my ability to generate um, energy. Unfortunately, I don't think I have any... Um, I don't really think I have anything that I can I can do to boost my energy at this point. So let's start with a military engineering guild for Beetle Peaks. This will just help me get some of my units out. Um, we're still okay for happiness, so there's really there isn't like a lot of worry in terms of. Um, like, I'll be okay as far as um, managing everything is concerned. It's just, it's going to be slow because I'm not generating enough resources. Um, Object. 
Objective complete. How grand it is to see civilization triumph over nature's overgrowth. Thank you for your service. Uh, wildlife nest destroyed. We still had seven, um, seven turns on that, so that's less of a worry. Uh, okay, we still want to find the alien ship. I'd love to select the sector for more information, but apparently this is not a thing I can do. There we go. Nope, actually this is still... Area 42 is apparently the sector, but it won't let me see what's going on there yet, so... So you can just simmer down these guys. Let's... I mean, it wouldn't hurt for me to actually start clearing out some of these things that are squatting on lands that I might want to occupy, so... Um, also... What's going on with this guy? Ah, yes, the flechettes. Alright, well, my, um, my commander needs a new... a new tank. And apparently we got an army of penguins. Sina of House Timur. My, my, look what we've got here. More volunteers to serve the glorious cause of House Timur. I was starting to think this whole expedition may have been a waste of resources. House Timur, isn't that the kind of pretentious name the Syndicate would give to their criminal organizations? You're the ones from the ship we encountered at the Spatial Rift, aren't you? I was supposed to find an entire vanguard squad uh, at that location. Tell me what you've done with them, and I may spare you and your outlander friends. Oh, you are a feisty one, and so adorably clueless. I almost think that I should keep you. Don't worry about your friends, darling. We took them into our care. You should, uh, you should have seen them before. They were so awfully malnourished. Took them into your care. Turned them into slaves, you mean. The Kirko were only a small part of the living property we found uh, as we inspected the syndicate. Back then, I had to obey the law and accept whichever ones uh, responsible could buy themselves out of their punishment. But the situation has changed. I suggest that you leave this planet immediately without your volunteers. I'm sorry, darling, but the property of House Timur is non-negotiable. However, I may be convinced to refrain from further acquisitions if I am compensated for the losses caused to me by such a withdrawal. I have, s I have a list of supplementary items that could be manufactured at your colonies. Provide me with enough of them, and I shall reconsider your request. What should I do? I want Sina off the planet, but, we, uh, but do we want another full-scale war? Meeting her demand seems risky, since she may be stalling until backup arrives. The only thing I can say for sure is that whatever option I choose, dealing with her is not going to be an easy task. Good day, Colonel. It has come to my attention that you are having some trouble with Sina of House Timur. I heard of her demands, and believe me, they won't be her last ones. I know a subtle and yet effective way to get her off the planet. Interested? That depends. First tell me who you are and why you should even want to help me. Then we can talk. I am a friend. A friend who has a certain interest in seeing Sina retreat from this planet. Anything to damage House Timur. I have incriminating information about Sina's past. Her ascension onto the th onto throne Timur wasn't all sunshine and roses. There are some people who'd try to kill her if they learned about how she acquired her current position. All you would need to sh do is show her that you have proof of what happened, and she should be more cooperative. All right. Fight fire with fire. And I suppose you can provide me with such proof? I'm listening. Yes, indeed I can. Meet me at those coordinates, and I will be sure to be less noisy. Uh, and be sure to be less noisy. From what I've seen, stealth isn't your soldier's most distinguished quality. Objective complete. Okay, we've got a gunship, which is good news. We've also got research. So, cooperate with Cena. Provide Cena with a list of supplementary goods uh, that you can build in your colonies. Uh, you can't find. Okay, we will close rather than accept this. Meet with rival house agent, go to the uh, receive coordinates, and meet with syndicate agent. Alright, so this is going to be the last location for the squad leader, and then the rival house agent is not too far from my port, actually, so... 
it'd be nicer to have an idea of uh, exactly what the lay of the land is with them, but I'd kind of prefer to, um, I'd kind of prefer to advance towards the, um, the conclusion. We will not be Operations cooperating. Available for priming. I'm not actually quite ready for these things yet. Now, I am mildly curious what the deal is with Oh, I think I get it now. Um, because I haven't primed? No, that still doesn't make sense. I always thought it was about money, but... Okay, now we're making a negative amount in terms of energy due to unit upkeep. Surely it can't be those penguins that are causing that. What does this thing cost for upkeep? Uh... Don't know if it will give me a breakdown of my costs. The colony overview interface shows important information. The military overview interface shows important information about your armies, heroes, and items. Okay, so it was the gunship that pushed us over the edge. Um, I'm going to keep my military as it is. We'll be generating income from the colony. And, uh, yeah, I am going to need to figure out um, a slightly better, better way of managing all this, though. One thing I should just start doing is um, throwing my weight around. Uh, there's really no reason why I can't be getting more experience and just generally cleaning up the area, so... Uh, 480, we've got Liquid Flame and Liquid Crystal, and of course the Chain Discharge is always a, always a little bit of a pain. So again, this one I need to spread out a bit. But fortunately, I do get to be reckless and drop fire on one of these guys first. I suck. Okay. I think where I can, I'm just going to try and get the shots off, and then sort of the secondary is going to be to set up for overwatches on this... So like in all of these cases, it would be wonderful if I could sort of have cover and overwatch bonuses and all of that. But I think in this case, uh, I definitely learned with the fire, um, standing still has kind of its own costs. Um, with that in mind, if there isn't an obvious move, I'll, I'll still set myself up for the, the overwatch. So let's see how this one turns out. I should have uh, turned to avoid any flanks, but I don't think they got a flanking bonus. Okay, so they've all sort of clustered up here. Um, I think I can make this work to my advantage. So I'll get a flank on this guy if Operation I move these guys available. up by the plant. So I really shouldn't be spending money right now, but I believe there are bonuses that I get still for using these. Um, I don't like the fact that I'm out in the open, but this is going to allow me to do some more damage. So we'll start by flanking, flanking the magma guys. Okay. Enemy kill. That's good news. Um, now this one, I'm genuinely curious if I'm able to do some kind of galaxy brain nonsense and get like a, a line that takes these guys out. I don't think I can though, so. Enemy annihilate. Okay, this is going much better than I thought it would, to be honest. 
So again, we're going to start here because this will give me a flanking bonus, and then we can pull that same trick of just moving people around to make the most of the, the position. Uh, I don't like that I'm out of cover, but our plan is to take this thing out, so... Ouch. Okay, good. Enemy eliminated. Okay, we'll see how this turns out. Yeah, so they're not the biggest worry in the world on their own. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get a flank in before I do any any other fancy moves. There's obviously... A, oh, okay. I can still... I can attack him on his own, but that's still not going to be a flank. Whatever. We'll... And All right. Kill. Again, the heroes are ridiculously Our powerful. Are victorious. Empire task completed. Yeah, so we did get the technologist. Uh, nice. Uh, the nice news is that there's a hero item. Michael Incoming publicly complimented me. You're on the path to victory. Keep it up. Do I want to be defensive with them now that the syndicate's in play? They, want, they always want money. Okay. Cool. It's a discount now. 300 energy. So the thing I'm not crazy about about the defensive pact option is that I... I actually do need to follow up and um, like if if a war breaks out they're really far away and I need to actually help them out all right I'm gonna do what I can just to put this all into one big unit um, because obviously I need to sort out my I need to sort out my finances before anything else. Um, all right, I think another bug hunt is the the order of the day. I got to be careful about this just because if I take on too many uh, too many fights like this, um, obviously the chip damage on my units is going to there's going to be a cost for that. But I also get to drop fire on them, so... Uh, okay... Again, this is one of these tricky ones where I need to make the... make the unit spread out a bit. This is also a harder one just because it's a little harder to ride bikes downstairs, but... maybe Johnny can offer some tips. Uh, so this is gonna break the two... two space rule. It's also going to get me a shot on these guys. I think I'm going to get a little more aggressive with the movement. There's obviously... Playing like I'm, I think pretending like I'm not going to take any damage on these units is probably resulting in me, like, taking more stupid damage for no really good reason. Um, I think I'm also going to pop the Nanite injectors for anyone who can.
Yeah, so I mean, not ideal, but if we can wipe these guys out next round, then I won't care about it. Operations ready. Okay, so there's less of an incentive for me to use the ops this time around. Um, okay, I'm assuming that this will look awesome when they go leaping over the edge. I also better be sure that I actually like do something about this guy, otherwise this is going to suck. Um, Enemy destroyed. Okay, so as is tradition, first of all, heal up. Okay, that's out of range, unfortunately. Enemy annihilated. Okay. Very good news. Less good news that I can't see that thing, though. Well, the flank will still do the job, so... I was going to try and blow up what looks like these um, like these energy pylons, but... So it's possible that we actually wound up with more health by the end of that thing than when we started. Uh, all right. This is sort of my cleanup crew. Um, and it does look like I'm able to annex yet another sector. This one is good for... I really should find one that's good for energy. Well, this would do. I should just double check how this bonus here works. So research station, research is performed in these dome-shaped high-tech labs, grants 10 knowledge to the colony that it's linked to, and grants an additional 5 knowledge when it's research exploitation. So in this case, I'm still going to focus on the energy. Um, I think this is going to be the right one for me to take, though. So where did I put my other... Okay, these guys should still be on cleanup duty. All right, I did assign these people to clean this up, but at some point I need to deal with the Black Moon Summit. Incoming communication. The stature of your empire may rise in completing these tasks, but don't lose focus on what's really important. Uh, no point in... I mean, I don't want to spend anything... I'm not actually going to do any uh, anything to these people anyway, so... Reputations changed to trustworthy, seen by other players as mostly dependable and cooperative. Uh, plus 50 opinion on other reputable players, minus 50 opinion on disreputable players, and plus 10% dwelling shop cost reduction. Speaking of... Let's just take a quick look at the victory tracker. So, the diplomat. Three more turns of peaceful relationships. Is good negotiator, sign a friendship pact with a faction. Um, right, so this is the thing that's a little less obvious to me. So it doesn't seem... Uh, the light of the morning star has thrice touched the surface of Leave Six. The constellations of Mora promise a fortunate day, and Jack Gelder has come to the Paragon to talk about our future. Is that not why you are, uh, why you are here, my friend? Uh, 
Ah, I see. So I need to I need to boost the favor. Um, I get it now. So I spend this influence, and they are happy that I'm buying this stuff from them. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. The only thing is, I'll bankrupt myself if I. If I do these purchases, um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna put that in my back pocket once, uh, and we'll get back on track after the appropriate exploitation is done. I actually, so this is one thing that I do like. Um, this is probably just more of a statement to be, be me being an idiot. And where the hell did this come from? Um, Okay, so I was originally going to clear this out. The real question is, where can I get... Okay, I should review my forces before I... It's going to take me three turns to get this thing, and it's probably going to attack Quimby. Our great monuments and works of art attract a range of enemies. Our refined ways trigger, the, uh, trigger rage in savage minds, as if smashing things they don't understand makes the world right for them. Uh... Eliminate five quart size units. Well, now I know where they came from. Okay, let's start by moving the motorbikes. Getting closer. Okay, I have a tough decision to make. So the power 776, this is 660. Where is my other guy? So this one would take not that long, actually. So I'm going to move there. Can be. Um, I mean, I might as well build the Civil Engineering Guild because apparently there's nothing else for me to build there. And then I also need to start taking a look at my social research to see if there's anything I can do to improve my... Uh, my energy production, because clearly plus one a turn is not going to cut it. I will at the very least be able to get rid of the geothermal instability modifier, but... Okay, these guys are going to clear out the the bad guys. So Purifier, Trooper, and the Nightmare Plasmoids. This is going to be a facet... Like, this is a two melee, one pug. Like, this is... This is the Island of Misfit toys of, uh, of lineups. I also do eventually need to get her a vehicle at some point, because, like, she doesn't even have her sniper rifle at the moment. Okay, let's see if there's anything fancy and flying that I can do. I think I'm just going to heavily commit on this side and see, watch the magic happen with this. No way I can fire anything at these guys, so... I think I'm going to be a little more conservative on this one, just because I'd like to try and rain death on something, but...
Okay, my penguins are Operations ready. getting it in the throat. Uh, all right, so there's a couple things I'm going to do to try and fix this situation. Um, this is a tough one, but I think because it will do the stagger... All right, that was not the intended effect. Um, I might actually lose the... So what I was hoping to do was actually shoot this, uh, I was hoping to shoot this um, weak spot. Actually, that might still be a possibility though. Enemy annihilated. Okay, good news. Now we move up. Now, unfortunately, this thing's going to get flanked by these guys. Uh, let's see if there's anything I can do to try and mitigate the, the adverse effects. Not much. So, as a consolation... Yeah, there's really nothing I can do about that. That was an exceptionally good round for my guys. All right, the death penguins will do the coup de gras. <laughs> uh, I am extremely amused by that animation. <laughs> So again, we're just going to play the same um, same game. Oh, hang on. I don't even... So my pistol doesn't even count. Enemy All right. It wasn't pretty, but it got the job done. They never stood the a Isle chance. of Misfoot Toys has earned its keep. Denied customs. As you prepare to acquire the stash, you receive a Paragon transmission. They explain that the materials that you have found arrived on the planet illegally and that they should be left alone for the Union to confiscate. This decision will affect relations with the faction. Leave the materials behind and gain 20 influence or the Union is not coming back. Uh, we will always keep things with the faction. Okay, good. Uh, let's figure out what we want to do with her. Um, I do want her in a vehicle again. And I do feel like she'd be a reasonably good... Yeah, so I'm thinking like an air and ground commander might be an interesting combination for her. And then sort of the... The units that don't fit that. Heavy ground units. See, this is the thing, I just don't have anybody that actually fits that description in there right now. You know, I think right now I'm just going to I'm gonna sit on her skill points until I have a clearer idea what I want to do with these guys. Um, so instead, let's go... Well, one, I need to uh, claim some territory. Although I guess that's always been true. Like, these guys will, these guys will handle that. Um, I 
Reputation changed to neutral. A neutral reputation has no substantial effect on other players. Once reputation increases or decreases to a different level, players, opinions, and dwelling shop. Okay, so apparently I lost my trustworthy nature. I'm not sure why, but... Okay, achievement unlocked. Economist and builder. Empire task completed. Uh, so unfortunately, this... Um, I didn't... I didn't plan my energy well enough, and that uh, this is the price I pay. I didn't get the Pioneer Award. The colony we have built is just the beginning, the first step on the road to our mighty empire. Our focus should be on the construction, on construction and growth. The colonies we build now are the bedrock of our future. Uh, up next, empire task completed. The engines of our war machines are nothing without the engines of industry and economy. We have laid, uh, we have land and colonies, but we could have so much more. It is time for us to find ways to fully exploit this world so that we might gain riches beyond imagining. We also got some energy for that. Uh, I mean, plus 25 now is not terrible, so I'm, it's, it's less urgent, let's say. Um... But uh, research any resource improvements in the economy tree, build sector specializations, upgrade a sector to level two. Um, apparently, we got that twice. Colony Fondier established. Found it. Okay. Wonderful news. Uh, let's figure out what I want to do with it. So this is one of these cases I kind of feel like. Oh, yeah, this is actually a hard call. So we're doing okay for food. Um, energy is something that I would rather like. Oh, yeah, okay, central reactor core plus 10. Alternatively, there's the replicator facility, but I think all of our exploits nearby are all industry. So let's say that it's the reactor core just to help with our energy problems. Um, We've also got quantum you gain. You won't believe how paranoid you become once you finally glimpse the future and all the possibilities that hinge upon individual choices. Emperor Tholian. All right. So let's see if there's anything that I can do about... So it looks like none of these social buildings actually wind up giving me things that I can build that will give me more energy. Um... So this is actually kind of neat. Like, if you think about most games like this, you wind up building buildings that wind up giving you um, that wind up giving you sort of like these bonuses in terms of like you'll generate ten more energy or whatever if you build this building. There seems to be very little of that in this game, and instead, what you need to do is you need to think about what your expansion is going to be in terms of sectors. So that wasn't a hundred percent clear to me at the at the time, but. I actually kind of like this approach. All right. So this isn't quite what I thought it would be. Um, Let's think a little bit about what some of my immediate needs are going to be. So, um, I am going to be exploiting energy in a new sector relatively soon. Um, I have less need for covert infiltration. Yeah, so let's start with energy development. This is partly me panicking about the amount of energy I had before, but... I think there are worse things I can do than have cash in the bank. Ah yes, actually before I do any of that, let's get this quest out of the way too. Um, these guys will go and destroy the Rockmen. You know, I probably could have brought friends for this. Um, But I think we'll I think we'll manage. I'm gonna do my absolute best not to lose anybody on this. This is a frighteningly wide open plane. Okay. Um
Jesus. So I'm not crazy about the, like, standing in an open field aiming at the bad guys, but they'll at least give us something, uh, something to work with. Okay, now the real question here is, is there some magic I can do? I bet there is. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously fire on fire is not exact. That That's like some galaxy brain level tactics, but that worked out rather well on the Hopperhound Manhunter, so. Um, yeah, this wide open territory is alarming. Um, but I think I can do something with it. Kill. It would have been nicer if my entire team did not um, blow its overwatches. Jesus Christ. Operations ready. Okay, you gotta pop your nay nay pack. Um, This thing's gonna take some effort, clearly. Um, so, ah, biochemical weakness, thermal, well, thermal resistance is kind of obvious. Um, this seems like a good time for a shredder bomb. I was really debating on these two because obviously the ability to take this guy out will be a a pretty big boon. Enemy eliminated. Okay, let's see what magic we can make happen. Standing out in the open does not strike me as the most intelligent move that I can make. I did want to pop the Nay Knights ahead of time, but I messed up. What are you doing? <laughs> I genuinely thought I clicked that other hex, so I lost uh, I lost an action in addition to harming one of my guys. And unfortunately, they're all going to be open up for flanks, but that's fine. It's I am just adding difficulty to the game. Okay, this is actually a reasonably good thing. Because I've got two guys who can flank this, uh, flank this now, and of course they've got the the rifles. So it's not a flank, but they get three. So I'm I'm gonna assume that it does enough. Good. What this does is freeze up the ba the bike now, so that we can get a flank on the fire bros. Um, I think I'm gonna take the the extra shot. God damn it! I wish there was an undo button, um, but I just blew that. Um, Uh, 
Just stand in the fire and aim for the face. Enemy neutralized. Okay, even this, even though this thing has to have some kind of thermal resistance, surely. Enemy yeah. down. All right, not exactly. They never stood a chance. <laughs> how I planned on it to turn out, but not bad either. Objective complete. Okay, Vandals on the Rampage completed. More um, loyalty, which is nice. More influence and a little bit of energy. Okay, so I'm thinking Deadeye and Range Specialist are probably my go-tos on this guy. But let's see. So we've got Counter-Attack. Melee Overwatch can no longer be cancelled by Stagger and will never miss. But he's not a melee guy, so I don't care. Um... Air Commander would be cool. The thing is, is that they actually need to be the commander. Um, so what I what I would be doing, like this guy should be filled with all infantry now, and then I'd have sort of a secondary group of like bike units and um, an air and all of that. So I I think I should just be sticking with the the infantry. Piloting can now equip Tier 1, Tier 2 vehicles. I don't really want to do that. Um, Deadeye seems really expensive for another 5%. So... Coordinated Strike is pretty cool, but the thing is, is that this guy is actually a pretty decent damage dealer on his own. Uh, phase Shift... Hero teleports to the target hex. God damn, that sounds really useful, actually. Watchman, hero gains overwatch on all primary ranged, ranged attacks. Okay. Um, let's try it. I am going to try and go for the stuff that uh, improves... So I'm going to go for a coordinated strike for sure. Um, phase shift does sound really cool though so you can give him a tactical AED assistant uh, revive target biological or cyborg unit with 50% of the unit's maximum HP only affects ground units can only be used once that sounds like a really cool bonus um, but I am absolutely not spending that money on that Against my better judgment, I am going to be start applying these mods. Um, I'm going for it. So again, I just spent all my uh, my cosmite. I'm not a hundred percent sure how I can improve that. Okay, let's give you some Sniper Guy Gaming. Thank you very much for the host. I'm assuming you must have been playing this with the Cool Eagle. How did you enjoy it? What is your opinion on Age of Wonders Planetfall? I am making dumb decisions, but that is not preventing me from having a jolly good time. And Cool Eagle, thank you very much for your host as well. Actually, here's a better question. So, in addition to wondering uh, what you guys think of the game, what factions did you play? Okay, relationship with Vanguard changed to friendly. Vanguard units 100 was 0, Vanguard colonies plus 4, Vanguard event costs minus 50%, Vanguard players opinion plus 100. Okay, presumably that's the guys who I'm already on good terms with, and I am trustworthy again. Okay, let's see if I can take advantage of my reputation to do other things. Mr. Valentine. That's a good use of money, actually. <laughs> you, you said that's what it would cost. <laughs> Uh, you're playing as the as sniper guy's playing as the assembly, and Cool Eagle's playing as Dvar with Xenoplague. 
Interesting. Yeah, I'm just doing one of the, the base scenarios here. I'm taking a really long time to get through it, um, and I, I have made this a longer stream, but I, I'm beginning to doubt whether or not um, I'll actually see the end of this thing in time. The thing is, is that the whole idea of, like, stop the fighting is a reasonably ambiguous goal. Um, so I'm not quite sure what to make of that, but... Okay, Air Corps. I'm never more free than when I can unleash hell on the enemy from the skies above. We fly free. We fight free. We die free. Vira Colo, Vanguard pilot. So it's, I'm not quite ready to start unlocking these things yet because I want to make sure that I'm uh, I'm actually making real money. But, oh, is there a cap on this? Yes, there is. So I need to start spending some money again. Um. All right. I think I'm going to go for electromagnetic utilization. Um, ugh, that's a tough call, actually. I'm just trying to think of some of the ways that I can get the most. So it does feel like my kinetic weapons are sort of my go-to. Yeah, I'll, I'll work into improving that. All right. Um... <laughs> right. I spent all of my precious resources. Let's go talk to the... Let's let's get the bribe done. Uh, these guys... I think at this point I'm just going to pick things up off the ground where I can. And take quests where I can. Alright. I don't really have any immediate goals... All right, this 49 is almost certainly going to vanish. Or will it, though? Because... Because there's certainly an argument to be made that I should just be cranking out some better... better units if I really don't have anything better to do. Um... It can't be the upgraded versions, that's for sure, but maybe a fleet of bikes to to supplement my existing units? Yeah, we'll work th with that for now. Incoming communication. Not until you become a vassal. Uh, the Unifier. The friendships we have forged are strong and bountiful, but they could be so much more. It is time for us to forge alliances to build a great coalition, a new union that can stretch to the stars, make an alliance with two different players, and maintain an alliance for two consecutive turns. Happiness event in colony. Okay. That's good, because that'll that's growth for the new colony. Happiness event in colony. And I have been slacking on research, so that's good. Empire task completed. All right, that's suddenly a lot less surprising. Uh, let's figure out... Um, okay, so I'm going to see if I can incorporate this into my empire. Although I probably should be incorporating port 6. Um, when I get the resources I need, I'm going to get rid of that instability. Although now I'm going to need to wait uh, three turns because I'm spending energy on other things. Well, I can always cancel one. So, um, And I still need to explore this. But again, I've got like my bike and um, my bike and plane group. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel one of these right now. So I'm going to get the gunship and a couple of bikes, and they're all going to join in this group, and they'll be added to... they'll sort of follow this unit right here. 
Handle Hero join offer. Cecilia Starbound wants to join you. Vanguard level one. Oh. Or don't do that and kill them. Yeah, I've been trying not to get too aggressive. Um, it's mostly just because it's really obvious. Like, so because this is like the first scenario, um, the Vanguard really does seem to be a very military-focused um, faction. Um, but the thing is, is that combat is kind of self-explanatory in a game like this. And I, um, what's less obvious is how to, you know, how to get the other victory conditions. It is such a hard call. Um, Okay, uh, I'm going to recruit this hero. I am going to... So I'm going to slightly rearrange the, the groups. So they're going to become in charge... They're going to be in charge of this because she's eventually going to get a bike. This hero is going to kind of take the Isle of Misfit Toys. Right, I spent the money on that, so that's not going to work. Um. Oh, Crumby is an unexploited sector. Right, uh, and this was going to be an energy focus. Okay, these guys I'm just going to wait a turn because I will clearly have enough next round. No, I won't because this thing's going to produce something. Um, actually, honestly, it wouldn't hurt for me to start, but I didn't realize that these things didn't carry energy costs, so Recreational Dome and Botanical Gardens would not hurt in either of these, either of my colonies. Okay, they can annex the first sector, which is going to be this one. Sector annexed. Uh, let's, let's get these two armies together before we start messing around. All right, here we go. If you wanted to be a diplomat, you should have been... Uh, cur well, this is just the way that, like... Do you know how this campaign works? <laughs> you don't get to pick. <laughs> cool. Can't end my turn. Um, I might have to reset. Which should be the exact same. Okay, they're still sticking around. There we go. There's a lot of activity on the map, which is really... I know it's like an obvious thing to say for a game like this, but it's nice to see. There's obviously lots that's going, uh, going on. I don't necessarily... Um, Electronic mechanisms employed by the Empire appear to have developed a passive-aggressive attitude towards abuse. If a device is mishandled, it may drain more energy than allotted in system specs. We suspect automaton activists to be responsible. Nonetheless, 
It's good to upgrade your infrastructure. Tate Oreck, productivity conspiracist. Like, obviously, I'm not quite um, plumbing the depths of what this game has to offer, but, like, it's nice. I think one of the things that makes these games work so well, at least it's the thing that interests me the most about them, um, to... Like, at least for me, this idea of there being a bigger, wider world out there which is doing its own stuff. And obviously it's factions and it's, you know, it's other players and all of that. This is one of the reasons why I sometimes prefer um, single player because obviously I kind of get to play it on my own terms and, you know, it's not just going to come in and steamroll me. Um, but just basically knowing that the world is going on without you. So if you just sit idle... Um, stuff will be happening um, and it won't just be sitting around waiting for you to try and conquer it or whatever. Um, I don't know. It's it's one of the things that really works for me for something like this because again, you're, you're whether it's a fantasy world in Age of Wonders 3 or whether it's a science fiction world in um, Planetfall, it's, I think it's one of the things that just kind of sells me a little bit in a way that other games don't always succeed in doing, if that makes sense. Okay, I don't have any coast sectors, so this doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, I'm not making the most of my influence right now, so... Oh, but I gotta do the Cosmite Research Center. That's a huge production... Um, sort of... Uh, weakness. Okay, we gotta get you close, right, we'll get you over here. We'll unite the island and the fit toys. Okay. Apparently I didn't get enough energy to have this done, so. Operations available for priming. It's still not obvious to me that I need to do this right now. It'd be nice, but just I kind of need the energy for other things. So again, the composition of the army is going to move on to... Um, essentially, I'm going to have my main force, which is infantry focused. What would be nice at some point is to switch out um, this bike uh, for actually... Let's kill that. Cancel this item. We'll refund any energy, cosmite, or colonists that you've spent. However, the production has already been spent on the item and will be permanently lost. Yeah, we're behind a little bit on production, but I can live with that. Um, we'll go for botanical gardens to get that happiness back up. So, um, which means I don't need to skip these guys anymore. We can actually remove the hazard. So I'm thinking the idea here is that um, this little group with my other commander is going to shadow um, Jack Gelder. They'll probably be like a scouting unit as soon as I can get the commander to get a bike. Production ready. I think I'll just build the trooper. move them up the queue. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be the way that I handle it. Uh, there'll be sort of a, a vehicle, one vehicle uh, group, one sort of infantry group, uh, so that I can maximize the benefits that I get from my abilities. And then, like I said, I've got my sort of my assorted, assorted troops. Obviously not everything needs to have a leader, but it definitely makes it easier. <laughs> Okay. Uh, how am I playing right now? Uh, Jay Cones, I mean, I'm, I just went out of the tutorial and I'm doing the first scenario. So in this case, I'm, um, I'm very quick to engage in combat when it's like a, a 
a marauder like this, uh, but I'm trying to be a little bit more peaceful just because I'm not 100% sure uh, how the diplomatic victories work. Um, this first scenario gives us kind of an ambiguous goal of... Um, uh, what was it? It's like, stop the fighting between the three factions. Now, admittedly, I've been dragging my feet on uh, on getting to meet the factions, so this is partly my fault, and the game might be a little more clear uh, once, I, once I get to that point. I'm probably going to regret this because this guy won't have enough cover, but... I just really like using that gun. <laughs> um, but yeah, so generally what I'm trying to do here is I am trying to get along with human factions, uh, or at the very least not aggressively... Um, like, not be aggressive with them. Uh, but of course, leaving myself the option of military conquest op open if I'm so inclined. Eh, this will sort of cover it, but I don't think Jack's going to be in, in good shape. Okay. I know these guys aren't going to do anything about it, but they do get a flank after the fact. Enemy eliminated. Yes, I mean, the really sad fact about Jack Gelder's life is that he is just such good bait <laughs> that... Operations available. Okay. I better get the flank on this. Enemy neutralized. Units with high morale have a chance to score a critical hit when using offensive abilities. Critical hits always hit the target and deal increased damage. Units that have low morale have a chance to fumble their attacks. Fumbled attacks always miss the intended target, but they can still hit other targets. So, Cool Eagle, um, I can say uh, this this uh, flaming attack is for you. Enemy eliminated. Hey, Grognerd. Wonderful name, Our by the way. Our forces are victorious. <laughs> so, one minor... Um, quibble is that it feels like a lot of the tactical maps it feels like there's a limited number of them I kind of feel like I've been on that one quite a few times now um, on the other hand it's not XCOM 2 like I I like clearly there would not all of the things that I think are really cool in this game would not be inside of it if um, you know, if they, they decided to go in and do some crazy, you know, procedural generated level thing. Or the levels would just not be enjoyable, so. Favorite faction, J. Cones? I don't actually have, like, I haven't played enough of them to have a, a decision. I think I am a man of simple tastes. Um, I'm quite enjoying the Vanguard um, because of their... Like, I, I really do like this setup of build up sort of a wall of death and let people, you know, rush into the Maw. Um, the Syndicate seems to have some things that I would really enjoy as well, but it's it's way too early for me to say something like that, just because I, like, I've just been playing the tutorial and the, um, the opening campaign, and the opening campaign gives you access to the, the Vanguard, uh, the Krico and the, uh, it starts with a D, the, the Devar, um, and, uh, all the other factions you unlock as you become more experienced in the game. All right, message from the Paragon faction. Our great monuments and works of art attract a range of enemies. Our refined ways trigger rage and savage minds, as if smashing things they don't understand makes the world right for them. Well... I'm not ready to take these guys on, but it does give something for my main force to do. And it also kind of keeps them close so that when I build this, um, build these troops.
I won't be into um, I won't be too far away from them to make it. I wonder if I can get her a bike yet. I can, or I can put her in a gunship. Ooh. God, this is such a tough call. Um, I'll have a number of bikes already. Oh, or I can, yeah. Or I can just equip the Imperial Dra Yeah, I gotta go for that. This is too cool not to, not to go for. Okay, so with that in mind, um, the thing that's a little silly about this is I don't believe these count. Oh no, they do count as heavy units. Okay, um, this gives me more to work with then. Heavy ground units in this hero's army. Cool, so ground commander it is. You can be like me, play 20 minutes of the tutorial and jump into a multiplayer game as a race you've never played before or any idea of their abilities. I mean, that's t totally fine to do as well. It's just, the thing is, I like, um, one of the things that's always been true about uh, streaming for me is I've always liked learning stuff, and it always occurs to me that the first time I play a game is something that I can't redo. Um, and so it's one of the reasons why I, I try to cover stuff like this. It's absolutely, like, a niche thing. I definitely know there are people who could not care less about like they just want to see the game played well at which point it's really easy to say like I'm clearly not the right choice um, for people who like that kind of content um, but yeah it's really um, I don't know like I, I've, I've really enjoyed kind of getting to I don't know making a little more sense of the game I guess is, is the best way of putting it um, obviously there's still stuff that I need to, like, figure out, but, um... Production ready. But it's been a neat, I, it's especially been a neat one just to see, oh, Cena declared war on Michael, relation indifference, status war. Okay, so we did sign up for a defensive pact. This is the thing that I was worried would happen if I signed a defensive pact. Um... I am going to... I'm going to complete this quest before I go to... go to help. These guys will meet their allies somewhere along the road. This one is basically just going to be an opportunity for me to get a little, get a little experience before running in. Now, this is going to be tricky because the plasmoids cause me... Game looks good, just bought it. Awesome, Grognard. It's, I mean, I, I've i really liked Age of Wonders. I actually think I might have played the first game, like, way back when. It, there's a, a... I don't even think the publisher's around anymore. It was called, like, God Gathering of Developers. Um... I probably didn't really understand the game that well, but I'd never really played anything like it. So it was, yeah, like it really stuck with me. So when Age of Wonders 3 came out, I pretty much snapped that up as soon as I can. By the way, I absolutely love the, my favorite is, actually, you know, I'll just wait. I'm really, I hope that I can get the penguins to like do a finishing uh, on one of the melee units. And we're going to position them accordingly. Okay. I want to get whatever early, early shots on this thing um, that I can.
I wonder what the range on this thing is. Uh, Malfika says, uh, I'm thinking of getting this game, love the look of the Vanguard. Yeah, I mean, it's not, in my opinion, it's actually not just the Vanguard. Like, every, every faction in this game, like, it, it's sometimes hard to realize how much science fiction becomes very samey, um, until you see, like, the factions in this game, and it's like, holy crap, what were they thinking when they made this stuff? This is such an interesting idea for a faction. Like, some of them are, like, you know, more or less what you would expect in, like, in, in a standard sci-fi scenario or that, but, like, it... There's a lot of originality in, in the different factions in this game. And then the custom... Like, one of the things that's always stuck with me about the series has been the fact that you get to customize so much and that you, you know, you get to make the leaders your own. Um, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I always kind of keep coming back to um, Age of Wonders, even though I have n I probably have not played it as much as I would normally enjoy, or as nor I would normally want to. Um, I certainly enjoy the game much more than I think my playtime might indicate. All right. Let's see if we can make the magic happen. Operations available. Um, no, we cannot make the magic happen. <laughs> oh, that's upsetting. I miscalculated. So I'm trying to take this thing out first, just because they tend to latch onto you and, and don't give up. Ouch. Alright. Okay, I wouldn't normally want to spend this, but a Shredder Bomb seems like a great choice right now. Nice. So if I hadn't moved this guy up, I would have been able to... I would have been able to hit, hit these. But lesson learned. Okay, good news there. Um, Penguin Bros apparently still cannot do their very important mission. Uh, that's upsetting. So we'll, we'll soften up the flamethrowers. You're kidding me. All right. How you doing, Doomy? <laughs> if there are no penguin fights, you're out. Have you seen the have you seen the animation for when the penguin attacks? It's possibly my favorite thing. Yes! Alright. So what I love about this is the very first time I did the penguin attack, it was when I it was when I killed the unit. So you actually saw the thing like pecking down at the falling guy and you I could just imagine the sound effect in the background of Oh stop! Stop! For the love of God! But. 
Anyways, I, I'm going to try and balance this all out so that the um, that the penguin gets to deliver the killing blow. <laughs> yeah, penguins do not like that. Oh, I, th I think we can... I think this might be the moment. Ah, stop! Stop! Enemy neutralized. They never stood a chance. Uh, Milficus, so I'm doing one of the... Um, I'm doing uh, one of the campaign... Like, it's basically, it's the first thing you do straight out of the tutorial. Um... So uh, I didn't get to pick any of that. It's void tech. It's basically Vanguard with void tech. So the uh, the remains of this transport uh, transport contain a salvageable energy pod worth fifty nine. Unfortunately, the, its destroyed systems reveal no data on the convoy's origin, destination, or what led to its destruction. Lear Kad uh, Kaldaka, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime subscription. Um. I'll let Indiana Jones get its uh, its moment in. Uh, so what I'm going to do now... So normally this would have been a scouting unit that goes to check out the in intel over here. And actually... What's it going to take? I should have thought... Oh no, it's got a unit move of 40. Huh. I don't understand why she's so slow then. We'll wait it out a bit. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, just for the penguin. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you do have to take off, though, and have a good night, System Chalk. Thank you very much to Cool Eagle. I mean, the majority of people who are in here are already from the Cool Eagle stream, but I should have said this earlier. I've got Cool Eagle and Sniper Guy Gaming. I will not hold uh, the Cool Eagle's negative opinions of the Epic Game Store against him. I will still shout him out for the purposes of this. Um, both Cool Eagle and Sniper Guy Gaming do a lot of... Actually, they tend to stream together quite a bit, which is really nice to see. They do play strategy games that are similar to mine. Uh, I also have similar hours, so I, I think you have to wind up making a pick between one or the other on a given night. But definitely a very friendly guy and somebody who has been incredibly generous in terms of driving attention to my own channel. Uh, his has certainly been growing quite rapidly, so it's definitely very nice to uh, not to be forgotten. Um, but, uh, thank you very much for that host earlier, and I hope, uh, I hope you have a good, I hope you have a good evening. So, originally I wanted to try and go up to this, uh, this bit of intel here, and it could be something that gives me an edge in the, I mean, it's technically not really a war. Incoming communication. We're in a defensive pact, and yet for some reason I was not drawn into the syndicate my friend jack gelder how are you doing hopefully we can foster a positive relationship between us i just don't see what the point of having a defensive pact is uh both players agree to a defensive pact in which they can call upon each other oh it's they just haven't um they haven't called me in well that's fine then um i think i will take uh advantage of the of the moment then uh so let's keep looking i think we're gonna head uh to the northwest to see what we can find up up here mcd yeah i'm having a good time with it um i mean this isn't surprising because i really enjoyed Happy age of wonders 3 in colony uh more food is always welcome because these guys need to catch up um but yeah, I think. I mean, the thing that I think I like the most is that it seems to have the things I liked about Age of Wonders three, while they've sort of taken some of the developments that have happened in other four um, X strategy games. Like I'm thinking Endless Legends and, um, uh, well, Civilization, obviously. Um, I'm sure there's another one that I was thinking of, which I apparently can't remember. One way or the other, um, like it's it's a very recognizable game, but it's not 
uh, it very clearly it's still its own thing. Um, so this is kind of it's what I expect out of a sequel at least, which is something that is still enjoyable to play, um, but clearly has not ignored the develop like has not ignored the progress of game development over X number of uh, of years. You completed your task? Good. Well, these fires didn't ignite themselves. Find and eliminate the renegades that started them. Bring these deserters to justice. Uh, bring these deserters to justice would go a long way uh, to reestablish reestablishing order on Leave Six. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Ordering me around like some first year recruit. Just be careful the tasks you give me don't cause me more trouble than convincing you with a gun. Objective completed. Okay, find and eliminate the renegades that sabotage the Imperial energy complex. All right, so I think probably what's been happening is I have been completely ignoring what I need to be doing uh, to get this mission done, which is fine because it just gives me more Age of Wonders <laughs> Planetfall to play. I was inspired reading research on a maglev train accident in Star Union Station. The ENM braking failed, launching the train through three solid barriers before stopping. Naturally, I thought the same powers could be used in a weapon. Clint Sutton. Vanguard High Energy Operations. So I can't equip these yet just because my Cosmite reserves are pretty deplorable. Um, they can think a little bit about what my next move is going to be. Tank Corp. Give something for my uh, my ground vehicle commander to focus on. Yeah, you know what? Um... That or photon acceleration. I think let's let's give ourselves the option of tanks. You want to be destroyed by penguins? Uh, this comes out tomorrow, uh, Fenris Wolfborn. Um, unless like they did something where it like releases straight at midnight, but I tend not to think that happens. All right, this is still gonna take a while to get in. Uh, I had a single unit that was running around somewhere. There we go. Right, we're still gonna move our way to explore whatever we can. Um, our ally hasn't called us into conflict, so I'm I'm not gonna go seeking it out. Uh, you can simmer down. Tam CST on stream. Okay, cool. Uh, is it as good as the fantasy ones? Uh, RC Saab. Yeah, RC Saab 657. Thank you very much for the follow. Is it as good as the fantasy ones? I mean, it's always a tough one, Fenris Wolfborn. I. So, my hesitation to answer this question always comes from the fact that I am very easy to please on games. Um, so. And I know that my tastes are going to be different. Lolita Maid, thank you very much for the follow as well. What a name. Um, so I really enjoy Age of Wonders 3. Um, my inclination is to say that I think Planetfall takes the things that I liked about Age of Wonders 3 and continues to develop them in a way that makes it, like, basically Age of Wonders having incorporated the lessons of, you know, the last few years of game development. So, you know, games like um, Civilization or Endless Legend and all of that. One thing that I have noticed that's kind of neat, so I think Age of Wonders 3, like the fantasy ones, had the habit... I gotta... Okay, we're already working on the botanical garden, so that's fine. Um, sorry, I just bumped my mic. Um... <clears throat> at our assembly line. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed about this, and I, this might be... So the thing is, I don't like tend to watch uh, developer streams or anything like that. So this might have been something that they've already covered. But one thing that sort of interested me is that usually in a 4X game, you'll see something like, okay, so here's your colony and you're going to build it. And now you're going to build like five or six um, buildings that will improve your production. And that isn't, doesn't seem to be what's happening here. So, for instance, there's the Sector Tenders Grove. 
Now, if I colonize T Tender's Grove, it's a river, so it gives food. There's forest, which gives um, production and food, then arid production, uh, energy, and a derelict power plant, which gives a bonus to energy. So essentially what happens is you make these decisions in terms of areas that you want to sort of take into your, um, into your empire. And that's how you wind up, it, at least that seems to be how you wind up getting more resources to sort of make war with. Um, and it's different from what I see, but I actually find it, like now that I know about it, it's actually a pretty interesting way of handling things. So with that in mind, like I said, it has all the things that I like from the fantasy games and it then adds, you know, it adds sort of its own spin, its own take on sort of modern 4X. Uh, so I found it very enjoyable. I think the only thing that I've sort of said was a, well, I, so one thing that's true of like all of these games, I wish there was an undo button for times where I pushed the wrong mouse button. Um, the only thing I'd say is on the tactical level, I'm starting to notice that some of the uh, battle maps are a little repetitive. Um, but I say that with full knowledge that this is an XCOM 2 and that it's really hard to do procedurally generated levels well or at all. Um, so, you know, it just gives me more, it gives me some opportunities to practice, um, practice different tactics. But overall, I'm, I'm very happy with it, so. Yeah, that's right. So essentially what you need to do, like, if you think about it, you know, you might say, okay, so I'm going to build, you know, this thing that will give me extra energy. Well, instead, this is like, okay, you know, if you want some extra energy, you're going to need a region that has that strategic resource. And that region might be harder to defend, uh, or it might be something that your neighbor really wants. And so as a consequence, um, the game just gives you sort of interesting choices like that. It's like, oh, how am I going to handle... Oh, Adam, move one. Okay. <laughs> That's a way of handling it. Oh, but we're still one. We'll st we're still one turn away from from trying our new combo. So one thing I'm trying here is specialization. So I've got what's going to be my vehicle commander, and this is going to be my um, sort of my main uh, my main ground force. Let's give them the pointy template because they're going to have a turn anyway. And maybe there's something I can do. Yeah, I hate that I'm doing this, but I am going to, I'm slowly going to turn this into something a little more combat ready. Yeah, I mean, Civ still has the construction of units that boost up your, your production and whatnot. Um, so in this sense, I'd say it's maybe a little bit closer to Endless Legend. Um, you can't forge strong alliances and meaningful friendships before you understand the motives and desires of those you seek to befriend. Polite ignorance is not a diplomatic strategy, and will only be tolerated for the first few encounters. Serira Tan of House Voyan, Diplomatic Consort. Yeah, so if you're talking about Age of Wonders 1, like, it was a fascinating game to me, but I was probably a little too young to understand it, so I, um... Like, I was interested in it, and I really loved, like, getting items for my hero, but I really could not talk a lot about the strategy of that, uh, that game. But yeah, I mean, like, the thing is, is that it's clear that the new civilizations have been inspired by, uh, some of the things that were done in the Endless games, like Endless Space and Endless Legend, so I, I tend to think these things sort of feed into each other. Um... Okay, I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a quick audit of what types of territories I've taken. So we've got River Mountain Arid. Uh, Mountain Arid. Oops. Don't raise it. Okay, lots of Mountain Arid. Uh, River Ruins Arid. I have no idea. I, maybe it doesn't matter what type of thing this is. Grognerd, thank you very much for the follow. Yep. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a, like, so for the same reasons that XCOM is an interest ga interesting game, right? Like, there's the strategic layer and there's the tactical layer, and it's just really fun. And I also think it's really appropriate. So when Age of Wonders is about uh, controlling you know, your hero, um, you know, the type of person you'd sort of expect to see a book, um, 
you know, like they would be the hero in a book and their adventure on getting all of those things would be um, essentially what, you know, what the story is about. Um, you know, it's it would be kind of lame to then turn around and say, oh, but you don't get to control the you don't get to control the battles. Um, and obviously, I mean, I think that's been a criticism of the the Age of Wonders games is that the hero units maybe just have too much power. Um, I'm, again, not really someone who goes into the... Like I said, I just really like games, so um, I don't really go into the nitty-gritty. It's just more like, did I get to do something cool in this game today, yes or no? And I, you know, I, I kind of take it from there. Which is not to say that, you know, you can't sit down and think about the strategy behind games. That's another really satisfying way to play them. Um, but in my own particular case, like, I, I like being able to play the hero. Like, I am Jack Gelder, and I go in, and I shoot things, and I'm cool because I shoot things. And I've got a badass trench coat. Like, you know, give me more of Jack Gelder and more opportunities for Jack Gelder to remind me what a badass he is. To me, that's a good feature of a, ga of a game like this. Um, but obviously if you feel like every time you bring Jack Gelder into the fight that it's not even worth, like, continuing with it, then, you know, I think that's probably where that criticism's coming from. All right, um... I thought this was the region I was supposed to be checking out, but apparently I'm wrong. But this is clearly the Emerald Faction, so uh, again, we'll just get the opportunity for some um, experience. God, I hate Plasmoids, um, but this should not be that difficult. So I think we take out the Owl and we can actually probably kite these things. Mr. Dirk Diggler! Um, Paul Thomas Anderson fan for sure. Or maybe you're just letting us know something very private. Thank you very much for the follow. Yeah, well, like I said, I, I'm not good enough at these games to have a strong opinion on whether or not heroes are powerful. I will admit, I still don't have a really good strategy for dealing with these things, but they are becoming manageable. I'm just going to set myself up for defense. So we're obviously going to catch it in the throat from one of these owls, but I don't think the melee uh, unit should be able to hurt us. So I'm going to take the penguin and put it just out of reach. This will also be true for my lancers. Are you playing campaign or the scenario? This is uh, the very first campaign mission. Or, well, the first. So there's three, um, three starting campaign missions. Um, but I'm playing the, the first Vanguard one, the one that's kind of the continuation of the tutorial mission. Um, I suspect I probably lost the plot a little bit, um, which is why. Ooh. I think I'm going to risk the, the wrath of this thing. Um, it's why I'm taking so long to get this first scenario done. Um, but, I mean, it's a cool game, so... Oh dear, I have to play an enjoyable game a little bit longer than I was <laughs> than I was planning. What a, what a fate worse than death. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's the... Basically, it's the... Congratulations, you did not soil yourself during the tutorial uh, campaign mission. Okay, I got very lucky there. Operations available. So... I'm not sure this is going to work well for me, but I am going to try jumping back. Oh, cool. So the blinding helped. Uh, 
All right, this is gonna be a tougher call then. I really should be focusing down one target. Enemy destroyed. Okay, we can um, beat the crap out of this thing. I just don't know if I really want to engage it in melee. Um, I suck. These guys are going to get flanked to hell, but... Unit down. Enemy destroyed. Alright, I will admit, I was not expecting to have an owl shot out of the air like that. Um, Heroes in your king have always been powerful, but it's uh, because it would always suck if they got sniped and you would be stalled on your magic studies. Are you uh, worth forty nine ninety? Oh, sorry, is that a question? Like, is the game worth it? Um, I'm not really good at like answering um, price. Enemy wow. Neutralized. Okay, so owls can completely one shot each other. They've never stood a chance. I wasn't expecting that. All right, I am going to build a, a replacement. It'll take a while to send them out, though. Yeah, okay, so I always feel bad. Like, the people who watch my stuff regularly are no doubt going to be absolutely fed up hearing me say this. So one of the biggest challenges that I run into in terms of the value question um, comes from the fact I've got a co work So I work at like a statistical agency and like nobody plays games there. Um, and I was talking about the darkest dungeon to one of my coworkers and he was really interested in it. And then he watched me play it a little bit. And then he went on YouTube and watched a bunch of other people play it. And he... He was telling me, he's like, yeah, it looks really interesting. Uh, I said, okay, well, I'll let you know when it's on sale. And he says, oh, no, I already bought it. And, like, to him, it was not a big deal to spend 30 or 40 bucks on The Darkest Dungeon. And I says, like, well, like, on Steam, you can return it, and, like, you can probably pick the thing up for, like, 10 on a sale or something like that. And he's like, like, why would I bother? Like, you know, I spend that much money to go watch the movies, basically. And, like, it was just so fascinating to see this idea that like full freight for the darkest dungeon which has been out for a while is like not a like that is not a major purchase requiring significant consideration and it really caused me to reevaluate what i think about like the price of a game should be um so And, and, like, there's the other half to that, too, right? Which is that if, like, you're really on the margin about deciding whether or not you want to buy a $10 game or, like, a $50 game or something like that, you know, it might be that there's other issues going on and the the game may not be the thing that, um, like, that may not be the sort of thing that you want to pick up. So, um, I'd put it to you this way. As someone who enjoys the... So, with that throat clearing out of the way, um, as someone who really enjoys Age of Wonders 3, um, and I did not... My original plan was not to... like. Well, okay, it would be to stream it when I got it, but my plan was not actually to request a press key for the game um, because I didn't think I would have enough time for it. Um, my casts are normally three hours long. I am coming on to hour six now, having played this. 
Um, now, I did say the same about Imperator Rome, and that's because I actually really had fun playing Imperator Rome. So also keep that in mind. But knowing what Age of Wonders was, having been someone who was like, okay, this looks kind of interesting. When I pick it up, I will cover it. Um, to now having played it and spent twice as much time on it. Like, number one, I had a very clear idea of what I was getting based on the third game. And of course, I'm like, well, I think this is an improvement on the previous one because game development has moved on and Triumph Studios has not put their head in the sand and said, well, we just need to do a graphical update and kick this thing out the door. Um, But then also just the revealed preference of like, how much time have I put into it? Like, clearly, I have been enjoying this a lot more. So, like, I kind of had a clear idea of what I was getting going in, and it's absolutely delivered on that. So, um, as with anything, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Is it worth 50? Is it worth 100? Is it worth 20? Um, That's as much of a statement on people's circumstances as, um, you know, as it is on on the value of the game. Um, But, you know, uh, the best that I can really say is that I've, I've gone from being like, this looks kind of cool to, holy crap, I'm really glad that I played this tonight. And, um... You know, it's, uh, in, in my view, that's an indication that the thing is, you know, is worth playing on day one. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind, right, is that we live, like, the weirdest thing about games is that the worst version of the game is always going to be the one that you buy on release. Like, the one that you get on sale is going to be the one that gets all the patches and the DLC and stuff like that. So, um, it's, again, it's why I really struggle to answer that question because, you know, it's really a question as to whether or not you're going to play it right away. Um, but, you know, in my own case, having been someone who wasn't originally going to play it right away, I'm really glad that I did. So hopefully that is as honest of a... Um, I hope that's as honest of an answer that I can give without sounding like... Uh, actually, so for what it's worth, when you get in, like when you get these press keys or influencer keys or whatever they're called... To my understanding, there's no, like, special statement about what you're supposed to say or whatever. Production ready. Um, and if I am supposed to tell you people that it's the best game, buy and spend full money, get the deluxe edition with the soundtrack. No, not the deluxe edition. Whatever one comes with a season pass. And please be sure to donate, uh, to Paradox as well. Um, if I was supposed to say that, I didn't get the memo. Um, but, uh... Again, I'm always really careful on that sort of stuff just because I also know, like, I liked Imperator Rome, and a lot of people didn't like Imperator Rome. And what am I going to say to all those people who spend the full amount of money on a game that they didn't like? Yeah, I mean, people can continue to watch and form an opinion Ludita made, but if somebody's going to ask the question, like, I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my best to answer it as honestly as I, I can. Uh, what is this? New recruits? Have you come to prove yourself, uh, sorry, have you come to prove yourself to the great, uh, Hai Jang and his Emerald Squad? Be strong, be quick-minded, be disciplined, master your skills, and you may yet be chosen to fight in the front line as we retake the Molten Earth Arsenal. Hi, is that really you? I never would have thought that we'd have a chance to meet you as a grown-up. Uh, when did you join the Vanguard? Do you have a wife and children? How did you survive for such a long time? There's so many questions. And Fang, my dear brother, does this mean that he could be still, uh, still be alive as well? Impossible. My family is dead. If my father were still alive, he would, shoot, uh, he would shoot you himself. Tell your squad leader his attempts to trick me into his confidence will be met with gunfire. Oh no, it pains me to see that my brother decided to conceal the truth about my car sleep mission. Uh, but this is no lie. Hi. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, I'm truly your father's sister, and I can prove it. Commander, I need your help. There's an interlocking pendant, a sort of family heirloom. My brother's piece is hidden in the repair station. It was our secret. If we can recover it, uh, Hai will believe us. Seems like I have three options here. I can support Lieutenant Yang on her uh, search, wait for a different opportunity to convince uh, Hai Jiang uh, peacefully, or use military force to bring this to an end. We know that the different squad leaders have been employing Promethean weaponry throughout the planet. Hai Jiang mentioned the Molten Earth Arsenal, uh, which has to be reconquered, so that I would assume uh, it is the supply base where those weapons are stored and manufactured. Sounds like a place we should pay a visit. 
Yeah, Fenris Wolf. I mean, I am really curious about why they decided to do uh, science fiction over fantasy. Um, obviously, being able to have ranged weapons adds something. I mean, it's not like the fantasy games didn't have ranged, ranged weapons, but taking, you know, taking uh, sort of guns as a as a given, let's say, um, I think adds some fun. So, like, I don't think there's cover in Age of Wonders 3. If there is, I'm just really bad at using it. Um, and then I think the other thing that really sold me on it is the factions are really original. Like, so it's not just, like, space elves, space orcs, so on and so forth. Like, they really went for just some crazy stuff, uh, which is, has been enjoyable. All right, I'm still not sure if Valentine was mocking me when he referred to the Elysium Peaks, sending me on a wild goose chase through the deteriorating pleasure park sounds like something he'd enjoy. Still, I cannot ignore the possibility that he has a point. As opportunistic as he may be, Michael Valentine is still a Vanguard officer. Vanguard officers don't joke about war. Objective completed. Okay, um, my much belated uh, finish to this. Search for the family heirloom. Yes, and I have an infinite amount of time to do it. Uh, convince him to cease fire. I'll get a tank. Okay. Man, that's a lot of stuff to do. Um, okay, I know this will probably disappoint people, but I did mention that I'm, I've been going for about tw uh, twice as long. Lieutenant, you look unsettled. Is there something bothering you? You know you can always speak your mind with me. Thank you, Commander, but it's nothing, really. No reason to be concerned. Not a solid one, anyway. What is it? I just spit it out. I spit it out. All right, Commander, uh, but you must promise to keep this between us and not embarrass me in front of the squad. Ever since we landed, I have had this eerie feeling that I am being watched. I can sense that something is off, but no matter how hard I pay attention, I can't find concrete evidence to support my paranoia. Some paranoia may be healthy when you're stuck between the battle lines of uh, rogue vanguard squads in an opportunistic syndicate house. The last few weeks have been rough for everyone, first leaving our past lives behind in cryosleep. Now this madness. Just don't get, let the situation get to you, Dayu. We're all in this together. Thank you, Jack. You're right. It's probably nothing. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, I originally wanted to end this scenario, but what I, the mistake that I made, and I'm sure this is like a, I'm sure this is just a, a me getting used to Age of Wonders again thing. Um, the, like, end the war on the planet thing almost certainly would happen if I was following these quests a little bit uh, faster. So uh, I'm going to save it. I'm going to be coming back to the game, but I, like, it's 1.30 in the morning. I have work tomorrow, and I've actually been having trouble uh, getting a proper sleep over this long weekend. So I'm going to finish this one battle here. I'll do kind of a post-mortem if I can, and um, we'll find somebody else who's playing Planetfall to uh, leave you in the capable hands of. All right, we've got ops ready to prime, but again, well, that's a, that's a next stream me problem to deal with. Now, I think what I'm going to do, um, I'm actually going to set up my, like, uh, my line like this. Um, oof. Yeah, I'll live with it. Clustering these guys is not a great idea because of the big um, rock man, but... This is useless. But essentially what I'm going to try and do here is get myself set up um, and then we're going to take all of these rapid moving vehicles and move them around the side. So essentially we'll give them a reason to sort of chase us into, into the line of fire. Okay, let's see if I can actually get away with this.
I'm going to at least allow for the possibility that they're going to catch up with me, so we'll not give them the easy flank. Operations ready. Yeah, they really want to murder the hell out of me here. Uh, okay, well, that's gonna give me. That's still gonna give me something to work with. I'm apparently learning courage with these things. Uh, this one's going to get caught for sure. So one of the reasons I feel okay doing this is I have a little bit more uh, by way of... Um, oh, hang on. This thing's going to resist the, uh, the thermal damage so just kind of being able to put a little bit of hurt on them before the uh, before the real fight starts um, I actually think I might be able to make a little bit more of the situation up here it's gonna be tough because I'm sort of splitting up where they might be coming from now this guy's not going to be as helpful because his weapon is thermal. I was going to move them up front like this, but I don't think I'm that brave. Yeah, I think I'm, in, I'm just going to sit with what I got here. All right, let's see how they respond. Probably should have saw that coming. Okay, so they really want to face me down on this side. Um, well, that's not actually that bad. Because it's just going to give me an ex... Uh, oh, come on! Oh, it's dead. That's... This is what I mean by the, uh... The undo button. Okay, that I don't understand at all. <laughs> Enemy eliminated. Alright, this is gonna be a very inconvenient position to deal with, but... This is probably a smarter place for me to be right now. So yeah, this uh, didn't exactly work as... So the original plan was going to be because they were wasting time dealing with these guys over here, I'd be moving the line up like this and sort of using the cover and uh, taking them out. But I suck, so... Um, I will switch to plan B, which is to just flail around like an idiot for a bit. Um, this thing actually isn't all that damaged, so the question is how bold do I want to get in terms of taking these things on? It would be kind of nice to th uh, send them out on a wild goose chase, so let's... I'm going to try and aim on the, the stuff that doesn't get the, um, the protection from the the thermal.
At least when I can, obviously. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I want to do with this guy up. Uh, at some point I'm going to have to figure out how these work, so... Okay, launch a missile at the target. Hex, dealing damage to everything in an area of effect. Oh, that's a pity. In this case, we might as well. Again, I kind of want to get rid of the ranged creature if I can. Turns out it didn't really matter, but... Uh, and that's just mostly for the protection of um, of these guys. I know the large rock man's going to be going to be hanging around, so... All right. Fasten your seat belts. Okay. Definitely could have been much worse, so. So, if I can, I want to try and take out the stuff um, that doesn't have the weakness to thermal first. Um, so this is the right call because it's going to make him turn his back to me. Oh no, it doesn't because he's a large rock man. Okay, fair enough. Enemy annihilated. So obviously now I try and take advantage of the mobility and um, mop these things up. So obviously sending your mobile units into the very back where they can be chased by the enemy is not exactly the, uh, the done thing strategy-wise, but... It worked. Uh, I don't think we're gonna... Oh, wait. Wrong guy. Yeah, what's gonna be upsetting is I'm probably gonna be able to take out everything but this one guy at the end. But, um... First things for... Oh! So that misclick works after all. Enemy eliminated. So again, same trick, uh, take advantage of the flank. If this thing survives it, uh, it just turn its back and we'd be able to, um, Enemy destroyed. to turn it. Our forces I'm not a hundred... I'm not a hundred percent sure how I feel about this idea that most units tend to turn around and look at you when you attack them uh, from behind, because it sort of feels... It definitely feels like I've been abusing the fact that I have, like, two people on either side. But on the other hand, like... It's a it's a modeling of like a crossfire. Obviously nobody wants to get caught in a crossfire, so you know, I objective uh, completed. I think that's a, that's a permissible um abstraction if it somewhat it does feel a little cheesy in the moment, but Okay. Um I really need to get some sleep. I would like to... I would love to actually continue on with this, but I think what I'll do is I'll do a quick um, post-mortem. Um, mostly to show you the one thing that actually really attracts me to this game, and all of the Age of Wonders games, but wasn't necessarily on display here. So, um, as always, a very special thank you to Paradox, Triumph, all the people who are responsible for, um, you know, giving me a key for this. I, it's always really cool to do games like this. I always get a chance to meet some interesting uh, people on this. Um, 
there's a tutorial. I don't think there's any difference between like when you start the game, uh, there'll be a tutorial option instead of continue. Uh, but the one thing that I didn't get to show you, um, so when you start the campaign mode, there are three factions. Uh, the Vanguard, which I was playing. There's the, um, the Kirko, which I think used to be like a slave race or something along those line, lines. Uh, and then you've got the Devar. So the dwarf people, I love these models. Um, but then as you continue to play the game, so one of the antagonists, the syndicate, there will be the Amazons, the cyber zombies, the assembly. So there's obviously, you know, much like the fantasy counterpart, there is a, uh, there's a lot of variety in terms of what you can play. One of the thing that, one of the things that, um, really got my attention about the Age of Wonders series at the beginning is the character creation. So again, if you think of it as a 4X game where you play the main character or one of the main characters in your favorite fantasy literature, um, one of the factors is that you get to build your hero. Um, and you start with some broad strokes, so you can play the Assembly. So the Assembly are a race of cyborgs born from destruction. These people aim to bring their newfound peace to the universe by breaking down the chaos of the galaxy and reassembling it into a perfect new whole. Uh, the Vanguard chooses uh, consists of rough folk with few ties to society, so the effects of long interstellar travel and cryosleep and the resulting time dilation doesn't matter to them. The Kirko. Through rapid evolution, the Kirko seek to restore what was broken and will find retribution for the terrible fate that has befallen them. The Syndicate have, are a group of ruthless trading houses from the frontiers of the Empire. With the Star Union gone, they see a universe of opportunity. The Amazon. The bioengineering Amazons have the ability to alter life and survive harsh circumstances. Their fearsome troops have Spartan discipline and are experts in guerrilla tactics. Their arsenal includes genetically engineered beasts that the Amazons ride into battle. And the Devar. The Devar are a thrifty race of survivalists. The Devar work uh, to mine planets for all they're worth to gain as many resources as possible for their consortium survival and welfare. So I'll do Vanguard here because we've been playing it all the time. Um, in addition to sort of the species or the faction that you play, there's a secret technology. Synthesis, Celestian, Void Tech, Xenoplague, Sinumbra, Promethean. Um, and they all have different benefits. They'll all tell you here, but again, I'll just pick some stuff at random in this case. Well, maybe not random, but I'll just do what we've been doing before with uh, Void Tech. Finally, once you've got these selected, you have uh, perks that you get to pick. So if you change um, your, I mean, it'll tell you the different lineup here. Um, so in this case, we'll say, you know, no background, no colony supplement, basic equipment, no vice. So in this case, you get three points to sort of express yourself as far as your character. So you could say, hey, we'll start them off with a Vanguard assault vehicle. Or in this case, let's say that it's a close combat specialist. So counter to what the Vanguard normally does, which is to be at range, I'm actually going to say that the soldier, like this is just an idea in terms of a, a character. I have no idea if this will work uh, or not. But Void Tech gives you the ability to sort of transport very rapidly and it says powerful range units weak melee capability so what i'm going to do is i'm going to focus on this idea of a commander which is one of the few vanguards who actually gets up close and personal so close combat equipment um what is the supplement that we can get so data repository starts you off with two random texts 300 extra energy a larger starting army or colonist cryopods um hmm I think in this one I'm going to go for data repository. Now we can start with veteran, which will give me level three, 10 skill points. That would actually work rather well. Uh, martial tradition decreases weapon research costs. Ruthless killer once per turn when your commander kills a unit in combat, they immediately, oh yeah. Um, so this is actually great. So like obviously this idea of a character that just runs in and rips everything apart with their with their bare hands lends itself to the ruthless killer factor, right? You go in, you know, you take out a guy and then you just run to the next one um, and uh, and take them out with melee. But I need a point for that. So you can say cruel, um, villain, you are a tyrant to your people and your colonies have plus four unhappiness. Cruelty, you gain 200 happiness each time you kill, or morale, I think, each time you kill a unit in battle. 
Kleptomaniac, embezzlement, and swipe. You stole something during your training, giving you a random mod. To, to me, it seems cruel is really the obvious option here. So then we'll do martial tradition. So I've been making, I mean, uh, as I think the first one that I wound up doing was some variation on, uh, where was it? Uh, where's the... Yeah, there we go. Space Cowboy. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to start with a Milady. Um, let's randomize a bit. Okay, I think I can work with this. Um, so what would they look like? Now again, we're, we've already dealt with the, the mechanics of it. But obviously if you want to customize a character... Um, let's start with hairstyle. I always imagine if it's like... If it's melee, it has to be short, so nobody can, like, grab grab her hair um, while fighting. Man, they don't give a lot of options here. We'll work with that. Uh, okay... Do you get your choice your choice of two eyebrows when you play a vanguard woman uh all right clearly you have to have a badass scar uh let's ditch the accessories though so that we can Oh, these are eyes, not uh, skin decoration. War paint might work too. Yeah, we'll just go for the badass scar. Um, it's always so hard to see the the eye color. I'm happy with normal eyes. I don't need to go crazy on this one. Uh, okay, I don't think it really matters what head I go for. Actually, I'm not 100% sure about this, um, about this mask. Okay, we got, we got somewhere we're, we're working with this. Uh, all right. Again, I, I can't tell the difference between these eyebrows. <laughs> um... I think it's got to be no nonsense, so we'll go for a dark color. Um, okay, so I still need to make a decision about the jaw or not, but let's figure out an outfit. Okay, wonderfully badass, completely inappropriate for this melee character I'm going with, so I actually think this one we randomly rolled is good. Uh, legs. I feel like a service... It's a tough call, like this seems very practical, but I think I like this a little bit more. Um, by the way, I, lo I love the, the bubble um, helmet. Like at some point I need to figure a way to, to get that in. Um, oh yeah, you gotta go for the, I figure the bandana is probably Oh man, I mean, if I really wanted to go, like, for all the options, the eye patch fits perfectly with that scar. I'm just not sure I quite want to do that. Um, it's hard to see. I mean, in one sense, the cape seems really good. Um, it also seems remarkably impractical uh, for this character I have in mind. So, um...
Yeah, it's a little more generic than I was planning, but um, let's see what we can do with the background. There's lots of really good options here. For some reason, I'm feeling quite partial to this one, but... All right, and finally, posture, so... I, I am very fond of this idea. I just think it's probably really inappropriate for this character. Um... Yeah, so, uh... Doomy92, the, the main reason I wanted to avoid, like, the the really outrageous hairstyles is that because this is a melee based character, I really, I really dislike it. I mean, like it's totally inconsistent with how people, but like, I always imagine like these guys with these huge beards or like really long hair. Like I always just imagine someone grabbing it in the middle of the fight. Now, like obviously you've got like, as you say, you've got the dwarf slayers, you've got like big badass Viking with a, with a big beard. Like, this is clearly something that we have been able to, to live with practically for a long time. But like, I don't know, I always really like it when I imagine characters like this as having every like very practical choices uh, in terms of the setup. So that was the that was the reason I didn't go for the Mohawk and also why I avoided like essentially once I go down that path, that's also why I avoided like the pink hair and stuff like that, um, because it just sort of strikes me as a very no nonsense individual so yeah we could go possibly for this surely there's another yeah sure this will work but yeah so i don't know like this is this is just an example like obviously how much time you spend creating i'll be honest with you like this is a rather generic looking character in the grand scheme of things um let's see if we can kind of come up with a I sure there was something that showed the scar a little bit better. The thing is, the highlight just kind of makes it look a lot worse than it is. Yeah, we'll work with that. Um, I'll go with the default symbol. But yeah, like, um, whether or not you choose to go down you know, go down the path of, like, really jumping into into the creation of the character or not. This is one thing that I really like about it. I think I'm actually going to keep this, uh... Did I just lose? No. So, is there actually a Vanguard that already does this? So, Adam McKinney... Uh, does almost the exact same setup, so... That was not a particularly original design that I just made. The only difference here was the um, uh, the data repository uh, and cruelty. But as you can see, there's lots of uh, there's lots of range for expression, and then of course this is like the the human looking group. Um, Syndicate also kind of look human, but they look like weirdo humans. Um, and then like. There's just so much of a story that gets told as soon as you go to, like, the assembly. Like, just looking at this stuff is incredibly... Like, you just get so many ideas out of it. So, um, this is it. Like, it's... Uh, I'm incredibly happy that I, I played this. Um, hi, uh, how to play when the start of the game? Uh, you live in Europe and you're from Hungary. Um... Somebody said, was it 9 o'clock CET? It's definitely coming out, um, I guess, today now, technically. Um, but uh, August 6th is the release. It should be out in a few hours, I would suspect. Um, but uh, just keep an eye on Steam. Um, possibly the Paradox website will say that. Uh, this is I'm, uh, The only reason I can play this right now is because it's a uh, press key. But... Um, Oh, uh, it would be in the morning. 
So actually, you know what? Tell you what, uh, I'm sure this is available online. Let me take a quick look. In 10 hours, really? That seems weird that that would come out in the evening. Um, oh no, hang on, it's two o'clock in the morning. I'm an idiot. Um, Age of Wonders, Planet Fall, release time. Uh, release. Okay, uh, this game is available for preloading now across all platforms and will unlock at different times tomorrow. Planet uh, Fall releases worldwide on Xbox One in Europe on PS4 right at 3 a.m. EDT on August 6th. So if you're an Xbox One or PS4 player, it comes out in one hour. For American PS4 gamers as well as... Um, Oh, sorry, and that's in Europe. Uh, for American PS4 gamers, as well as everyone on Steam, Planetfall releases at 12 p.m. EDT on August 6th. So player named Dot had it. Uh, it will release in 10 hours. Um, but uh, but yeah, again, it, it does seem to depend a little bit on the platform that you're going for. Obviously, I wasn't playing with the controller because I'm a keyboard and mouse guy. Uh, I'm really, I'm very, very glad that I got to play this. I know I've said that a few times. Uh, if you've played the Age of Wonders games, I think there's going to be a lot that's familiar there, and I am very happy with the direction where they, you know, they took a few of the features. Like I said, if you've played any more modern um, 4X games like Civilization VI or um, Endless Legend, those are probably the two, uh, the two more obvious ones. A uh, lot of imagination behind this. Uh, obviously, I was not playing it necessarily efficiently, but I think this is one of the things that's really big for me, is that I love it when games like this just let me kind of run around and do what I want. Um, the headline feature for me was the customizing commanders. I love being able to make my own characters and run around with them. Um, so as far as the sandbox is concerned, I got what I wanted, and um, all in all, it seems to be a really solid little strategy game. So do keep in mind, I really only got the tutorial and, you know, like half of the first scenario done, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opinions coming out about this game overall. The reviews seem to be very good for it, um, and for those of you who are going to be playing on release, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Um, what are some of the similarities between Civs 5 and 6 in this game, in your opinion? Um, so, uh, Civilization is a little bit harder for me to, uh, to mark, but I would say on this one, the similarity would be more... Yurton, thank you very much for the follow. Um, I'd say probably the biggest difference that I've noticed is that it's moved away from this idea of you build a... Like, you build a city, and then you wind up building this endless treadmill of buildings to boost your production levels. Instead, what they've done is they've taken this region system, and your choice of region and exploitation winds up affecting what your overall production levels are. There are actually relatively few buildings, at least on the bit I was playing, that seem to improve your resource gathering, and it's a lot more important to plan out what sectors you want to exploit, which I think creates for a slightly more interesting set of choices to make, especially with regards to whatever territory you want to defend. Um, so I wouldn't say it's exactly like the district system in Civilization Five or Six, um, but that was probably one of the bigger the bigger things that I noticed. Um, and obviously that's kind of bearing the the influence of endless endless legend really. Exactly like like yeah, um, I endless is is the better comparison in my opinion. It's sorry, I shouldn't say exactly because there's gonna be one place where you put your um, where your colonies, whereas in legend, obviously you could put one city wherever you wanted. But essentially, they've removed that whole decision of, like, which tile do I need to pick? And instead, you're having to pick what the different districts bring up. So, yeah, I love playing, uh, creating characters. I mean, when I do Stellaris, probably the first hour, hour and a half is spent on character creation and that. So, anyways, though, uh, I hope you guys, again, for those of you who are playing this thing on release, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to doing some more of this. Uh, for those of you who have been following, Monday is my normal Paradox Day, so with that in mind, uh, I'll probably be going back to Stellaris on Mondays, and Age of Wonders might be getting its own uh, its own time. I still need to work out the details on that. Um, but overall, it's uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm having a good time with it. I hope you do too. And um, for those of you who are going to wait to see what comes out, uh, if you do have Age of Wonders 3 in your library, now is a really good time to go back to that game and play it. Um, because when you are ready to play Planetfall, um, I don't know, it's, it's nice to compare uh, the differences between the two. I'm sort of filibustering a little bit. I'm going to be out of the menu because I'd love to find somebody who's playing Age of Wonders Planetfall and uh, let you guys watch more of the content. Age of Wonders Planetfall. Come on. Oh, also, if you get the deluxe edition, you get this really good soundtrack on in the back that's playing in the background. Okay, I don't know any of these streamers, um, but let's say Tank Pig gets the raid. So, um, I'm just putting this in for the command. You do not need to say that we're tired of System Talker. This place was better, uh, but that is their link. I'm going to hit the raid button right now. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. And for those of you who will be playing the game, please enjoy it in the next 10 hours. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you want to watch more of my stuff, uh, the vodcast is coming up tomorrow. And I will be live on Wednesday with Cultus Simulator. See you then.